Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. <sighs> if you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. Hello and welcome to another wet, dripping, spoiled episode of the Cultaholic <laughs> Wrestling spoiled. Podcast. My word. Still looks good though. Let's have a bite. <laughs> Listening to Jack. <laughs> Mafu and special guest, Mr. Tom Campbell. It's Hello. what we want to happen. It is uh, what we want to happen. Never the right video. Never the bloody <laughs> right. Oh, you and your jokes. You and your spoonerisms. Is that a spoonerism? <laughs> no, it's just been awkward. Are you the big spoonerism or the little spoonerism? Oh, well, I, publicly I say I'm the big spoonerism, but really I prefer being the little spoonerism. Sometimes it's nice. nice to be the little spoonerism. It is, isn't it? It's nice to be wanted. It's nice to feel comforted. <laughs> it's nice to be... Some stuff there. <laughs> Must be a part, part of a set. <laughs> I have this effect on mm. people. Just start spilling I, my drinks. Hey, yeah. hey, Jack, how you doing? Yeah, I just want to be wanted. <laughs> it's Monday. Oh, we're starting, <laughs> starting strong this week, baby. Cheers. Oh, but it's ah. actually Friday in podcast land. How are yes, you, Matthew? Yes, it is. Are you all right? Yes, I'm also Friday mentally on podcast land and in reality. You're wearing I'm a lovely right shirt and tie. Thank you, Sean. Are you on a promise? A promise? Are you on a promise? I don't understand what you're saying. You never heard that phrase before. Are you want a promise? I'm on a promise. No, please explain. Like, like have you know, have you got a little something, something that you, you're going to do after? Are you trying to impress you someone? A little, you, yeah, oh, okay. Little, I, I understand a little the concept. Kiss over someone. Sometimes I understand the concept of trying to please someone, but uh, are you on a I'm promise? I'm on a promise. Are you I've never heard promise? it said like that. It's like it's like if, if someone said, "Hey, well, later on we'll have a little bit of the old." Uh, oh, and you're, oh, your, do you promise? Your father? <laughs> Do you promise? Not like I'm last so, time, you lying bastard. I'm so old in this office. <laughs> I've got. Are you on a promise and a bit of how's your father? There's one that's um, being sent for a message, which just means going to the shops for your mum. Go and get oh, us a message. You know, like, I think yeah, it's quite a northeastern yeah, that, one, that one. Lovely. But that's like quite an old-fashioned one. Well, the one you said that's like, are you on a promise and how's your father? I can usually answer both of those at the same time. <laughs> so in the news this week with the wrestling, uh, Cody Rhodes has yet to speak to Triple H about smashing the throne at AEW Double or Nothing 2019, mm. which I thought was funny because you thought it would have been the first thing they shook hands over, or, but apparently not. I mean, <laughs> Hey, so, pal, take a seat. Uh, <laughs> not that one. Cody says, okay. so we have never no. spoke about the throne smash, and I'm never. I'm even further concerned that one day Hunter is going to watch the Being the Elite episode titled The Exorcism of Cody Rhodes and be like, wait, I was the bad guy? I think we can completely say that never happened. But <laughs> even though Frankie Gazarian did a really great job, and he kind of really made him look cool, he was kind of Terminator-like in how we did it. But yeah, he's never asked me. He's one of those, nah, I don't know, I feel like he's unsuspecting. You think he doesn't read your interviews or whatnot, and then one day he'll be like, I read this thing you said. Oh, no. He's very organized about that, says Cody. Mm. Uh, I was going to say, I reckon Triple H has watched. the. He knows, he knows the throne smashing incident, surely. But at the same time... Maybe they're just friends and they're fine. I don't know. I don't know. What do you reckon? Or maybe if you're trying to downplay something, like, I don't know, a rival company being set up, you'd mm. be like, yeah, I know. But if I acknowledge it, they've yeah. won. If Jeff Jarrett can go into the WWE Hall of Fame after setting up TNA wrestling, <laughs> yeah. all is forgiven. True. Well Very said. True. Well said. Hulk Hogan is engaged to Sky Daily. And I put down, oh, that's nice. to be able to watch the football. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very good. Something, something. <laughs> Math, you've got to be careful because we're, we're, hit, we're hitting the ceiling very early. This, yeah. yeah, that was very no, early. We're never it's gonna... a 30-minute podcast oh, this week, wow. folks. Uh, Liv Morgan's uh, shoulder injury update. You report shed some light on it. Uh, Morgan was attacked by Rhea Ripley on Raw. Uh, Brian Alvarez and Del oh, God, uh, discusses the situation with his friend Brian. Um, Alvarez says, Liv Morgan does have a shoulder injury. And this was an angle to put her out of action for a while. A maybe a long while. And I've clicked back <laughs> and I've lost my notes. Oh, no. And then Dave said, you should be more organized, Brian Alvarez. Oh, what were you doing? He said, he took, he sent me to get a long wait mm. from the shop on he my said, workplace. She'll be able to watch the football. <laughs> uh, my understanding is it's the other shoulder. Okay, so is this the left one is the one that they hurt. The injured left one, the storyline, but she, my impression was more interesting than that. I don't know why I brought it up. Yeah, Liv's out injured. Yeah, she's out injured, but they've written her off on SmackDown, as we'll yes. see, which at least she was well enough to be written off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yes, thank you for saving me there, Jack. That's I love how you read your notes like someone else wrote them for you. They did. All these notes come from the Cultaholic News <laughs> website. <laughs> Full of the best news <laughs> reporters in the biz. I'll tell you what, one of them is going to feature in the Hall of Fame segment as well. He provided A me. A new segment. Oh. One, one, of, um, one of our... Well, he's not going to physically come in, but he, he oh. provided me with inspiration for my Hall of Fame, fame pick oh, this okay. week. I'm really excited. Avi recalled how Jerry Lynn literally spoon-fed him during their first meeting. And Wait, I'm, literally, I see literally, literally spoon I see literally go, come on, don't literally me. <laughs> an interesting opening, Gam. <laughs> uh, on the episode of the whole Effin Show podcast, revealed Lynn had to, quote, this was on the Soma days. Oh, my God. Back okay. before I knew how dangerous they were, I would eat Somas sometimes, and one of those times would be when I'm on an airplane trying to sleep. So I got an airplane. I think it was Value Jet. That sounds promising. <laughs> was Jerry that the Lynn. summer or was that the airplane? I yeah. think that was Value who Jet. Sky Daily was married to before <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. Jerry Lynn was sitting... <laughs> Value Jet. <laughs> yeah. If the thing you're flying the on sounds gladiator. like... <laughs> <laughs> if the thing you're flying on sounds like She's it's going to do another job... Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Lynn was sitting much more forward <laughs> towards the front, so I passed him on the way to the back. That's where I met him. I said, hey, Jerry, you know, what's up, dude? Good to meet you. I went back there to the back in my seat, and I apparently took some somers so that I could take a nap on the plane, and I thought I would eat some cereal that the stewardess uh, handed out to help kick in the somers. The mother effer ended up feeding me. Mm. First time I met him, he's feeding me Fruit Loops. <laughs> I don't know what our conversation would have entailed at that point, but we could have possibly talked about when we came back there. But yeah... Man, nice dude. He took over the spoon right away. Oh, I don't know if that's a pun or not, but what a nice throwback to what we just talked about. Wow. And it's pertinent because Jerry Lynn's back. Oh, yeah. Jerry Lynn. Yes. Jerry, Jerry Lynn. He's going to butter. I can't even remember now. Jungle Jack Boy. Perry. Jack Perry. Jack Perry. Yeah, Jack Perry. Jungle Boy. the good name of ECW. And after hearing that story, I think Jungle Boy had a point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, John Cena ate loads of chicken. Around Samoa what Joe's new, house. What news week is this? It's a great week for it's news, isn't it? It's been a fab Wrestler week for news. Wrestler eats lots of chicken. Wait, around Samoa Joe's house? Yeah. Samoa oh, Joe. Was WWE, wasn't he? Samoa Joe was on the Doughboys podcast. I don't know what they talk about. He said, this goes back to when I started. It was Cena and Frankie Gazarian. We were at my house. We just got done doing a wrestling show. It was probably midnight, and we were crashing at my pad because we had another show the next day. My pops, great host, no matter what time of night, it's midnight. My dad starts cooking. He cooks a pan of chicken breast and all the stuff. There's about five of us. The guys start eating, and there are two sheet trays, completely full, with grilled chicken breast. I had one or two. John and Frankie start going one-on-one -on, -one on grilled chicken. That's what he says. They get through two trays. I was amazed my dad whipped up two trays. <laughs> what are you doing, Pop? <laughs> They get through two trays of chicken. They're now face to face and just trying to shovel it in like, I'm not giving up before you give up. Finally, they finished all the chicken in the house. There was nothing left to eat and they called it a draw. They probably both ate six pounds of chicken, if not more. I, I was going to say wrestlers are weird, but I, I think this maybe this is a man problem. Men are weird. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah. That's like, I can eat more chicken than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If we went out and we had like a normal sized meal, it's all right. But if you're like, the waiter comes around and goes, Do you want, someone wants another plate? You're like, oh. Wait, no, unless someone else says yes, in which case, yes. Uh, I'd absolutely happen. I, I'm sure there's a story from before I was born where my dad and my uncle were around my grands and she there was a buffet on and the buffet wasn't finished. She went, you'll never finish that. So they did to prove her wrong. And I'm like, why did you do that? Was Did you feel good about that? And he was like, no, it was awful. It was really, <laughs> really horrible. The top prize in any of those compositions is a bowel obstruction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a family member going, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Get that fed. Get that eaten. Mm. Like a pat on the head. It's very common memory. <laughs> Which is more than what Baron Corbin got in his time with JBL. He explained oh. uh, how much he did not like this period when he was very brief with him last year. It was on Corey Graves' podcast after the bell. Quote, there was a sense of panic there for me because everything I'd done up until then had worked. You know, I'd made things work. I had one promo in my career where I was in the ring in the middle of it going, there is nothing that is going to make this good. We're not saving it. <laughs> it was a segment with mobile people. I felt the crowd just going, dude, like, this is not good. And you feel it in your gut, rather like your uncle after that buffet. Yeah. <laughs> Which segment was it? And then it's going to get to it. And then oh, when we got okay. to the end of the JBL stuff. We were trying to make it work. I think there was a few things that went against us. Opportunity, timing, a few other things. And you could just feel it. I felt like it was in that movie where you're stuck out the ocean just waiting to get eaten by sharks. Oh, I remember that one. I was drowning in a sense. <laughs> And that's what we had in the conversation. It was like, okay, well, what do we do? Yes, I'm glad that he felt the same as well. That's why we felt watching it. I know. And it felt like, um, it felt like, because this came all after the comedy stuff he'd done with like him being a lovable loser and happy calling yeah. and everything. And it felt like JBL was kind of a step back for him. But you could tell that JBL thought, 
I'm going to really, this is an old school manager. This is going to boost him up. And you could just tell they were onto a, not a winner. Mm. And it was a shame. Yeah, they did some gambling backstage with Teddy Biasi, and he knows cigars. how to do it with other people's did. money. Oh, dear. And uh, yeah, they smoked cigars. And they did all like, the man stuff. And, and JBL was... went, I'm so much more entertaining than the guy I'm managing. Everyone went, yeah. But I, well, in that circumstance, he was. But I'm liking Corbin. I like him sometimes. Not do you then. like him now? Now he is. No, he's a shark. Shark. Corbin. He's Shark Boy. Yeah, I like him now. <laughs> That's who needs to debut to stop him. <laughs> shark Boy. Or that dancing shark from last week's episode of AEW. I know who that is. Really? And they DM me to say, I'll tell you, you can't tell anybody. No. But what good's a secret? Unless you know, hey, I'm going to tell you something, but not all of it. Oh. oh, that's not fair, is it? It was so great. I'm like, I'm so flattered. You dangled the... He messaged you and went, bro, don't tell anyone who it is. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> don't is our anybody, but I'm the shizark in the thing. <laughs> no, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. That's one episode of SmackDown. Hey, Matthew, it. don't kill anybody. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but you're sat at the same time. I know it's mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there we go. We're only on our first Thomism of the day. And then former WWE NXT star Steph Delander, formerly mm. Persia Perota, now revealed this, this, this is this got mad. a lot of people talking. Obviously, yeah. means something of this side of the world. But a group of NXT stars once put on a show for Florida Governor. Ron DeSantis, is that how you say yeah. it? Uh, oh, and the his man family. Who let wrestling carry on through the pandemic. I see, I see. Yeah. Um, he was talking to Vice. Sorry, uh, sorry that's the sorry about that. If you want this in the podcast, Tom just made a noise like a snake. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Ron DeSantis. <laughs> I hate Vice. I wrestled in front of him. Quote, I wrestled for DeSantis. I did meet him, yeah. He came to the PC once. We got called in on a Saturday that Ron DeSantis wanted to have a wrestling show for his kids. So him and his family came in and they sat front row. And we all beat each other up on a Saturday morning because he wanted to take his kids to see the wrestling. That's that's dodgy. Uh, DeSantis is currently running a campaign to secure the Republican Party nomination for the 2024 United States presidential election. No. Uh, it says I'm here. Just reacting to everything. It, Whoa. It says here he hates the gays, he hates the immigrants, he hates abortion, <laughs> he loves the cops and the guns. NXT's locker room probably wanted to keep him. Oh, boo, oh. Matthew, boo. You can't tar them all with the same brush. I've seen their likes on Twitter. Oh, really? Oh. And that was the news. Oh, dearie. No, it wasn't. We can't end like that. Don't be silly. Uh, the news is that it says here, Cody Rhodes has a big heart. What does that mean, Tom? Oh, Cody Rhodes has a wonderful heart. Hopefully you've seen by now, and if you haven't, we surprised a WWE super fan. His name is Heath. He's been through the ringer in his short eight years on planet Earth. He's been through the ringer with stuff. And we wanted to do something special to, to as a WWE fan. So when WWE rocked up into Newcastle, we organized a day out for him. And we got a limo to take him to WWE Newcastle. And a massive thank you to Cody Rhodes, who made that trip extra, extra special. Don't want to spoil it too much. Yeah. He went above and beyond what he had to do. He went above and beyond to do something for our WWE champion, Heath, who I'm hoping you've seen the video. If you haven't, take time to do so. Wonderful guy. Mm. Loved our day together. With that in mind, I know I'm only a visitor in the podcast multiverse, mm. but I'd like to you know, buck a bit of a tradition. I'd like to break tradition. Uh, and I would like to think that you'll agree that as opposed to nominating Heath for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame, I think we just induct him straight away. Let's just chuck him in. Yeah. Are we I down so. for that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Don't you forget about Heath. Don't ah, about that's Heath. nice. So, um, and, and credit to you as well, Tom, because you, you mm. had a big hand in putting that all together as well. So I, 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 the, Heath's the champion here. Yes, of I course. You know, yes. It was, it was, you know, he was the manager. You're the JBL in the situation. I, was, <laughs> I wasn't that bad. Come on. <laughs> mm. I, will, I will give a tiny little bit behind the curtain on. on it. Um, We planned something special for Heath. Go and watch the whole thing. As I hinted at, it involves a limo. Wanted to book a limo to get Heath from his house to the event in style. WWE's event was on Friday, uh, the last Friday in June, which was the same day as every single school's leaving prom. Oh. I rang... It's limo WrestleMania. It's limo WrestleMania. Yeah. I rang 38 limo companies. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
My favorite conversation, and I won't see the limo company, was a guy went, I'm going to be honest with you, you're going to have better luck finding a unicorn down Big Market <laughs> than finding a limo <laughs> on Friday night. Mm. <laughs> you might as well give I'm going to save you another day. You might as well give up now. You're not going to get a limo. We're all fully booked. Mm. So that was me doing some moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> but we got one. Yes. Despite the fact that a unicorn, a unicorn. Never, he's in your oh, stairs. No. So he's, he's in my stable. <laughs> Check out the video when you get time. We love Heath. We're so happy to do something special for Heath and yeah. Heath's mom. Uh, as a WWE super fan, he's our WWE champion. And now a rightful, rightful uh, member of the w of the Cultaholic mm. Hall of Fame. Which we will, but we thought we'd just get him in front. I have a yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's get that right. done yeah, now. Let's absolutely. get that done now. Love you, Heath. Check it well, out. Well, well done you, the lovely limo company, the lovely Cody Rhodes, everyone else involved in that Cultaholic for making a grander day out than even Wallace and Gromit. Wow. Well done, What's it says here? We've got a tub in Japan. Yeah! Oh, I thought we finished that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Let's go live. Breaking news. Breaking news. Beep, 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 I've not got my lenses in, by the way. I can't see. And it says at the top, if you scroll up to the top, that's how things usually start, even in Japan. Uh, Dickman says... What? See... A Dickman? <laughs> I say Dickman. <laughs> Dickman. Dickman. Sorry, I gave away your superhero pen. name. <laughs> uh, it just says three words. See you soon. Oh. Oh. There's going to be a sequel. And it's pictures of that big tower that Godzilla always wrecks whenever he's in town. <laughs> Ooh, and that's like... the dinner that he wrecks every time he's in town. The runny egg. Right. So... Yeah, wow. some people who won't be seen tomorrow if Godzilla has his way. Um, brag tag. Oh, it's a shop for you, man. That's just bloody... <laughs> You always rag on dick tubs in this. I think it's fair that you get a little bit back while I'm here, I'll, young I'll man. I'll take that, thank you. Yeah. Friend of the Zillas. I'll kiss Tom. you later. <laughs> that's, that's the Whatever that is, that looks delicious. I'm into I that. Can, I can envision that talking to me. <laughs> I'm, I am slightly confused by this one. Yeah. What, what? <laughs> you can see the tent in the background. I'm just worried about the... Um... Oh, bloody hell, wrestling. What? In the wrestling podcast. Outside? I hear in Japan they've got quite a good wrestling scene. <laughs> That's just purely stuff you can't prove, Tom. It's on the choir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not, you know. Oh. <laughs> so he took in some wrestling and took in the idyllic skylines of Tokyo. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. I am in awe of the pictures. But no, never mind that. They're some of my favourites, actually. They're lovely. Never mind that. Let's look at the comments. Uh, oh, BMC Kinnan says, Ah, another tub in Japan. Speaking of Japan, a reminder of last week's podcast when Fraser said he recently went to a Japanese restaurant and read a book there. So I asked Jack, what is stopping you from taking your laptop to an Italian restaurant? I feel like the comments... I, f I feel oh, like you the sound comments, great, Tom. I feel like that... I'm gonna, just going to... just before I know Jack will want to speak on this. No, but, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, I'll step in instead. I do feel like that the comments uh, on Dick Tubbs' Instagram are people getting a backdoor into the mailbag. I yeah, feel like this is like a Glastonbury are. where people climb over the fence. <laughs> it is a sneaky... Yes, and I don't yeah. think it should be allowed. I, th I think you're only... You're, you're not doing out of love I'm, for Dick Tubbs. I'm, you're doing it to try and get on the podcast and, and we shouldn't be humoring you. It's I'm very effective. i that Tubman and Japan's coming to an end. <laughs> not oh. only because Tubman's going to be back in our lives, of course, but because the, the the politics that take place around this segment will come to a merciful halt. Well, we'll make it. We'll read these then because it's our last. One. I think it's only right until your next goes to Japan. I think it's only right. Oh, sorry, I keep on uh, clicking that table because he was going to stay in Japan, but obviously Kota Bushi is no longer doing his training because he's in AEW, <laughs> so it's scuppered it. Uh, Kevin Gormley says tubs in Japan is wonderful. It's a bit like sex. Even when there's no tent, it's good. <laughs> ben okay. Kravitz, I'm glad you're okay. The guys acted like no update was nothing. We needed the update that you were safe and well. People are like, is it is it post anything on Instagram for a week? He's obviously dead. <laughs> it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a life. That's that's people's lives, isn't Aww. it? Soft wrestling. Everyone's asking, where's the tent? But I want to know, where's the Fuji? Hashtag yeah. up the Fuji. It's probably there. I have to up the at right this point says, interject and hey. say that someone did submit, and I'm so sorry that it's not in the podcast, but someone did write into the mailbag with an no. AI uh, Tubman in Japan segment written via AI. Oh, which oh, was too long. Unfortunately, God. it was really long, and it didn't really go anywhere. Would, but it was. But the it was, segment, the Tubman Japan good, segment, it was a good effort. It was like once upon a time there was a man named Richard Tubman and his three friends Matthew, Jack, and Ross, who all lived in Tokyo. It got it a bit wrong. <laughs> like it, got, it got it a little bit wrong. But it's stupid this, computer. The story goes on about how Richard goes off traveling for a year, and we all do our segment for. He's obviously plugged in some info relevant mm, for the uh, unless AI is just that clever, which is scary. It will be one day. Um, and. 
A lot of it involves Ross shouting up the tent, and then the ending's like, Tubman returned and saw his three friends, and they all hugged and laughed, and Ross shouted up the tent, and they all laughed at the end. <laughs> that's, that's the story. Aww. AI is getting AI terrifying. It is, isn't it? Yeah. That's lovely. That's a beautiful moment. So I won't read out Nick Flowers' message that says, what's the difference between a lentil and a chickpea? I don't know. I've never had a lentil on my face before. And then we'll end the segment. Boo, boo. Thank you to the people who commented nice things on Dick Tubbs' yeah. uh, Instagram and support him during his wonderful odyssey across Japan. I personally have enjoyed it offline, away <laughs> from the segment. I've enjoyed it. Uh, and, and a big middle finger to those of you who've used it as, an, as a back door to get into the mailbag. Yeah, it's how, boring. How dare you talk to us and interact with us? How dare you us. interact with us? <laughs> Tubman Japan will not return next week. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, the Hall of Fame segment. In condescending order from last week, Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, 1%. Oh. Fraser did say that he has managed to get the worst ever Hall of Fame nomination ever, 1%. I don't think it's ever been that low. No. How did he... How, how happy are you feeling right now? Did, the table is rising slightly. Near me? You. What do you mean? Well, that's I'm the arrogance you got a stiffy because. Up, oh crazy right, bad. sorry. Because yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah, blast him, blast him. My God, <laughs> <laughs> blast him, blast Confound him. Confound you, Fraser. <laughs> I'm from the fifties. <laughs> Sounds like something I would say. <laughs> Send him for a promise or something. I don't know. <laughs> what do they say? You will rue the are day. You, are you on a promise? Yeah. Anyway. Promise me you will never vote again. No, I'm. Um, no, I no, I'm no. I wish he'd done better. Wow, one percent. That's also what Mission Impossible Two got. <laughs> Roger Ebert. Uh, going to watch live wrestling. Fifteen percent. I was feeling the good stuff after North. It was a class yeah. show. God, but it was an, people were like, "Shut I'm, up, Matthew. Be cynical." I'm guessing you guys talked about it last week, but we did. It was an unbelievable show, and this isn't just me sucking up to Tom because he's here and he's part of the North team. But it was a it was a really you know when a wrestling show is a many ringed circus mm. and there was like. A flippy match, a brawl, a hardcore match, tag matches, all this sort of stuff. It was just a really well put together show. Yeah. And when I passed Bowers at one point, and I didn't stop him for too long because he had his headset on, yeah. and it was he was in a constant state of rushing around yeah. during the show. He was just in the uh, so solid crew. But I went, it's going really well so far, like the order of the matches. And he went, I have been turning the match order over in my head for months. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> well, it paid off, though. It uh, definitely no, uh, paid off. What a show. Mm. Nearly 800 people at the Walker Dome for that Amazing. one. Um, to which we say, Impact Wrestling, top that. Oh! I know. Uh, so we'll go put in the news section, but forgot. Yes, Impact Wrestling is going to be running the same event they're space able, are you, in, um, in October, right? Yeah, they're doing the UK Invasion Tour, and they're playing the Walker Dome in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. So mm. we will be going and counting heads just to see mm. who won. <laughs> and and in case you yeah. don't fly uh, David Penzer over, oh, ho, ho. and you're needing someone to announce the wrestlers of the ring, um, Scott, give us a call. Mm. Scott Damore, give us a call. I'd have Tom. What, England? I'd have I'd you have too, England. mate. I'd have, him, I'd have I'd you have right over this table. Capacity. My goodness. <laughs> Not to sound like I'm out of touch, but what UK and or Irish wrestlers do they have on the Impact roster? Subculture. Joe yeah, Hendry. Yeah, the Welsh guys. Joe, Joe Hendry. Hendry. There we go. Local. No, the prestigious. And they've announced They've announced the, the return of Grado. Oh, oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. I was thinking like, okay, Joe Hen Oh, Grado's got, all right, yeah, forget it then. Mm. I will North, we had, the, we had a record for a, a month and a bit. No, it was still, a, it's a really big step for North, and it's good to see them. All the dads are going to go to want to see Grado. Do you know My what? My dad likes well, Grado. I'd, I'd great, Never seen him wrestle. And I'd mentioned this to Aidan, so I think he's all right with me saying it, but during North, obviously we had those seated bits. We all sat yeah. near each other at North, apart from Tom, who was in the ring. It would have been awkward. He was down there. I was grafted. You were yeah. Northern grafting. Northern um, grafting. Oh. And at one point, I kept. I, I was turning around to talk to Aiden, and he was there with his fiance and his dad. And um, at one point, like a good move happened in the ring, or there was like a standoff or something. And his dad clapped it like he'd just seen a tidy bit of defensive work at St James's Park. <laughs> like <you were> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It oh, wasn't really nice. a wrestling audience clap. It was more like a yeah. quiet appreciation. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But I love that it had as much of an impact that you talked about last week, and it got a nom in the Hall of Fame. Mm. Yeah, nom 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 nom. What's Big. that screechy sound? I can hear that. Me too. It's the sound of Scott Demore's private jet on his way here <laughs> to offer me the job as ring announcer yes. for Impact in Newcastle. No, it's Jack sharpening his blades. <laughs> <laughs> seen the winner, 
Matthew's Jack impression, 84%, but which what I will, Ross decided to put what I will in the Hall say of in Fame your seconds after was I did it. You didn't do it and then champion it yourself and go, and it was that funny. I'm putting it in. It was more of a Ross. It, it was a tactical move by Ross there, which has paid off. Yes, 84%. What? Wow. Massive. That is huge. Um, I preferred North, but... <laughs> Why is that? I just more of an enjoyable experience for myself. <laughs> I also enjoyed our fun night afterwards, which you've now tarnished, Matthew. Bless you. Thank you. I enjoyed seeing the wrestlers. I'd even said on the podcast, I think my mum was like, I had such a nice time with Jack. And I, I've done him dirty like this. The, res- you know, the wrestlers commandeered that karaoke. You know when you're ever in a situation where... Like one time we left a we left a camera rolling backstage at WCPW, and then mm. when we checked the footage after, it's just the wrestlers messing about. They're all theater kids at heart. Yeah. Mm. They're all attention-seeking people. Yeah. And that's fine. But... The karaoke was a great time. Just high off the energy of, yeah. of all of it. Yeah, I, I mean, was exhausted, the, but I, was, to, I was, you know, when you're really tired, you're like, I'm having such a good time. My two wrestler MVPs at the karaoke, um, G Money. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. No, yeah. You know when no one wants to be know. the first one? He didn't care. He didn't care. Went for it. Did a karaoke classic, Let Me Entertain You by yep. Robbie. Smashed it. Yep. And uh, Man, Man Like, like Darice. Darice, Red Red Wine. A West Midlands classic. Though. Of course it is. Um, Ali Campbell represents. Yeah. God, he was so great. He's a great guy. I, I drunk tweeted him when I got home. Hey, yeah. said, Thank you for doing Red Red Wine. And he went, you're welcome, Jack the Jobski bro, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he was lovely. What yeah. a man. What a guy. I've never really talked to him that much before. And yeah. The only interaction I had before that was we're at uh, Rise after mm. the WCBW show. And him and I forget who else was I there. I don't remember him being on his... Was yeah, it maybe he was Defiant? In, it must maybe have yeah. um, But he was there and he was freezing. Oh. It must have been like... Uh, winter or autumn time, but he's this is an outside bit that everyone goes to and rise. And he was shivering. He's like, "Oh, I'm really tired, man." And I went, "Do you want to wear my coat?" And he looked at me. He goes, "I don't know you." But he was here <laughs> talking with me for like the whole night. And I'm like, "Well, you know." And yeah, I he's was, a very personal. Also, realized, wait, hang on. There are like lots of other cool people here with me. <laughs> I'm like, am I that up my own ass <laughs> after having an entire night of good wrestling? People going, "Love you and the cool old punk." <laughs> that I'm thinking, man, like the Reese is like, "Well, let's dance with my food." <laughs> It's a good reality, like, wait, what am I doing? Just... He seems to know you now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely borrowed my coat now. I th- my, my, my coats definitely go with his cool gear, right? I, it, I just, I'm fully a member of the 0121 now. I'm not really. You, you he's, are. He's looking at me, oh, Primark, Matthew. Yeah, great. <laughs> anyway, so. I, I will we're, point we're out very in. quickly that if you weren't at North Wrestling Thunderstruck, you uh-huh. could watch it on Fight tomorrow night. Oh! With commentary by yourself. And Vader Scott. And Vader Scott. Oh. Darth mm. Vader Scott. Darth Vader Scott. Mm. Uh, so get it on fight. It's a great show. Mm. Bloody hell. And if you're not doing that, then you listen to this. It's the Hall of Fame podcast nomination bit. So uh, it'll Matthew be Tom Jack first, won't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, because I'm in Ross's chair. Yes. Uh, I nominate for the Hall of Fame the art of going to the cinema on your own. Ah, right. This is Facebook relevant number. now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, went to see Oppenheimer. This week at the Tyneside Cinema. Make it sound like when cinema. bloody uh, Renee Wolfcastle was trying to do Oppen- 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 <laughs> Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Oppen- Is it Oppen- Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer. I think it's Optimus Heim. Optimus Heim. <laughs> but he didn't hey, once. Oh, he didn't, oh, now I've become dead. <laughs> he didn't once transform into a big truck. I was fuming. I was but yes, livid. Sorry, you went to I see... went to go see Peaky Blinders the movie. <laughs> uh, I love the bit where Thomas Shelby built the atom bomb. That yeah. was great. Because... Um, Alex, my wife-to-be, didn't want to go and see it. It's not her bag. So I was like, I want to go see it. I'm going to see it on my own. And it's funny the people that you speak to about it, and and they're weird about going to the cinema on their own. Like, I don't think Alex mm. is one that would go to the cinema on her own. A few friends of mine were like, I, I wouldn't go on my own. And to the point where when you say that to some people, they go, oh, do you want me to come with you? I'm like, no, I'm making a conscious choice mm. to go to the cinema on my own. And I'm having a lovely time with it. So went on me went on me own. And there's something quite special about doing that and doing it at your own space and your own pace. You've got popcorn to yourself. You can just sit and quietly watch the film. And I just I like the 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 comfort of being in your own skin and being able to be comfy enough in yourself to go and see a film on your own. Mm. And I and I've and I don't think about how lucky I am that thinks like that, because I know a lot of people would struggle with that. Mm. And it's so it's so that's why I want to nominate mm. it. I, it's a good nomination. Being a man in my 30s, I am used to doing these things by myself because mm. no bugger's free. <laughs> yeah. But I can certainly see the appeal of, it depends on the film. I mean, Oppenheimer, mm. I can go, 
yeah, I'd see that by myself. Mm. But I saw Jackass Forever when my mate Bobby, and I'm glad I had someone there to go, oh, 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 look at that, right in the dick. We went to go, you know, see, we nice went to go see Sonic 2 together. Yeah, I, I just so we could I go, would have oh, not it's the like thing that. from the level. No, 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 no there's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> going, yeah, idiot, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, we... I you I both that. of you yeah. in both the corner response was. there? Wow, okay. Dude, we went in, we went in. It's been me, me and Tom about when we're out. Right, right. corn <laughs> and you know, the Phantom Melt and whatever and the merch and the stolen stuff we got from the cardboard things that you're not supposed to take home with you. Yeah. Go in there, everyone looks and it's just kids. Oh. Like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you yeah. dumb kids were even born when Sonic 2 was out. Get Shut away, up. dweebs. <laughs> yeah, just pushing them over for no reason. But yeah, so I, I love that experience with Tom. Mm. But... Like I couldn't find anyone to uh, or just the things didn't match up to see Super Mario the movie, so I just didn't go see it because I'm mm. like I wouldn't have been thinking this is good or this is bad. I would have gone, which one of my nerdy bastard mates was it? Mm. <laughs> so, but then there's been times when I've seen comedies and especially the ones around here, I've laughed. I'm, I'm, ah, 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 and then you looked and no one else is laughing. You're like, mm. oh, 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 <laughs> tough crowd. <laughs> oh, no respect. You know, no but, respect. Uh, so I think it's I, I don't mind doing mm. it, but I would also appreciate doing it with people. If it's the proper film. I know we adhere to a rigid order here in the Hall of Fame segment usually, but my pick is so relevant to oh, this. Go for it, can go I for jump it. ahead of you? Sorry. Hop on. <laughs> but breaking all the Hall of this Fame week, rules today. So, well, <laughs> la last week, actually, last weekend, I, for the first time ever, went to see a film on my own. In hey, the what's it with... going to be? Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Barbie for. No, no, it was Oppenheimer. Okay. Um, Were we at separate ends of the same? Screen? No, I was in Durham. I was on a. Bit, I did one of my big walks. Not the big, big walk. I did a smaller big oh, walk. I mean, Tom just went. Oh, I'm so glad I watch that film by myself <laughs> just to stretch up the film. Not to see oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we came um, together, didn't we? Get no, the paper out, scratch um, it out. Can't nominate that for the Hall of Fame. I was at the Gala Theatre in Durham, which has only got two screens. Oh, it's yeah. more of a theatre than it is a cinema. But yeah, it is. But the screen downstairs and like the. The, the down a few floors God. there's two cinema screens as well um, what are you you seem wistful I, I, I've been there as a kid mm. and I just forgot about I've it I've unlocked so some you, big memories I, yeah, I, I, I don't know how that looked on camera but I had the <laughs> me, 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 but you just got the flashback <laughs> memories so, so go ahead was that at the time because you're from obviously Bish was that like going to the big city don't yeah. you? right right <laughs> it was the well it's near the end of the term and you've all been good which is a lie <laughs> I think we're getting the floors waxed. So mm. I was like, all right, we'll send the, the gets out. The Rugrats mm. can go wreck a cinema. You're going to and Capital was, City. Yeah, I think it, was, yeah. it was Casino Royale. No, 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 Casino Royale, you idiot. Um, uh, oh, Die Another Day. Die Another Day. Oh. And uh, it was so bad. We're near the end of the film. We're yelling, could we go back and do school? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's rough. Analyze right, this. Um, it's the worst bond. Um, so I went to see Oppenheimer on my own. And... Did you enjoy it, by the way? I really enjoyed it, I, yeah. I liked it a lot, but not as much as some, but I'm not going to judge anybody for... Uh, I just think that I'm not clever enough. Mm. There's so many names and just stuff. It's at a relent... Even though it's three hours long, the pace is relentless. Yeah, it's, it's dropping names now. like he was dropping the bomb. Uh, yeah. yeah. But what I will say is, the high, even though I not all of it clicked for me, like the I've, I've said in my little review online, the highs are undeniable. Like, yeah. it's so... Oh, my God. And the way that they put certain bits together without <laughs> giving too many spoilers, it's, it's it creates such a build-up of tension. <laughs> yeah, spoilers are bombing it. Yeah. But, but when the bit when you know they... What? It, out, it would be a spoiler for Ross. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We, he did what? <laughs> I saw apparently last week he learned that Leah and Luke are twins. He went to bloody um, Benidorm and yeah. he said that. He off in this I saw lad, he, lad is Darth yeah. Vader, lass is Leia, yeah. doing this mm, show on a segue. And I'm like, uh, Ross, not to sound weird or nerdy, but the most problematic bit of that is the fact that it was a Leia and Vader. was, why is that? Mm. And Fraser had to do the... the, the <laughs> What? We've really missed a, a mine, a comedy mine of untapped of Ross watching the Star Wars yeah. series. You should do something because he's not here and he won't watch this. You should do something a where single tear is now going to roll down as he's sat with his headphones on. Yeah. Well, if you are Ross, hello. Hello. Holden, give. Holden, give. It's our, it's our smashing football uh, adjacent channel. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Use, the, use the force. Go on. Yeah, and if you're a big fan of Jack Atkins on the Classic Raw Review, you find him on there chatting it up a storm with Ross about the footy. It's a good time. It is a good time. You should drop a fake Star Wars fact and both play it oh. off as legit <laughs> and oh. then never mention it again and then wait till Ross brings it up and goes, well, yeah, of course, well, uh, Jar Jar Binks was the, uh, was the uncle of, of yeah. Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, like all this stuff about any point, no one complained when Boba Fett was gay. <laughs> He's like, what? Is that the scene Return of the Jedi? You've Boba seen Fett it, right? Boba Fett is Han Solo in another dimension. We but could, he puts a lot of weight on come up with something. Anyways, there's some, there's some fun to be had there. There is. But um, so yeah, Oppenheimer. I went to say on my own. When we um, made, made Yoda a Macum. 
<laughs> hey, Luke, yo's the Massive call. club, Sunderland is. That was the original dog. So it is a massive club, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for a man who wants... Mas Master Yoda, what can I get you? Cheese pizza. Uh, <laughs> pizza cheese. Um... <laughs> So uh, it's, yeah, the highs uh, are the highs yeah, are great. The, the bit where they drop the bomb, mm. where they're testing the bomb, and it's the silence. Mm. It's the deafening silence. It was a tense moment that the build up oh. to it because it was all counting down. Yeah. I was like, oh. the, <laughs> the scientists are betting on whether it's going to end the world mm. or not. The one thing that caught me out. The silence part from that one dude at the back going, "Ew, you dub, ew, you dub." Seen it by the way? Not yet. Right, fair enough. The one thing that caught me out in it was when they when that was a really tense bit where they're counting down to testing the bomb. It's going to go one way or another. And you, you obviously we all know. But like, but you watch it and it's really, and you're like, oh my God, this scene here, they're cutting it. And you, and you go, is this going to happen? Oh gosh, I feel a heart right there. And, and you go, hang on, isn't that Josh from Drake and Josh? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is. What it is, isn't it? Josh, it's Josh from Josh. Yeah. It's Josh As from Drake what? and Josh. It's like, are you ready to press the button? This blow turns on. It's Josh from Drake and Josh. Josh <laughs> presses the button that really sets weird. off the album. Really, like on the test. Yeah, it's really, really is weird. Is that when Aid Edmondson appears for like 10 seconds in one of the new Star Wars? He goes, right. hang on. Uh -huh. Was that... That's him, isn't it? Oh, he doesn't press the button that says the album. He has to press the button in he's case it something. drops below a certain yeah, level. Yeah, he's monitoring. He oh, no, uh, no, 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 I, I've seen this. He, he's the guy who puts a Duddy Boys theme song on. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I so, didn't think up. Do it again. He presses so, the button and it nukes Drake's career. I want to see Oppenheimer, right, on my own, because I was in the middle of a big walk and I was staying at a nearby travel lodge um, on the Giles Get Roundabout, if anybody cares where I was. Anyway, um, is that we'll, for the we'll police? We'll put a blue Hi. back up. Um, that was this my This is a serial killer on the road. It's, it's Jack's on the podcast. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Killed someone, watch out below me. I went on my own, watched it, and then I've been, well, we've been talking about it in the office because it's been a huge, obviously it's not just Oppenheimer, it's Barbie as well, the cross-promotional mm. Barbenheimer that everyone's been mm. talking about, where both films have really helped each other. Mm. Almost accidentally at first, then they lent into it, I think, the marketing teams Big of both style. films. Yep. Um, so we were coming up upstairs with our own Barbenheimer kind of portmanteaus, are they Ooh, called? Where, it's like, well where you have to think of two different films, mash them together. And we were really struggling. And then Aidan Gibbons, and he's given me permission to use this on the Hall of Fame, came up with the worst one, and it had me in absolute stitches. He went, oh. Teenage Mutant Ninja Impossible. <laughs> no, <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Impossible, I think he said. <laughs> so my nomination... Is Teenage Mutant Ninja. Teenage Mutant Ninja <laughs> Impossible. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja. Hero Impossible. Teenage Mutant Ninja Impossible. Impossible. Mutant yeah. Ninja Impossible. It's the next Barbenheimer. <laughs> Tom Cruise in a half shell. <laughs> Scientology. Yeah. Yeah. So that just rolls off the top. Teenage Mutant People Ninja People are going to see that name and go, I'm clicking it. I didn't listen to eight hours of the podcast, but let me click that. Bloody hell. Yeah, I'm not going to put it with any context in the Hall of Fame yeah. vote, just Teenage Mutant Ninja Impossible. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Wow. Okay. Mm. How can I Top that. that. Mm. I'll just said Get the, out of that one, Rommel. Said the vicar to the actress. <laughs> uh, I am going to point at Joel. Point at Joel and show him. I have been watching Frasier. <laughs> What's happened here? That's right. <laughs> Frasier, the TV series from the 90s. One day the 90s will come back. Just you, you mark my words. And I've been reading about stuff as you do. Or maybe, I don't know if normal people do this or not, but I certainly do. When you're watching something, you go online and say, well, who's dead? Who's What they're doing now? What other stuff they've been in? And one thing about Frasier, fun fact about Frasier was the fact that the dog Mm. Uh, got more male than any other member of the cast. There's a fun <laughs> fact that happened fact. tonight. I, I, yeah, everyone says it, so it must be true. No one's just proven it. So, dog. This is the dog. The dog's name was Moose. Dog Moose. Moose. Surely you mean dogs? Do they get what? more than one dog to play a dog in stuff? Moose was the original Eddie. Uh -huh. Moose. Oh, uh, why, why are you going to bring a Moose? dead dog no, 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 on the no, podcast? No, 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 he wasn't. No, he wasn't dead. Moose, Wes Anderson Moose got old and retired, so they replaced him with a younger version. Oh, and for the last retired for the, for the last mm. Frasier. Hard times, baby. Last, yeah. It's when a young dog takes your job, <laughs> they, takes your mail. They give you a watch. They pat you on the butt. <laughs> say a younger dog took your place, daddy. For the last episode of Frasier, they bring Moose back out, and and he That's gets nice. an ovation from the crowd. Oh, I can skip that then. Uh, no, 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 still no, no, do no, it. I didn't know about that. Bloody still hell. Still do it. I, I mean, uh, sorry, I interrupted your nom. Nom, 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 nom. nom. No. So this is Eddie, <laughs> the dog from Frasier, who Brilliant. got more uh, male than the rest. And here he is. I was Googling ready for this because <laughs> I haven't done much this week. And apparently made the cover of Entertainment Weekly with the tagline, he's hot, he's sexy, he's purebred. No, it's not Curry Man. 
It's Eddie the dog. And he's every time he gets one thing to do per episode and he gets the biggest pop of the night. Right. It's like Dan Housen. Uh. <laughs> but a dog. I think a portmanteau for that. I need to watch it. And I've never watched Cheers either. I never ah, watched Cheers either. This phrase is very different to Cheers, even though it's a spin off. It's just, yeah, yeah. It's got the same energy. Okay. Frasier's a bit more, Frasier's a bit more sort of pseudo intellectual than okay. Cheers is. Mm. But I think that's how it sort of presents okay. itself. But no, the, the dog just gets one high spot. Every episode does it, and the crowd's always, yeah, the dog! And sometimes Frasier will just be like, Niles, you know, I can't believe I'm late for the opera, blah, 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 rhyme, blah, 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 blah. Mild laugh. Eddie walks around with someone's pants in his mouth. Ah, oh, the dog! Funny dog! It's like the <laughs> Fraser Porter, not Fraser Crane, has shown me, I've never seen much of Parks and Recreation, but there's an episode where they bring in this local celebrity, which is, is it a tiny pony or something? Little Sebastian? And they all like go mad when the pony walks in. They're all like, "Oh my god, it's <laughs> little Sebastian!" Yeah. And then little Sebastian dies, and they have a, a like a concert for it. <laughs> and they sing a song called 10,000 Candles in the Wind" because it's better than "Candles in the Wind." <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh. So yeah. Um, yeah. So it gets a big pop from the opening bit, like when they're introducing the cast to everyone. It goes like, "Oh, who's this?" He goes, "That's Eddie." I call him Eddie Spaghetti. And it's like, why is that? It's like Italian food. And the dad goes, no, he's got worms. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the dog from Frasier. There was a great scene with Eddie in where, where, where Frasier is once again, f for, for God knows why, necking on with an attractive woman. For some reason, they all fell oh, for... That's Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> Just well. Dude he, dude, he got more press than the KFC book. He that really that did. That man got some boon. <laughs> his hair's closer you, to his arse you, than his eyebrows, and he's you, just there out now. Are you ODB, the rapper, with a bar like that? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> got on my memory bank someplace. There's a scene where they're, they're necking on, and, and Eddie, Eddie jumps up onto the sofa, and she sees Eddie, but Frasier doesn't see Eddie because Frasier's too busy necking on and mm. you know getting handsy. And necking. Yeah. And, necking, and, necking. and necking. And she says, oh, what's your name, little fella? To which Frasier looks <laughs> up and goes, probably she won't laugh. <laughs> 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 Damn it, Niles, we're late for the opera. And other Frasier things. Are you? How are you feeling about the Frasier reboot that's coming imminently? I'm skeptical. I'm terrified. It's going to be awful. <laughs> obviously, find a place Frasier, no issues with him. Is it the same? else. Is it yeah, Grammar? but they've also got Nicholas Lindhurst it's playing not, American. Yeah, it's not the same cast. It's this is this is Frasier. Oh no, because the, dad, the dad's passed away. And... Dad's gone. Oh. Niles, no, I think Niles will probably cameo, but it's ma it's mainly Kelsey Grammer and Nicholas Lindhurst. Nicholas <laughs> that's Lindhurst. the bit. Like well, obviously, look, he's a national treasure in the sense that we want to bury him. Surely, but, but only pulls and horses. <laughs> but like. Post oh, Rodney. Only <laughs> yeah, Rodney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rodney. Oh. Rodney. Exactly. Yeah, yeah Rodney. Rodney. He detests the fact that everyone knows him as Rodney. Oh, yeah, no. but then you've seen it oh. apart from Goodnight Sweetheart, which is, God, it's a depressing thing to watch. It's disguised mm. as a comedy. But apart from that, he's not done a lot. He's Rodney. Well, he's, he's shined in, if we're being honest. Okay. I think they should have called it Fraser and Rodney. <laughs> and he should have just played Rodney. Who is just somehow in the same universe as Frasier now? Just say Frasier, damn it, Rodney. Yeah, you I like conquer. that. Kelsey Grammer can play this old character. I'm now trying so to like, think. Yeah, no, no, I'm now trying to think of the Only Fools and Horses theme tune, but in the jazzy style of the Frasier theme tune. Like, doodly doodly. Stick a pony yeah, in my yeah, pocket. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll fetch the two games from the van. <laughs> 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 Hang on. Oh. Yeah, it sounds rubbish. So, Stay. the dog from Frasier is my pick. Your pick is. Oppenheimer. Going to the cinema no, on my own. Beg your pardon. And yours is Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Impossible. Oh, Oof. <laughs> possible me to comprehend, but not impossible Gosh. for you to vote at home. I'm going to Patreon.com mid... talk over the bit. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash call the holic. Now you can say your bit. I'll talk over your bit in a minute. <laughs> Goodness me. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Oh, this week in wrestling. <laughs> Can we acknowledge? No. I think we have to acknowledge that we had to stop. <laughs> and when we stopped, I gave Matt a giggling fit because I, I said, what if Phil Mitchell was in Oppenheimer playing Robert Daniel Jr.'s role? And I just went, don't drop the bomb. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Matthew had a big Matthew old... enjoyed it. Matthew had a big old giggling fit. <laughs> and he wanted to start this segment without acknowledging it, but... And, and I... Oh. Have, by the way, someone messaged me to say, oh. can you ask Jack in the nicest way possible? Oh, no. Nice. That's a prefix you, you never want to hear. When you do the news in the podcast, you end yeah. up putting the notes up here so no one can see your face. Because uh, I've never got my lenses in. I can't read them. Oh. Do you not put your lenses in? I'm not today. Okay. 
Whenever I do the news, people it's like you get in what news videos? Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, because they, like they send stuff and it's just like, yeah, yeah people, people want to see um, this, but they well, go. Oh, I'll tell you what it is, on. right? Usually I do the news at like half nine in the morning. I've not yet put my lenses in yet. Do you put them in first thing? No, I, I'm, I'm norm- my eyes are all sleepy, weepy. Would it help? <laughs> would, would it help when I wrote the news? I printed it in a bigger. No, font. no, it's all right. It's okay. It's in okay. today's news, <laughs> <laughs> Roman. Rains. <laughs> I do, I've noticed I, I've started to make sure I've got my lenses in on pictures videos because I noticed I was doing it in pictures videos uh, and I'm, on, I'm okay. like side on so it's a bit weird looking. Fair enough. But um, yeah, I'll have to, yeah. Ah, but I am aware, yeah. This week in... Oh, big laugh in the uh, in the room there. Some, something funny's happened. Over there. Good, well, let's hope something funny what happens What could it be, in here, On the podcast I reckon it's right now. I think it's sort of Phil Mitchell playing Robert Downey Jr. Or an up and Smackdown, drop the bomb! I reckon it's something that Dan said he'd... Naughty Dan in there. Someone messes with a bag in the women's locker room, surely signifying the imminent return of Randy (laughs) Orton. Nice. Never forget. Austin's theory. Austin's Austin's theory. theory. (laughs) Not just a theory. Don't trust anyone. I believe. (laughs) Not just a theory. Uh, Austin's theory. I believe that if we mix these atoms together. (laughs) Oh, no. No, no. Don't drop the bomb, lads. (laughs) Imagine if Phil Mitchell played uh, IGD or Stone Cold Steve Austin. (laughs) He did. What do you mean? That was him. Okay, you Vince. Yeah. <laughs> Tries to stop Rey Mysterio winning a fatal four-way match against Sheamus, Cameron Grimes, and LA Knight. Goldberg's yeah. Grant. You get the crowd <laughs> popping and promo just get out of my pub. <laughs> Santos Escobar fights Theory off and Rey wins the match. Mm. He'll face Santos next week to determine the number one contender for Theory's US title. And Better Wrestling Experience on Twitter has said that WWE are apparently considering having a uh, Latino champion on TV, which could mean that one of them's beating Austin Theory for this belt. That would make sense. Yes. Yes, it would. Because I don't think this reign has particularly helped Austin Theory. Uh, he was doing all right until he bumped into the, the, John... the bumper known as John Cena. Yeah, yeah. Ironic, because he didn't bump for him. Oh. No. Yes, I think all of his uh, mistakes have been underlined. Yeah. Rather than have a line scratch through them, like if we do them, uh, for weaknesses, and yeah. we're just waiting to see who he's going to lose to. So, yeah, good for Sanos. It's a shame it's happening right next to LA Knight, and it's like, yeah, okay, that's that's nice. Yeah, yeah. But I it's want unfortunate that. for any of the, the 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 people coming through because I remember when we talked so glowingly about <coughs> Cameron Grimes mm-hmm. about to get like a, a push to the moon, mm-hmm. and and obviously we love Santos Escobar, but LA Knight, <laughs> he steals the show. He's just LA Knight, isn't he? Yeah. And, and that's what you're up against now. And even though he didn't win Money in the Bank, and they were maybe hoping... Well, no, they, I don't know if they were hoping that his popularity would diminish, but they were probably hoping that their chosen pushes were going to get more attention. But he still, when he cut that promo on the way to the ring, everyone was just still fully fully behind him. Mm-hmm. It's, getting, <clears throat> it's getting louder, if anything. Yeah. 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 Let me talk to him. Knight is right. Mm. The nah, Cavender nah, Twins. Nah, 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 nah. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't disagree. The Cavender twins are in the crowd. Backstage, hello. hello. Backstage, Jey Uso walks backstage and greets what, Tony. <laughs> backstage, Jey Uso walks backstage. Oh, no. <laughs> backstage, <laughs> Jey Uso walks backstage Fair and enough. greets Tony D, Stax, and the Creed Brothers. And the way that this is well done is well written, but Tony D, comma, Stax. I thought, is there a dude called Tony D, Stax? Tony D, Stax. <laughs> like, like Chuck D. Head. <laughs> now, the Creeds are... Not in NXT anymore, allegedly, nope. because they lost they the lost. match to the D- the Diad. Yep. Um, but Tony Dean Stax are still NXT superstars. Yeah, what but are they doing? They can do what they want. He's on day release. He is. Yeah. There was a funny bit that was shared on Twitter of Tony Dean Stax walking backstage and pretty deadly walk past them, and they make eye contact briefly and they just look away because <laughs> <laughs> they're on SmackDown. The, yeah, it wasn't. I don't know if it was on SmackDown. No, it was oh, oh, no, no I remember it was, that. Like, it was just a little thing that was shared. I think on. I think on WWE's Twitter. Oh, oh right. Oh, okay. That was good. And like Tony D's going, dude, who was that? They I should know. put they should put that on the actual TV show. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, it'd be funny. For people who watch NXT, it would be yeah. funny. <laughs> so my, meanwhile, an angry Austin Theory, you know he's angry because he goes, Oh, I'm angry. Mm-hmm. Uh, convinces Adam Pierce to book him against Santos Escobar tonight. Mm-hmm. He goes, All right. Uh Kamala Hayes, Trick Williams, and Tiffany Stratton are seen in the crowd out of Charlotte Flair's match against EO Sky. There's NXT people all over the place. They're now, really trying to get those ratings up. Is on NXT. this because there was a shortage of talent? I, I, I remember I might be wrong, but I'm sure I read that there was a few people off sick. Right. And they were filling some gaps with NXT guys. It would make I've sense. been told, like, look on the line, it's six and two threes that they're both fat filling mm. the gaps and also because they're nearby. Right. Came out, and also that they really want NXT to get 
better ratings than AEW Dynamite is what uh, I mean. Yeah, so. And they're building towards the Great American Bash as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that. there's lots of positives as we'll get on to in a minute. Um, where we are. Charlotte wins, but gets attacked by Asuka afterwards, who puts her in an armbar. This match was not reviewed nicely online, uh, no. to say the least. I don't know. I think some people look into the moves too much that are done badly when it comes to women because, again, people just hate women. But I think with Charlotte Flair, I've said this before, she's so much bigger than a lot of women on TV that I don't think she means to be awkward. She's Duplo and everyone else is Lego. Oh, so it doesn't really always fit. So, I mean, she didn't do good with the uh, finishing move. What was it? Finish your move. I can't remember what it is. Natural selection? Good. Thank you very much. Mm. I'll make noises with my move. Who was she wrestling again? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right. That was about to say, because was she wrestling someone a lot shorter than her? Yes, she was wrestling someone a lot shorter mm. than her. Yeah. They yes. had a good match on NXT once, but it was a triple threat with someone. Right. Was it with maybe Rhea? I can't remember. Someone else was in the match. I think it was Rhea. Yeah. And yeah. Rhea did the moonsault right. yeah, on yeah, the figure yeah, eight. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rhea Ripley. Speaking of the devil, is backstage with the new NXT North American champion, Big Dom Dom. Rhea's everywhere. You're really, you're right. They really have stolen our thumbnail strategy of just hey. slamming Rhea Ripley on everywhere. Pretty that sounded awful. Sorry, I, not slamming No, it didn't. Everywhere. It's what they're doing on TV <laughs> and on certain videos that then get deleted on Dudley's Twitter. Hello, oh. mother. Hello. Hello. Mo don't call him mother. Hello, Tom's mother. <laughs> um. Now, my mother is Sue. Uh, Her mother is Rhea. No, no mommy. Is awful. Very is different. Awful. Look how British you are. Hello, I'm mother. So British. Hello, mother. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant me being like all uncomfortable about it. Like, oh no. I thought because we talked about. Rhea knows. She's cool with it. Yes, yeah, Sam asked her. It was like the first question he asked her was, "Do you delete all the weird comments you get?" And she was like, "No, I keep them." Yeah. <laughs> but hang when... on, you say that, but I, the video I saw, you delete all the weird comments in there. No, she came over at Clash <laughs> the Castle. Went, I've been waiting for this one. I watch you guys all the time. Like so, hello, I, mother. I, I, I don't. I can't speak if I think of Rhea Ripley watching us. I'm too scared of her. Ah, oh. why? Scary lady. Don't cross her. Yeah, I won't cross her. Don't cross her path. That's right. But what Hurry you... up, carry on, quick. <sighs> Booch turns up. Booch. Wants title match against Dom, who makes excuses. Shawn Michaels arrives and thinks the title match sounds like a great idea. I thought the way this was set up, it was like. I can't believe a champion's making excuses not to wrestle someone. <laughs> uh, then, then Sean looks at the camera and Dom. Uh, yeah, this was uh, just all about how great Dom is as NXT North American champion. Yes, and Sean was there, which makes me think that this was always maybe the plan then to have NXT people involved. Because if not, I doubt they could have got Sean on short notice. He would have been like, Oh, nah. yeah, he's so busy. <laughs> oh, well, true. Yeah, true. In the Bloodlines locker room, Roman Reigns catches Solo looking at his lay. Don't look at my I've lay. Seen, I've seen videos that start like that. Don't El look at my princess lay. <laughs> <clears throat> Elsewhere, Bailey finds that someone has stabbed her bag with a pair of scissors. What? Oh, the What's poor this bag. about? Well, this is Shotzi, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Shotzi the barber. together. Shotzi the barber beefcake. Oh, she like shaved her head and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, but I, I, sorry. I no, thought yeah. you were putting on no, a I silly act. I should have caught up, and I did with bits, but that's one that slipped my mind. Oh, right, yeah. So they're doing a bit... Where they cut a bit of Shotzi's hair, and yeah, then so she, she went, "Oh, you, you think this bothers me? I'll mm. get rid of my hair." Which I think is a bit of a misstep because the way they've done it is they've made her go crazy, woman. So it actually <laughs> took something that could have meant something because obviously people have been sharing it online the fact that her sister's going mm. to chemo. Oh, right, like right, that. okay, right. So it's based on reality. She's doing that to do that, but it's taken her from being relatable to like, oh, that's really cool. And get behind that character. I want to avenge that. And obviously like, yeah, oh, they yeah. just my hair. And also the thing I'm doing with my sister and just turning into, you know, lights flickering. Oh, I'm going to get you. Because, it's really crazy. Because yeah. the, it's the same because the th words that she was saying in that video was like, you shaved some of my hair. So I'm just taking control of the situation. And right. I'm going to shave mine now. So the words that she said in that bit were great. Yeah. But then again, it's like, don't mind if I do. Uh, like, yeah, we go a bit yeah. silly with it. And I think she you becomes can, unrelatable. Yeah. yeah, if it was just a case, I I kind of wish that you was a done treehouse that. of horror. That was Homer Simpson, wasn't it? I only yeah. really rang a bell in my head. I was like, oh, hang on. I'd have had Shotzi shave her head while staring Bailey dead in the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, would have done fun. that, and then you go right. We're having a match at SummerSlam. If I beat you, Do I'm you doing this to you. Mm. I'm taking control for you. Mm. And then Bailey shaves, gets her head shaved. You, Do you know that the guy yeah. from Jack and Josh is in Oppenheimer? <laughs> <laughs> Jack and Josh. What's it called? Drake and Josh. Drake oh, and Josh. Bollocks. You've got that. I never, I never watched it. 
I've never watched I'm, it. I'm a bit older for it, so um, I'm vaguely aware of what it is. It's gonna take some time to realize. It's a good theme tune, yeah. But now isn't one of them, like, isn't it just Josh now, basically, because the other one's done some stuff. Oh, I heard about that, uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey. So turn around. Let's go to Unproblematic Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Santos Escobar wins his match against Austin Theory, but it's non-title. Yeah, but that's okay. It's the match that Austin Theory demanded earlier. Yeah, yeah. and now he's lost it, <laughs> which makes me think, what does this mean for Santos and Ray? Does that mean that Santos will face him again after winning the number one? Or does this mean that they've had that match already, so it'll be Ray? It will depend on how much of SmackDown next week is written before Vince has a look at the script. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's getting a bit muddled, but at least trying to get Santos over, and it mm. seems to be working. There were people cheering for him, just not as loud as the other one. I was initially skeptical when the when the LWO started because I was like, oh, but his whole thing's been a cool heel, but it's actually helped him a lot, mm. especially when they had that show in Puerto Rico. Exactly. Yeah. Don Mysterio retains his title somehow against Booch at the interference from Rhea Ripley. Mm. It was 90% Dom, though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can we I'm just make him Pete Dunn again? Peter. He he, he's here, he's like, Pete Dunn in, in, in everything but name. Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah. He's talking more. Mm. Give him his burgundy back. Yeah. Again, doing the Barry Windham thing of, you're the stalker. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, for every week, just doing less and less of the makeup. <laughs> he just shows up. It's just the stalker. It's like, no, it's just Barry Windham. <laughs> Uh, Jey Uso and Roman Reigns have their contract signing, but Jey rips the contract up, saying the match is already signed in their blood. Tribal combat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Roman asks if the elders know about this, but Jey says it was their decision. It's so dramatic. Do the yeah. elders know of this? They already decided. <laughs> they agree the match and ceremony touch foreheads. Mm. Solo goes to attack Jey, but Roman stops him, and Jey superkicks Solo to end the show. Oh, yes, that was nice. Gonna, no, no, no. Roman respects the rules of tribal combat, whereas Solo is just a wild card. Uh, uh, it's good that they did that because mm. you think, well, all right, Roman's just going to be the Roman and Roman everywhere while yelling, it's Roman time. But <laughs> by saying like, no, no, I, I am going to take this seriously. So it's like, oh, okay, if he's taking the match seriously, then it's actually going to be him being him. The Ro Just you saying the word Roman so many times then reminded me of the Hannibal chat we were having in the office. Yes. Just about how I, I was saying this week in the office that I feel sorry for Hannibal of the... Carpathians, <laughs> because I feel like the Silence of the Lambs really knocked him down a peg in history. Mm. People, people, you know. Because that's when I walked in and you went, when I say Hannibal, who do you think yeah, of? Yeah. That's why I went Anthony Hopkins. I know, exactly right, yeah. There's a story in the Hannibal DVD when Ridley Scott was hung up by, I think, Dino Dorlanitis to go, hello, Ridley, she's just after... Uh, hello, hello, was, hello, hello, how are you doing? Oh, sorry, not Laurenitis, sorry. Ah. Uh, uh, he goes, uh, I was going to do a Ron DeSantis. Rid thing. Ridley, are you interested in doing Hannibal? And Ridley went, ah, oh, I've just finished doing Gladiator. I don't want to do a big um, uh, right. thing or going over the Alps. He goes, ah, eh? the, the lector, the cannibal. Oh, 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 oh mm. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Right. So we asked Fraser, who do you think of when you hear the word Hannibal? And he went, Hannibal Burris, the comedian. I was like, oh, there's three. <laughs> <laughs> And he was the one who exposed Bill Cosby. Um, to, to touch on this tribal uh, Oh, yeah, combat, sorry, back to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the, now, I whilst I'm glad that we are out of the, the, the horrible pandemic that shut everything down, imagine had this happened during then, we probably would have got this match in a waterfall. <laughs> yeah. Like Black Panther. Yeah, we would, yeah, yeah. With, like, with, with Samoan wrestling legends it surrounding been, it, banging shields. There'd have been fire and, yeah, all sorts. Which yeah, would have been amazing. On, yeah, I've always I've often said this, I, when guys like Amago running around, like they keep on presented tribal Samoa or whatever, not Amer tribal Samoa, Jesus, American Samoa or whatever, mm. or whatever they're from. Like there are people just nonchalantly running around, like, mm. yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, and so are they going to go back just do a segment just one time? I have to go speak to the the, the elders. And there's just gonna, I just have like loads of them just. <laughs> I love the idea. Killing animals with their bare hands and all the other stuff that we stereotypically think of them from the '60s. <laughs> uh, but, but they might do at this rate. But, so I, but I really want forward. them just to just to pack out that area when they do the match with like Samoan history as yeah. many as they can. Yeah, let's get everybody in. Yeah, be great. And then the rock rock bottoms Roman at the end. No, no. I wonder how they're gonna no, no. summer slam baby. Because I feel like it would be a massive shock if Jay won. Um, I wonder how they're gonna have it. I wonder what the finish is gonna be like. Because apparently the rules are it's no DQ, but there's also no one else allowed. It's no mm. one. There's no interference. So now surely they can't have solo. <laughs> Sounds so naive. Surely this time they'll obey the rules. Roman mm. will choke out Jay. Mm, like parallels from the previous. But then Solo's the going to come out and try and help, and Roman's going to go, no, no, Solo. Solo, mm. put down your iron brew. He's going to mm. do the, like when Cena knocked out John Laurinaitis because he wanted to beat CM Punk the mm. right way. And, so he's gonna and then he's going to beat Jay, and the next week he's like, why, why were you out there, Solo? 
Uh, I hope you drop your guitar. I think you're right. No, 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 that is what's going to happen. No, 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 no. Total, stop, 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 stop. Put your leg down. Hey, solo. Not fighting solo. solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not fighting solo. Yeah, your name's not Duo, idiot. <laughs> yeah, why, why are you helping? You think I needed your help for him? Well, this is something that could... Because I think they, you're right. <coughs> they've already sort of sowed that seed a bit with Solo not quite understanding tribal combat mm. because he went to attack Jay and Roman stopped him mm -hmm. and Roman was like, come on, you know it's the crack. The honor, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, so... They gonna, could, yeah, if you attack him, I'm going to have Atha going... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, they're going to have... They're, they're not, stop, not stop ringing now. So I think Roman will keep it with the help of Solo, mm. but all that will stick in his craw. You won't like that. Because Jay will have legit beef to go, I should have I should have had you. Right. And Roman's like, it's, you've embarrassed me, Solo, by mm. helping me, you've embarrassed me. And that will start to turn the gears of Solo going, ah, such mm. a bop. I think you guys have done it. You've nailed it. Mm. Oh. Hurrah. Thank you. We hope to nail you. Excuse me. <laughs> It's Ricky. Did we, goodness did we stutter? Oh my god! <laughs> it's Ricky to rock a rhyme to rock a rhyme. That's right on time. It's Ricky. Nice. Uh, uh, uh. It's not the worst one I've done this week. That, uh, you, these have been great. Stop it. Well, wait for all. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Ricky Starks gets a big introduction after winning the Own Heart tournament. He says it doesn't matter how he beat CM Punk. All that matters is winning the trophy. Punk interrupts and says he doesn't blame Starks for cheating to win. But how does it feel? to treat me like <laughs> knowing he can't beat Punk fair and square Starks mocks Punk for carrying around an empty bag mm -hmm. but Punk says yeah but I'm the real world champion lots of bags this week in wrestling mm. Christian Cage and Chisaurus interrupt and Christian asks how can Punk carry around a title he didn't even win <laughs> it's just fantastic so you, thank, you thank Tom for that line <laughs> Darby Allen arrives and proposes a tag match Darby and Punk versus Starks and Christian Tony Schiavone announces that Tony Khan has instantly made it official you must take his word for it, I guess. I think Shivani's lying a bit. I think this was Tony Khan trying to remind us all that he runs the show. It's not CM Punk. It's his show. Good luck with that one. Mm. Uh, yes, what this, if, what this if, was a good bit of uh, AEW Presents Monday Night Raw. What if when CM Punk finally reveals what's in the bag, it's the spinner belt? Oh, yes. He never, he never brought it back. Uh, <clears throat> so this has been in my fridge all these years. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Uh, <laughs> it's not hard. Uh, uh, um, I liked it though. I know you said it's like a typical raw sort of sports entertainment opening, but but Punk and this is a rubbish argument. But Punk came out with no music, so it was real. It felt real. <laughs> <laughs> I find to really make a point in an argument, you ended the argument without your theme music playing. Yeah, Vampiro needs to learn that. Yeah. I'll say this: I like that Ricky may have yeah, cheated a little bit, but he's not gone full blown Jungle Boy style bad guy. He's just like Ricky, but you know, cheated a little I bit. I found it because, weird in the main event when the teams were the way they were. I thought it was going to be Darby and Ricky because the crowd were booing. Punk, Punk was basically. I, I was going to say, that's, yeah. it's good that uh, Ricky hasn't gone, I'm evil now. Mm. <laughs> He's just like, I beat you. I'm so evil, I'll drop the bomb on Oppenheimer. In fact, <laughs> um, what, they even mentioned it in the promo. It's like, it's not as if Punk's. Won every that, single that, match clean in his whole career. Like yeah, he's, and he's the been reason, a heel. The reason why they haven't turned Ricky full heel is because the crowds are very mixed right now. Punk knew and by it. By which I mean some people when are he, cheering for him and some people are not cheering. When for he him. realized that the show was on the East Coast, I think he did like an Instagram story or something like, I hope Newark doesn't do anything untoward to me tonight or something like that. Like he knew it was going to happen. He knows. He loves it. <laughs> uh, which is nice. It was nice in the next segment. Andrade tries to get into the building, but he's barred after his actions last week. It's been a while since I've seen a genuinely crap actor in wrestling. <coughs> this one security Andrade's guy. Andrade's a lovely... Oh, not right, Andrade, okay, right, man. Right. I'm going to become daft and talk crap about him. Mm -hmm. um, Andrade, Andrade, Andrade can forget all his lines. I'd still say, God, he looks good. Have you seen how big he is at the minute, by the way? Andrade. Yeah, yeah he's oh, wedge. Lots of meat in that. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's a honky scrummy, boy. Scrummy, scrummy. The walking Savloy dip. But the security <laughs> guard here was just the crap. Oh, really? No, Andrade, you can't come in. Not after last week. The actions last week means we can't. It was like Lance Storm <laughs> on heroin. <laughs> no, Andrade, go, go, Andrade. You go, go, Andrade. No, you here now. You not be here. You be out. <laughs> he sounds great. This opposite situation just... to what we need right now, Andrade. <laughs> I think Andrade didn't so much listen to the security. He just gets sick of hearing him and go, oh, you're rubbish. I know, you. I, know he's, I know I've compared your Rollins impression to Gruntilda before, but that was a bit mumbo. Jumbo from Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. No, no, no. yeah. No <laughs> That's it. He's like, no, no, like no, why no, can't no, I come no, in? No, 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 no. So, oh, so, so, so <laughs> therefore he has to go collect five skulls and turn into yeah. a fridge. Yeah. He has to learn. So he can sneak fast. I think he has to learn how to get. Oh, washing machine. <laughs> he has to learn how to get Charlotte to walk on her legs out of the hill. So he can go, yeah. He'd <laughs> <laughs> be 10 foot tall if he. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Played Banjo Kazoo before Joel? <laughs> no, all right. That'll, that'll just be nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Joel bored to tears. Yeah. 
Bullet Club Gold beat Action Andretti and Darius Martin. Your f- new favourite tag team, Bullet Club Gold. Or yeah. Juice Robinson and Friend, as you call them. Yes, Juice Robinson and... Uh, oh, you're just going to let Tom one, recover from the band. Andrew, he's he's, he's, he's going to wind himself up, don't worry. <laughs> um, Juice Robinson and one exciting other wrestler yeah. uh, on the card beat Action Andretti and Darius. Um, it's nice they put these two lads together, but it was just a match just to show how good Bullet Club Gold can be. Just yes. showing off the gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There is all gold. <laughs> like the colour your face has turned. Bloody hell, mate. <laughs> like you sweat like a pregnant nun. I think you two should do a 90s podcast. Not just particularly about Uh-oh. gaming or wrestling or anything, just 90s. That's just us talking. Right, just make it monetize. Hey, that. Tom. <laughs> hey, it's been five minutes. Remember the 90s? <laughs> Remember Seal? <laughs> Nick Camarotto, I'm playing Pogs with Seal. Oh, wait, I was meant to ask, because I missed a week, obviously. What did Andrade do? Because I looked back, and all I could see was that he walked out during a match into the arena. He collected, yeah. he collected five jiggies and turned into a spot. <laughs> the, 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 the House of Black stole his mask. I've been taunting on tellies. Mm. And I guess, so he walked out? Andrade's like, give me back my mask, you, you twat. And, and they'll be like, oh, Andrade, no interfering. He's like, <laughs> hang on, mean, it's them. Oh, wait, no, Andrade, it no, felt weird. no, God. It felt really weird. It felt like an excuse to get him to do the run. It felt like a lazy version of the Austin. There's no way Austin's showing up tonight. Yeah. Like that trope. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was just no Andrade, no. This mm. is your segment for the week. If <laughs> if only if only a tag team partner had re-signed recently with the company right. that could come oh. to his aid. Oh, if only, oh, never right. mind. Bottles. <laughs> <laughs> of course he can. Who's that burying a hole inside the ring behind House of Black? <laughs> Holding the title just like this, just low enough. For... Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still thinking about Charlotte being in her backpack. Hey, uh, mm, mm. <laughs> and Dottie lo- lo- thing on the back like that. Like. Spitting eggs out. <laughs> <laughs> it is title she's won. <laughs> <laughs> when you run out of those, now nah, I've got limited nah, I've got supply. Loads. <laughs> got the rematch cheat on. <laughs> Nick Comorado, who could do with a Banjo Kazooie gimmick because he's got nothing going on right now. His Ambushes gimmick is a big Miro. hairy man. I think that's, that's yeah. all it needs mm. to be. So n- Nick the Bear. Ambushes Miro before their match. Which bear as well. Is, ooh, two burly bear men. The two, the two bears go at it, but Miro fights back and ultimately wins. Uh, Crowd love Miro, obviously. We all do. We all love Miro. He's had three matches so far, which is he's one more for having all the matches he had last week, year. Wow. wow. Oh, well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good good on Miro. But yeah, we love a good squash, don't mm. we? That's what we have there. Mm-hmm, yeah. They also black beat the acclaimed and Billy Gunn to retain the trio's titles. And I was rather tickled by this because the acclaimed have been coming out every week going, yo, listen, we're not saying we've got nothing to do right now, but... Um, Everybody loves the acclaimed. Mm-hmm. Trio's title shot? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. We're going to come back for those titles that they lost their shot in at the last pay-per-view. Yes. And so they had this match and lost about five minutes because House of Black like now are really good. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's actually really funny. Yeah, we're going to beat the House of Black. Oh, oh, right, right. They're getting a the, big push. They've, 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 so, they've been grinding and they've leveled up. Yes. Yeah, and so then after match, Billy leaves his boots in the ring. And they came trying to stop him from leaving, but he walks out. And it was amazing how invested, I think we all were, just to speak for myself, we all were in 60-year-old Billy Gunn. Yeah. Mm. Like, no, Billy, don't retire now at the peak of your popularity. <laughs> How is he so big? I don't understand. Oh, sorry, I can't say When he took his... No, no, no. How not... He's not a actually gas man. He's so big. <laughs> but when he took his boots off, it made me look at his legs to go, oh, I wonder if he's... Oh, yeah, he's got long socks on. And then I was like, how do you get your hamstrings <laughs> that big? Like, he's just... It's yeah. like he's full of like water. He's massive. He's so big that like, when he stepped out of his boots, oh, no. right move put it on as a three bed annex. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, that According to all the actors when they go on the talk shows, it's uh, chicken and broccoli. Yes. Mm. And prayers and vitamin. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Hard work. But yeah, it was like, oh no, I'm not Billy Gunn. And you're like, hang on, he's ancient and he's just been, hey, it's Billy Gunn. But he can still be a gay old he dad. He can still do it. Yeah. And, still, and, and the crowd were really behind his little comeback at the end before he got oh. beaten. Yeah. yeah. Well, as the days Amazing. have wore on, it very much feels like this is all a thing they're doing. Because we're getting pictures of like Billy Gunn, like at home, at his, uh, at his wife's work, just lolling around. Like they're, they're obviously building up to him coming back. Mm. If he, yeah. But if it's to build, what if it's to build up to one big retirement match? It could be. That'd be nice. Who would it be against? Road, Road dog. dog, yeah, we have to pick. <laughs> the Rock. The Rock. We finally get his revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Who would it be? 
Yeah, but it would have to be Ooh, Road to yeah, Ken Shamrock. Mm. No, no, wait, wait. He's King of the Ring. He's not doing yeah. singles. He's going to have to be, he's got to be acclaimed, right? Dumpster match. A funk and ah, fully about him. No, no, that's it. He, lo- he loses the dumpster and this wheel him out and he's, bye everyone, <laughs> bye. They, they, I tell you what, they do a trios match. They win the trios titles and Billy Gunn goes, I've now retired. And then the acclaimed have to find a new third mm. person. Who's the third man? Who's the third man for the acclaimed? Why, it's Sky Broadband subscriber, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Sky view, I can't remember. Sky. I got a good package deal, brother. Yeah. Sky, am I, oh, I just had a vision of Hogan married to Sky Blue. What am I doing? Oh, God. <laughs> what a lucky girl. <laughs> Come here, you lucky, lucky brother. Blue. <laughs> F- blue. FDR could have. That was good. FDR could have promo on Adam Cole and MJF. Dax Harwood likens their opponents to the other kids from his childhood who never had to work for anything. But my dad made me have a job. Yeah, he says they're making a joke out of wrestling, but the crowd are fully behind Cole and MJF. It's hard to tell, isn't it, if Dax was like, I'm going to cut this really cool babyface promo and all the working men are going to like us. A bit like Brett. And the crowd were like, I don't care you had to work as a kid. <laughs> Shut up, you miserable old man. We like the funny In ones. my <laughs> day. Oh, that always works, doesn't it? He came close to being being the four Yorkshireman sketch yes. brought to life. <laughs> and it got we a had crowd. to sleep in a septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all this stuff about colliders. There have been different fans for this show on Dynamite. Oh, not here, not here, Sonny Jim. Mm. They were fully behind Cold MGF and chatting double clothesline. <laughs> and they did such a good job of being like, yeah, mm, double clothesline. We know a few double team moves as well. I was gonna say I don't. I think that it, it, at least, at least they're not. Even though their face is FTR, they're not smiling happy faces. Mm. So they can power through a segment like this and I say, agree, "Well, yeah. we don't care what the crowd say. We're still the real tag team here." Yeah, I think that's good. I like that. Yep. Yeah. And then Ty, I think it's gonna be a great match. I'm looking forward to I it. I am looking forward mm. to it. Well. Ty Valkyria beats Sky Blue. Ty Valkyrie. Sorry, beg your pardon. You've managed Tyre. to correctly Tyre. pronounce her name, but she's not here I yet. Hate these Ty. <laughs> Tyre Valhalla beats yes. uh, Hogan's wife and calls out Britt <laughs> Baker afterwards. The match is made official for Dynamite, which is a shame, really. Because uh, oh. it, wasn't, it wasn't great on Dynamite. But also it was another instance of... And Tony Khan's instantly made that official. I was like, what a weird trope that they've We're supposed to believe Tony Khan's paying attention to the women's division. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe everything else on this show. Like, uh, oh, uh, Get him. Zing. <laughs> <laughs> in the main event, Starks and Christian beat Punk and Darby, but Starks pinning Punk in the same way he did last week, which is cheating, mm. but it's okay. Uh, Christian wrestled this match with the turtle. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Is he the best pure heel in wrestling right now? He's up there. I love hating him. Yeah, he's great. He's so good. What a dick. <laughs> It's really good. I've not noticed that. that was, it's a shame. Like, oh, wow. How great is Christian? All I thought is, wow. Christian and Punk going at it. It's the first time since ECW on Sci-Fi we've seen this. But mm. I'm not even sure they really tangled. Bloody hell. But it might have been. Yeah. They but might have both been in the... No, they weren't. Oh, maybe like... I was going to say, were they both in the hardcore chamber match? But that was Test with short hair, not Christian. Yeah, yeah. Or, mm. Way yeah, bigger. Wow. Yeah, Christian. Way bigger. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, Christian looked massive. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of um, Christian being... Is he one of the best pure heels? Uh, well, Ross and I get into the weeds on that. Ooh. We did a tier list of AEW heels. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and I believe it's on the channel this weekend. Is that what you were doing the other day in the yes, studio? I, I heard intense discussions going on. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. It's 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 quite it's it's the idea of where you rank them, like uh, in terms of like you know someone that's very liked but a bad guy, uh, like you know they that make them a good heel or a bad heel, mm. and it just. We go to the weeds, there'll be a lot of conversation, there'll be a lot of debate on it. I think it's on the YouTube channel and on the podcast feed on Sunday. Whenever I do a tier list next to Ross, I'm always impressed by his exhaustive research. Have you seen the notes that he brings with him? Oh, he <laughs> is a journalistic a machine. machine. He is a machine. He is the machine. He's the machine. The machine, Ross. The machine. It's twice in his name, that's how much machine he is. Ah. No gimmicks needed. The machine, machine. Ross, the yeah. machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's one of the Chuck uh, Taylor names. Yeah. I'm just having a look and see if Punk, uh, last time they wrestled. Oh, I mean, the Mike Ladder match. I thought it was one of them. Oh. Yeah. 2013. Orton, Christian, Punk, Brian, RVD, and Sheamus. What a liner. Mm. Bloody hell. And then it was smacked down. Anyway, very boring. But no, uh, I thought this was a lovely match. But mm-hmm. it, when you're, you're half watching these matches on uh, Collision, on the Kaleidoscope, and half just paying attention to the crowd. Right. And yeah, crowd were like, boo, Punk. We're. We're here to boo you. Did you yeah, see that? Yeah. No, we haven't stopped hating you. And I think that's just lovely. I missed this last week, so sorry if it's already been talked about, but Owen filled me in when we were on Twitch. He oh, pointed, we, we raided the Chugs, which is Adam Cole. Hey. And um, I was like, he keeps, he doesn't talk about wrestling ever on his Twitch, does he? And Owen was like, no, yeah. but MJF rang him on his Twitch stream hey. the other week and was like, 
he was like, yeah, I like to keep wrestling and streaming separate. And MJF's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But could we do a double clothesline maybe? It's just on his actual Twitch stream. I thought it was really good. Oh, when, yeah. When MJF flattens Adam Cole. No, Thank no, no, you. no, Thank you, no, no. I knew there was, I knew there was somebody here. It's going to be magnificent. I, right, I'm, I, I'm pleased to have learned that apparently Fraser is team me on this one and that it's going to be Cole who is one step ahead of MJF. I know that was the big question last week. What's more likely, Cole and MGF lasting or Fraser and Jack? <laughs> me and Fraser. <laughs> you Strange me, bedfellow. <laughs> me, me and Fraser are right here. And I think after this week's Dynamite, which we'll get to, I think that makes, that's mm. moved the needle in my direction slightly. I think it's fine. Yeah, you, mm. well, you need it. Mm. Uh, Monday Night Raw, forget your troubles. Come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah. Come, Come on, on, get, get happy. happy. Get ready for the Judgment Day. What? Is that it? Get ready for... What's going on? Was there a last bit there? It got yeah, my... Well, I said get ready for, and then read point one. The Judgment Day. Bring out Dom with his new belt. Get ready show. for the Judgment Day, and then the Judgment what Day. What song is this? Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're gonna be all your tears away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the Judgment Day. Ah. What's a song? <laughs> get happy oh is it judy garland judy garland yeah it's judy garland it's like a little ah, musical song isn't you it? know what fraser would have loved that Joel, he is rubbing off on Joel you knew it. Mic, i'm sorry that was a scandalous accusation Damn, I'm just um saying. get happy song no it's gonna bring up bloody daft punk in it no let's get lucky let's get lucky that's all right then um get happy sound of the summer it is yes um what movie is get happy from i'm gonna guess get happy. summer stock <laughs> Some MGM studio. Wow. Wow. The summer stock. They're interrupted by Owens and Zane, and both sides argue back and forth. Zane goads Dom into accepting a match for tonight, and Rhea even agrees that Dom will put the title on the line. Nice bit of AW collision to open the show. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Becky Lynch beats Zoe Stark despite interference from Trish Stratus. This secures a rematch between Becky and Trish. I like this match. I thought they had good chemistry. Zoe Stark's looking better and better every week. Yes. A nice uh, drop kick at the top. Yes, I know it's right there. Remember, remember, Apparently, the imagine. stipulation was that if Becky lost, she had to get "Thank You Trish" tattooed on it. They got a bit mm. silly last week because it's like, oh, maybe she will lose if she, she has to thank "Thank You Trish." That's all she wants. Number three, you have to get your your sorry, my name on your chest. It's all right. It's like, oh, she's not winning. She's not. Nah. Maybe if not then. Becky Lynch looked like Malachi Black and was covered in tattoos, then I'd believe it. Or Brody King. I can get it covered over. But uh -huh. I don't think Becky has any tattoos. Mm. Not yeah. that I can think of. I like the thank you, Trish thing, though. Yeah. It's 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 akin to... Acknowledge uh, me. Acknowledge me, but it's also akin to Malachi Black when he was Alistair Black and a guy who is we don't talk about anymore. Oh, the respect mm. angle thing. Yeah, where, where you know, he wanted him just to say his name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or Roman being, ac acknowledge yeah. me. Yeah, I just so, said that. Yeah. Sorry. Just say that. So I oh. like the Once idea. A podcast, I love it. But I like the idea that Becky and Trish are gonna have this big blow off match at SummerSlam that will end with Becky beating Trish mm. and then at the end going, Thank you, Trish. Oh and then we never see Trish my again. Oh god. Watch it. Yeah. But just, say, <laughs> just turns into mist. Thank you, Trish. I can't do her voice. <laughs> thank you, mate. <laughs> I think it will end with Becky saying thank you, Trish, but it'll be of her own accord. <laughs> yes, I think you're right. That'd be nice. Mm. Well, and Trish then Joey gets, will kick her head. And... Trish gets carried away like Bischoff at the end of One Night Stand. And they'll <laughs> throw her in a bin. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're saving up for Billy. Oh. Uh, Cody <laughs> Rhodes cuts a promo on Brock Lesnar after being beaten up in front of his mam last week. Oh, mam. what a great moment. Only in wrestling could we be like, yay. His no, mom. I was like, no. It was, but it was almost, it was like, it was almost like, Oh, I'm so glad I have finally prepared this giant kick. I hope no one <laughs> pushes me over and I fall into it. It was so And then Oppenheimer like, drops the bomb. No, <laughs> you nuked my kick. Josh also, I am dead. Out. Josh, there he is. <laughs> oh, Drake. Oh, Josh. Josh, Josh. Oh, Josh. Josh definitely so, Josh. Yeah. Ah, law. <laughs> also, my kick is wrong. Oh, my God. That reminds, I've been listening to On My Big Walk. You, I have to download podcasts for my walk, so I'm not bored on my walk. In nature. Uh. So um, I'm listening to one called Roman Emperor's Totalis Rankium, where they rank all the emperors. Oh, wow. And they go through all the Roman emperors. Chrono it's, I guess they do a ranking at the end, but for now... They in condescending order. Chronologically hey. in this one. And, uh, but yes, in condescending order. And um, they've got categories like Fightius Maximus, like how good are they at fighting and stuff like that. But at the end, the last category is, they go, their little like bit, like you know where we have like, everybody get excited, and the little stings. Um, they've got... 
to zjavi se ten Jeune César. Jeune César. Jeune César. All right, yeah, I'm born now. To zjavi se ten Jeune César. Fabulous. And then they're deciding whether like Vespasian has a Jeune César about him, <laughs> which is me. good. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm envisioning though, my way is like it's like, hi, Anna Pacini here. Ranking the top 10 Roman <laughs> emperors. <laughs> well, Number one, 10, well, Caligula. I, I, might, I might tweet them or something, because one of them, I, I'm sure, made like a little wrestling reference that the other one didn't pick up on, and I was like, there's wrestling fans oh, everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. It says, Roman Reigns, go home. But shout out to no, the lads doesn't. from... Um, <laughs> I think it's called Totalis Rankium. And, uh, what did he ever do for us? The Aqueduct. That's right, yeah. 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 Rhodes. <laughs> Apart from Rage Smackdown ratings, the highest they've ever been. Yeah. <laughs> he has a wife, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> A bit of Monty Python on the. They they had to redo that scene loads Re of times. Were they laughing too much? Yeah, and, and every time Michael Palin changed the name. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. Oh, the, the Incontinentia <laughs> buttocks was the last one. <laughs> oh, are there other examples of what the names were? Like? No, sadly oh. not. It's there's a famous outtake from The Office where Ricky Gervais is. It's when he goes up to Tim and he's like, Timber. He keeps on making up new names for Tim. And he goes like, yeah. the Canterbury Tales of Tim, because he called Tim Canterbury. Yeah, yeah. And then for some reason he goes like, Bishop Muzzarewa. <laughs> I don't know why. And you see him like, he doesn't know what he's going to say next. Jill's seen it. He knows. I like takes like that with a W, like, yeah. not messing, but just also like you trying stuff out. You yeah, can see yeah. the actors being like, we need to get this done. What are you doing? Yeah. But Ricky's, in charge. That's the one that's to like, I used to show him on Channel 4 as a special. I said, ping pong ball, oh, <laughs> ping, ping pong guns. ball. The, the Max and Paddy outtakes are amazing yeah. as well. Because um, he gets, it's, bit, it's good when he starts laughing, he goes, oh no, yeah, oh no, yeah, he's yeah. got the giggles, he'll mm. take forever to do it. There's one where he's, the, we've got them by the balls here, but he keeps going, it's Peter Kagan, we've got him by the balls here. And he's like, why are you saying balls for? <laughs> and he's like, well, I've, I can't not say it now, I've said it, it's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ricochet is briefly interviewed backstage. Speaking of comedy, uh, Ricochet Aww. is briefly interviewed backstage out of his face to face showdown with Logan Paul. Later, he asks Nakamura if he's seen Logan in the building. The answer is no. Mm -hmm. No, he had a certain. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis. 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 That's such a good, good one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we think about that. Apparently, Caesar was never an emperor, he was the leader of the Republic. I thought the issue was he made himself, he deemed himself dictator emperor. Dictator for life. <laughs> oh, dictator <laughs> yeah. for life. Well, yeah, something like that. For life. Bam, 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 Hey, that was hey. The, he was the last leader of the Republic, and then they became the Empire instead. Oh. Mm. So he's leader by default. Yes. So the first emperor was Augustus, apparently. Up until he fell in the chocolate river. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mike TV. <laughs> yes, was the... <laughs> <laughs> Mike's TV. <laughs> Mike's TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to put the hard to rest in your laurels when you're big. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, uh, we say this because Ricochet was interviewed. He sounds all right, but sometimes, he, again, like Dax, he does these promos. He's like, "You didn't make it through hard work and blood and sweat." He's talking to kids, mm -hmm. talking to loads of kids who are like, "Yay, Logan Paul, TikTok." Yeah, they're like, we don't mm. care about the hard work and we're gonna be entertained right now. That's the that's the thing we have now. We don't care about oh, I wrestle Adway Mid South in for thirty people. Good for ye. Mm. Like kids don't care about that. And stuff. I think I think that that sort of thread of Logan, Logan Paul feuds is kind of done now. I think it's worn now. I think well, every you haven't earned. Yeah, this. Every, every every match Logan Paul has had has been based around. Oh, you Johnny come lately? You haven't earned it. Like, well, I'd like. To th I think he's earned it now. To be honest, he goes with out and over delivers. Yeah, and, yeah, literally every match <clears> he's had, he's over delivered. <clears> I think he's earned yeah. it. I'm sorry, he, like you say, I'm sorry he didn't wrestle in yeah, but living in well, mid south in front of 32 people. He didn't take down the ring, did he? He didn't put up the ring. No, he didn't. No. No. You know what? Uh, he was too busy selling Prime to yes. kids and taking photos. Again, the promo he did against Ricochet the week, he went, sorry, no one likes me. I'm taking a selfie with kids. Yeah. Like that. I, I, it was like, uh, yeah, because that's what he, he's, he's emphasizing his positives. Yes. His positives is he's a dickhead. Well, they so should let, yeah, they and should people let, are like, we like dickhead. It's a weird thing now. You think like the black and white nature of old school wrestling, but now it's like, yeah, he's a dickhead. He's also insanely popular. Yeah, with kids. this is Kevin Nash's fault, and the NWO. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. Probably. Yeah, you're right. I, um, I did like Ricochet going, oh yeah, you want to fight me? Why don't you come out and fight? And then look up all hitting him from. Now, <laughs> well, I mean, you asked for it, mate. They should accentuate accentuate Ricochet's strength, which is that he's an insane athlete. But, mm. you know, they've got to get mm. to the match first, I They suppose, did that but... when he did the thing where he, he, oh, he, he did, the, did the leap over yeah. the rope and, and landed. Said, That's nice for a TikTok. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. like, hey, but he, you're the he TikTok. He did that in his feud with... You're the Diddy Kong racing. Alistair Black's opponent that we can't talk about still, again. You love bringing him up, mate. I know, I was Tom before. Stop mm. bringing up... Um, I didn't, I didn't. Vanilla Nightmare. Of all the... Of all the... <laughs> the flavor of all the waste of potential that... 
has been squandered by people being awful people in the wrestling. Yeah. That's the biggest stop one. Bringing, yeah. Stop bringing up carrot cake mid-summer piss. That was just terrible, wasn't it? I'm Are you trying really, to like... Oh, that bombed harder than Oppenheimer. Mate, <laughs> that's a joke that not even I would have made. I can't think of... I try to think of stuff you do at night and like family fortunes. I'm like... Oh. Stuff you do at night. So like, you could call it... Flavor of a cake. And <laughs> do then... we really want to... No. <laughs> could you call it like... <laughs> okay, see, you about saying it was funnier than me doing you call it like Thank you for saying that. Soft material slumber or something like that. I don't know. That sounds like a bed company. <laughs> it does, yeah. Anyway. So Steve Austin's podcast is brought to you by... Uh, where are we at? Who cares? No one's listening to this bit. Sami Zayn loses to Dom <laughs> after being distracted by the Judgment Day, leaving a beaten up Kevin Owens on the stage. He's been Kev written off. checked up by the medical staff. This and the Liv Morgan bit. I thought, because a lot of people getting beat up on this show and then dragged out, yeah. it turns out, yeah, because they're both mm. legit injured. What of the tag team titles? Uh, we don't know yet. I yeah. Guess. Well, the rumor is that it's a it's a it's a rib injury, mm. which will, which normally take about six weeks. Oh like right, so they could. Yeah. So it, it kind of rules them out for SummerSlam. Ah. Mm. Not that anything legit was in place for SummerSlam. But it you'd was, imagine it, they would have a tag title. They might have done yeah. Sammy and Kev versus the Judgment Day. Yeah. Yeah. Versus Dom and Priest. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they might still do it. They might. I I could see them swapping out Kevin for Matt Riddle. Yes, he's been there with you. have him as like the kind of their friend, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. So that's so scathing. Yes, he's been their friend, I suppose. I'd pick away them losing without losing. Mm. Say, whoa, dude, sir, I lost your title. They're like, that's basically what. Give him the death stare. Kevin's like, this is why I hate you. It's basically what Oromensa did to Noam Dar. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Which we'll get to. Steal, steal from the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, said Kevin Owens has been dealing with this for a while. Apparently. Which is just what a machine he is. I know. Wrestling. They call just... him the Ross backstage in Raw. You know? <laughs> uh, Backstage, the Judgment Day intimidate Akira Tozawa and Apollo Crews. Uh, Tozawa backs down, but Apollo doesn't. So I don't come match later on. I forgot Apollo Crews was on Raw. Yeah. I feel bad. But I remember Tozawa was on Raw because Rhea Ripley likes scaring him. And because he was Cody's... Cody betrayed him when he was like, oh, consider being that your tag partner. Yeah. comedy bit. And then he betrayed him and when... I'll be partners with Kevin Sammy instead. Oh, yeah. poor Akira. Mm. He needs to get on his bike. I've never seen it, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's about. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, That's all the film is. He's on his bike. Okay, he's around. Oh, it's on my watch the wind, list. The wind in my hair. I hope nothing happens. Ahead of his match with Bronson Reed, Tommaso Ciampa warns Nakamura not to get involved this time. Bronson wins after Nakamura <laughs> comes out the ramp, which distracts Ciampa. I mean... He told him not to. Yeah, these two having a uh, uh, Tommaso Champa, Tommaso Banger, <laughs> bloody hell! It's nice just having these lads, the Nakamura, Reed, Champa, uh, whoever, maybe Ricochet, who's not mm -hmm. doing stuff with TikTokers. Just having these lovely little matches on Raw, just to kill time. Mm -hmm. They the, are the match building up and just yeah, because they were giving it big uns. This reminds me a lot of them. Um, did you ever have like a VHS taped episode of Raw or SmackDown when you were a kid? And oh, you yeah. just it's just a random episode, but mm -hmm. you remember it so well because yeah. you watched it back so many times because it was on yeah. tape. So I had one where it was X Pac versus Rikishi. And previously, X Pac yeah. and Road Dog had been in a friendly rivalry, even though they were still both in DX together. Yeah. And this must have been like 2000. 1999. No, no, no. No, they, sorry, they had to sorry, think 99, it was but Rikishi wasn't there yet. Rikishi so was it, yeah. You are right, But it was, um, I just remember Jonathan Coachman throwing to it, going like, we'll have a look at what happened on bloody... So, <laughs> is that what he said? <laughs> it's Jonathan Coachman. We need some work back then. Um, and <laughs> Ro X I thought what they were going to do was what they did back in, where X-Pac told Road Dog, no matter how much Rikishi's battering me, stay in the back and don't oh, help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Rikishi gets on the second rope to do the Banzai drop, looks at the entranceway and like, Come on, then where are you? Start slapping his ass. <laughs> and then Road Dog doesn't appear and he just squashes him. I thought they were going to do that where he's not going to come out to help Champa, but yeah. he actually came out and distracted him instead. So it was a slightly... But it reminded mm. me of that really specific feud that I don't think went anywhere. But there was lots of really cool stuff back in well, the they, they had, had down, wasn't there? Road Dog and Xbox had a match at SummerSlam. Oh, right, okay. And then uh, Xbox But that won was by, it, was it? Was Xbox won by Xbox going, cheating. Xbox went like, I can't believe you don't think I'm good enough for this. And mm. Road Dog's like, I'm looking out for you. What? And all this, and Xbox's them. way better than Road Dog. <laughs> in, in, re real, re in real life. In real life. In real life. Yeah. No offense to Road Dog. Earl. Earl. IRL. IRL. Oh. AFK. <laughs> don't say, sorry. Road Dog's real name is Earl Dog. Earl <laughs> Dog. <laughs> His surname is actually My name Dog. Is Earl, Dog. How convenient. Hey. Backstage, Liv Morgan says she was the last person to beat Rhea Ripley. 
and she'll do it again. Was she? I didn't check that. No, me neither. Oh. I just believed her. Yeah. Hmm. She's a filthy liar. <laughs> Uh, she leaves, so Chelsea Green and Son- sorry, Chelsea Green and Sonia Deville arrive to complain about not getting their own interview time. Reverably scares them away before saying she took out Raquel. Now she's going to take out Liv. That was a nice bit. That was good. We've waited world- for our time. Whoop. Bye. No, the world revolves around Rhea. Rhea mm. appears as it should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rhea has been walking around this week scaring people and injuring them. <laughs> I think Rhea is misunderstood. Okay. Because I felt, because I don't know what it was. I saw this bit and they went, as it, yep, you're brilliant. Well, bye. And they left. I got a little hint of sadness in Rhea. She's like, she just wants a friend. Just wants some friends. <laughs> I just hang out with Dom all the time. I just want some girlies to go see Barbie with. Yeah, I yeah, did yeah, not yeah. get that. I got that she was a goth dynamite kid. All she's oh. doing is fighting people backstage and causing bother. Rhea, I think you need some like, some friends. I get, I hear it. I see it through the. She's screen. got them. The Judgment Day. No, but like girlfriends. Yeah, she yeah. Go see Barbie. Just see them. The Judgment Day. Do a makeup with. And, no, I tell me all the Judgment Day. Day. I'm not going to see Barbie together. I mean, they probably will do. <laughs> Just the same though. Just not even. They've not worn pink. They've just all turned up. Yeah. <laughs> really How do? In the crowd. Right. Yeah. Rio attacks Liv during her entrance and beats her down, pilmanizing her arm with a steel chair because she's legit injured, which yes. means that they're both out. This yes. team. Mm. So they've already gotten rid of the tight. Gotten rid of. Sorry, took the tight titles off this team because one of them was injured. Now they're both injured, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, shame. Liv, t- has, Liv has bad luck with injuries. The women's tag division is going perfectly well as normal. Hmm. Yeah, we so. need the Kawi girls to save the day. We do. We do. We really do. Alpha Academy cut a backstage promo. Chad Gable challenges the Viking Raiders to an Academy Rules match, correctly stating, yeah, but who cares about what, what is Viking Rules anyway? No one, no one knows. Mm-hmm. While Maxine Dupri wants to have her first ever singles match against a Valerie Haller. Well, I mean, she beats her all the time, so that's a wise decision because she's pinned yeah. her like twice now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the Vikings get a return promo later on and say that the gods are pleased when they do battle in their name. Yeah, they, they said they accepted the challenge in their own Viking way. Dude, if I was the gods, I'd be like, can you just find, can you just do something else? <laughs> <laughs> I hear the Egyptians are wanting some, you know, uh, dress up as, uh, you know. We will fight and then we will I come know. to Valhalla. Ah, well, well I think it's not, it's not as easy to get to Valhalla. It's not good this time of year, oh, it's full of tourists. It's, it's, you, know. <laughs> you wouldn't like it. It's Valley just, of the Kings, that's more, ooh, it's busy, man. the food's not very good this year. You wouldn't yeah. like it here. I'd try somewhere different. Mm. <laughs> Zeus is looking. Yeah, <laughs> Zeus. Give Zeus a call. Yeah, Zeus yeah. is like, shut up. From SummerSlam 1989. Yeah. <laughs> he sounds just like Rip Torn, like in the Disney film. <laughs> uh, Ricochet heads out the ring and wants a match. That, they, that film Zeus portrays like. Zeus as a way a much bigger baby face than he really it was. It is funny. He was like, he really oh, was. he's so nice. He's like, no, no, no. no. Wait, if wait, you wait, read wait. the Zeus stuff, he's not a good guy. Yeah. My little Hercules. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that yeah. film. Oh, it's so great. Oh, he's on his way. i tell you that the... I am on my no way. way. I uh, can go the distance. distance. Fearless, proud, and strong. Oh, Take God. my time, make it worth my, my while. while. I will go most, most anywhere, anywhere to find where you. I belong. Boom, 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 boom. Yes. So you want to be a hero. hero. <laughs> <laughs> whoop de doo Danny DeVito is amazing in that film. Stronger than a gladiator. <laughs> Hercules. Um, Logan is that Blind who put the gliding gladiator? Oh, what a soundtrack. I know, right? I like that they got, was it the, is it Sirens? Yeah. Yeah. Doing them as singers rather than have Charlton Heston doing the voice. Yeah. That was the inspired bit. But yeah, it's the same artist designer that did um, Pink Floyd's The Wall. No! The Hercules. Wow. That's why they are very distinctive looking. Mm, Pain and Panic. They look a bit like that. The two. Yeah. Hades' is henchmen. Yes. Hades is amazing, isn't it? Is it Mike? Uh, James Woods. James Woods. James One Woods. of his best yes. ever roles. Oh. Here I am, River Guardianless. <laughs> <laughs> Logan blindsides him and accepts the challenge, but Ricochet recovers and ends up standing tall. Well, you know. He takes a selfie of Logan's prone body, and Austin Theory is presumably furious. Yeah, that was his gimmick. Does he take a, no, he doesn't take a selfie. Oh, He's, Logan's, Logan's vlogging, recording himself. Sorry. Yeah, of and he butters him and then goes like, aha, film yourself. I found it a little bit contrived that Logan passed out, but perfectly in position to continue vlogging. Again, it's perfectly... He's a pro. He is, he knows how to do it. Yeah, he's a GoPro here. Well, I mean, he, <laughs> oh, yes, man. Stronger <laughs> than a podcaster. <laughs> he, did carry his phone, he did carry his phone doing an elbow <laughs> drop. <laughs> singing his own Hercules song, I like it. No one else. When is. he did, yeah, when he did the frog splash with it, in, or the elbow drop, it, oh, it was amazing. It was a frog splash, wasn't it? I was once tasked. I can't remember actually. 
Was that something who did the flip? He didn't do cool. oh. No, that's the Young Bucks, isn't it? He's done so many. I'm it. They all blend mm. together in my head because I'm old. Logan Paul is kind of Young Buckish in his exactly. way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, He's a self-aware Young Buck. I can't believe he was that good at vlogging because I once was tasked with a series called Jack the Vlogger back at What Culture. Oh, I remember them. Good. Where I had Big to fun. go backstage in our shows with a Ooh. GoPro and like not film bits of like cafe, but just film like the crowd from the curtain and stuff like oh, that yeah. and be like, right, we're on our way. Yo guys, Jack the Vlogger, we're on, <laughs> we're on our way to the next what venue. What up guys, yeah. I'm Corey. Smash that yeah. like button. Um, and I once it's filmed, there was an entrance where like Drew or someone had fire. So I was stood behind him out of view of the crowd filming the fire. Yeah. But I just filmed, it turns out I had it backwards and it's just me going, <laughs> <laughs> and my face occasionally gets <laughs> like illuminated a bit with fire. And oh, that's way cooler. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Oh. So that video that went viral of the guy who filmed uh, his entire train journey into Amsterdam, but he right. had the camera the wrong way around oh, the whole no. time. So it's just his face going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that real? Yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's online somewhere. Oh. Ah, back to Shayna Baszler challenges Ronda Rousey to a fight mm. at SummerSlam. Ronda later accepts the fight. Well, I think we did a, uh, I think they did a, a dry run of this on the WWE show in Mexico City last weekend, mm-hmm. where they had basically five minutes oh, of scrapping, show. and then it was a DQ because Ronda used a chair mm-hmm. uh, on Baszler, and then they had a pull apart brawl. And I think they're going to do that at SummerSlam mm-hmm. to build to possibly a fight pit either on telly. Or in October. Oh, do you not think they'll have the fight pit straight away? No. Okay. Yeah, they think they're saying fight at SummerSlam. They're gonna have a fight. I'm gonna fight you. Oh, yeah. gonna, I think it's just gonna be what looks like. I think it'll get. The, it'll be the shortest match of the night. It'll be three or four minutes. It'll just be them battering right, each other. Right, right, right. I hope it's shenanigans. a bad match so someone can get lots of likes on Twitter by going more like fight, dud. Uh, write that down. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damien Priest beats Apollo Cruz in a match that existed. <laughs> it did. It did. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I said. That's it. it did, on. and it did. They're still, did, did. At least they're not doing the thing with Priest where he's got the briefcase, so he starts to do it. At least he's winning yes. still. Mm. Damien Priest case. <laughs> Drew McIntyre wants to wrestle Gunther right now. But Gunther you nearly gave up on it halfway through or something. You carry you Damien on. Damien Priest case. Proud of you. <laughs> says he'll only defend the belt. Why? Uh, belt at SummerSlam. Drew says he actually likes Ludwig Kaiser because he has charisma. Isn't boring like boring Gunther. I could feel your disagreement when this segment was happening. Oh, that's what they always said about mm-hmm. Gunther. He's boring. I he suggests that maybe Ludwig should be the leader of Imperium instead. Drew and Kaiser have a match which Drew wins before being attacked by Imperium after the bell. Matt Riddle tries to make the save but gets taken out. What a surprise. However, Drew manages to put Gunther through the announce table. That was a cool bit, obviously. Mm. The yeah. promo was confusing. I know what Drew was just like, shut up, you but you. And like, what's the trend at the minute? It was like when the Usos were like, we think Solo should be the tribal chief, but at least that worked in the context of the story. But here it's just Drew yeah, going, no Bill I think Ludwig idea. should be the leader of Imperium. And they went, oh. nine. That was it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I get what Drew's had to say something about them. Oh, they're so boring. Like, not like me. But not oh, Robert the Bruce. <laughs> 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 it's a script out. In 18 <laughs> At least he's not doing that anymore. No. He made an interesting point where he said, me and Sheamus used to dream of having a banger at WrestleMania, and we did, but you spoiled it. And I'm there going, it, he made, it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, it was the best match of the night. I liked it, like, we took eyes of the prize. All right, when we were kids, you know, growing up, starting the business, I was 16, Sheamus was 42. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic, Drew. Yeah. Doesn't matter what the rest of that promo involved. Mm. Uh, but the crowd were like, I don't know, maybe she was getting on a bit, or maybe it was past the bedtime. They'd seen Logan Paul to want to go home. But like the crowd were like, we want tables. I'm like, it's not even a tables match, you gimps. Shut up. They knew. They knew. Yeah, and then they did it. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. They're like, we knew. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, Seth Rollins meets Finn Balor in the ring for their contract signing. Seth says that SummerSlam will be the end of the Judgment Day due to Priest holding the briefcase. Balor says that Seth isn't as smart as he thinks and at the Judgment Day, run Raw now. The rest of the group surround the ring, so Seth attacks, but gets taken out by Priest and the briefcase. Priest case. Mm-hmm. But thinks about cashing in, but Sami Zayn runs out to make the save. The Judgment Day take care of Zayn before hitting the finishes on Seth to end the show. This felt like the go-home bit yeah. to SummerSlam, mm. but we've got another week to go, which is a bit awkward. Mm. But this was an all right bit. Like you said, all this week at Raw felt like they're getting the video footage ready to make the kick-ass video packages for SummerSlam, the pre-show and all the main shows when they're showing Daft Peacock adverts in America land. Um, and I have nothing else to say, so I'm going to stop talking. Well, this feels to me like this could be the end of Seth's reign, do you think? If it's going to happen, 
It's going to happen here. But is it going to be to Balo or to Damien Free? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't thinking about that, but now you said it like that. I kind of mm. have to agree with Does that. Does he have a set? Oh. I think that's... <laughs> it's going to say et tu. Because I, do, I don't know if... You know, everyone's like, oh, the friction between Balor and Priest. But all the reports in that are saying, like, WWE are buzzing about the Judgment Day and don't want to, they won't want to break them up because they're like, they see them as like equivalent to the bloodline. Like, they're a central piece of the. Isn't story. it going to be better to have Balor with the title and then Priest with the money in the bank? Yes, that would be Yeah, we, I think we do that for a little bit. Mm. I think we have, yeah. So, like, so Balor's always got one eye on Priest, but Priest has got his back. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you have, it depends, it depends whether it's too hot shotty, whether you have a night on Raw where Seth beats Balor to win the belt back and immediately after Priest batters him with the case and then that cashes to, in and then Priest I'll and then that leads to jealousy with Finn do you feel yeah. a bit like oh, yeah, but that was my Priest but, yeah. is like look we've got a back of judgment day and yeah, Balor's yeah. like oh that's great that'll be yeah, good. that's gee, mint I'm I really think, happy I don't you. think that would be too hot shotty because everyone still talks about the night when all three shield members held the belt in the same night as well mm, that was in, in a bank, good way yeah, right? yeah. Or alternatively, you could have a bit where Balor and Finn are having a match. It's not going great for Finn, so Priest cashes in to help his buddy out. Oh. Ends up pinning <laughs> Seth. I, was like, I wasn't losing. Priest is like, can he, can he work? He's like, yeah. I saw you. He was, he was on the second rope going, look, my ass, my <laughs> ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think they've, they've set themselves up very nicely where there's multiple compelling ways they can mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. How lovely is it to talk so glowingly about the Judgment Day? When it started, we were like, oh, my God, what's going on? I'm this very pleased, yes. Yeah. As soon as yeah. Edge left, it was cool. A bit like me at a party. It stopped at <laughs> you. You stop it now. Ugh, I don't approve of that at all. I would have but loved you to have been there at the karaoke, Tom. I, I was good. I was thinking about it. <clears> you had quite a nice chill night. Merce Mercedes Martinez was staying at the hotel near where I live, so we ended up getting an Uber back. Goodness me. So, <laughs> okay. so it, sounds, it starts off sounding a bit... It did. It does. Oh yeah. my God. No, so, so we shared an Uber. So back. you did a duet back there, right? <clears throat> no, we, we, shared, we, we, she went, she worked at a hotel, and then I went to my favorite pub, which is just around the corner from my house, mm. and I had a little quiet part of my own and just oh, reflected on the evening. That's lovely. And I called it a night. Was it a nice way to decompress? Yeah, I, I enjoyed That was kind of, that's my little thing. I like to so go and sit and have a beer and I'll I mean, get you back were, for the cat. You were mm. very front and center for a lot of it, and it was a big night. So I yeah. understand why And you I wanted to take a little bit of a moment just to sort of let it all sink in. Yeah, it was lovely. What a great night. I mean, I saw you in the mission and you were kind of awestruck by how well it, and how big it was and how well yeah, it was Yeah, I because when the show was going on, I think it was a there was a, two moments. I remember obviously coming up to see new guys and then mm. going, wow, this is loads. And when Thunderstruck hit mm. and my heart started going like the clappers mm. and uh, and Chop, who is our, our he's our North Wrestling's Chop, <laughs> is James Haley. <laughs> and normally the sound guy on that night, I think he was just there to support because we had a different sound team. So Chop had a wonderful night off. But I'm honored that he was there. And I said, Chop, look at that. And he put his hand on the chest and you could feel my heart like, like I felt about to pass out. And he and Chop was like, Bloody hell. Hey, Bowers, come feel this. <laughs> was suddenly, as the music played, a cue for people <laughs> wanting to feel my heart beating out of its chest. I was like, I think I'm going to die, and lads. And that calmed you down. Yeah, that really made me feel great. But it's one of them where the moment you walk through, like it all settles in and you just go, okay, we're cool now. Off we go. Oh, no, I'd have fallen or melted. <laughs> scared <laughs> through the <laughs> yeah 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 he's it oh he's dead <laughs> it's weird because like when I and I, anyone who does stage stuff might get this and you might get this and you must have had this as well so it's mm. just that when the like the adrenaline's going and your heart's been, and you're a bit but then the moment you walk through and you yep. and you're in front of the people you go well it's happening now I started so, to get more like that towards the end mm. but for the first few times I was I'd watch it back and it would have, it all went by so fast. I'd have to watch it back to remember what actually like I was doing and stuff. But once I started to settle down, we, we left the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it started to become like that. I know what you mean a little bit, yeah. Anyway. Hey, sorry, a little detail. No, it was there. very interesting. I like How it. dare you? <laughs> on we this always say on topic It's not here. one for me no. to, to derail the podcast. No, no. Is it the comment section? <laughs> no, but to be fair, we, always, we always do. We yeah. always do. Ha. <sighs> NXT. <sighs> It's just like Booker T and Steve Austin. Mm. Oh, my God. Ah, it was just as good. Ah, That's timely. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Dominic and Rhea open the show. They're right. everywhere. But they're interrupted by Wesley. Uh, he wants a rematch with Dom, but he's also interrupted by Mustafa Ali. Ali says that Lee was an idiot last week for putting the title on the line, and they argue. Dom says he doesn't care if one of them or both of them face him at the Great American Bash. Ali tries to hit on Dom. Sorry, hit Dom. <laughs> But accidentally catches Lee instead, and they brawl. While Rhea laughs at them. Yeah. And Dom ah. laughs at them. 
<laughs> You're right. Dom and Rio are like in the late 2000s when Will I Am was guest appearing on every single song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to scream and shout and let it all out. Yeah. <laughs> they are, they are, they are, they are on every single show. <laughs> and apparently, on the commentary box, they said Dom made history by being the first person to main event SmackDown, Raw, and NXT in one week. Main Someone pointed out that SmackDown was just a promo, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, he is the NXT North American champion. Mm. Good for him. And as he pointed out on Raw, it outranks the US champion because it's all of North America. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's a good point, though. Mm. Backstage, Tony D and Stax says that, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. they're ready to win the tag team titles. Yeah, yeah. You speak in Italian. Bronco, Nima, and Lucian Price say maybe they want to become champions as well. They set up a match to play a tie. Maybe so, we come. <laughs> to, uh, it's a soft yes. So, yes. You know, tickets to Barbie come up. This is when I realized like, last week I missed an important part of NXT law, which is that we finally found out who Scripts' people were. Because Scripts mm. has always said, my people call me Scripts. And they go, you mean your family? And he goes, no, my people. That and was he, actually building up to and, something. And it's these lads. Mm. There is people. There is street toughs. <laughs> street toughs. That's there what they said. street toughs. They all looked at the camera at the same time and went, street toughs. And they all snapped <laughs> their fingers. No, 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 no. I'd love it if it ended up being West Side Story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the backstage interview, Lyra Valkyrie, I'm having bothered to pronounce these names, is ready to show <laughs> the world. She's a crucial role this week as well. Yeah, Lyra, actually important this week, is ready to show the world who she is against Rhea tonight. Mm. Who she is, pause, against Rhea tonight. Yeah, there we go. That reads well. Yeah, she's building up the, the, the hotly anticipated match. Hi, I'm match. Lyra. Yes. And I wrestle. Lyra, Lyra, Crocodile. Mm. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> Ilya Dragunov teams up with Camelo Ayers and Trick Willie to face the schism. Towards the end of the match, two mysterious men yeah. in schism masks interfere. Lean the Camelo pinning Gacy for the win. Could you tell Uh-oh. who it was? I didn't look too hard. I instantly could tell who it was because was one it of Gallus? them. No, it was the Creeds. Oh, there was a tall. But they're one, not there anymore. There was a tall one and a wide one, and one of them had hair poking out the top of his. And I was like, "All right, so it's pain and Bruce, panic." This is Bruce Crew here, yeah. <laughs> reporting for duty. Yeah. No, it was. Um, it was. It was. Oh, I would. Oh. I would put money on it being the Creeds, but they're not allowed. If I was the Creeds, I'd feel bad about losing my career to schism. Yeah. Well, they've cost them the match here. Ugh. Mm. I thought it was Pat Tanaka in a mask. <laughs> oh, you. Watch out, or there'll be a murder on the Orient Express. Uh, yeah, good match, but there was obviously set up other stuff. It was funny because Ilya accidentally hit um, Trick by, he's going for that one move where he flies his entire body weight. Yes. Like Luigi and Smash Brothers across the thing. And it's like, well, I hope no one gets him away. Oh, no. <laughs> the one thing I didn't want to happen happened. So afterwards, it... Dragon off and Trick argue about miscommunication. And uh, then I look at another bit of paper, and that's actually it. And Carmelo Hayes tries to keep the peace. I'm sure I wrote it somewhere. Yeah, well, it's more of it later. Oh, right, right. Because they, they talk a but, lot. Um, <laughs> oh, they do. They talk backstage, don't they? But no. Dragunov's looking different. Has he grown a beard or had a hair? He's got a little grown a beard. Grown a beard. I, I asked him about it. Did you? Yes. That's, How uh, was he? He was, he, well, he's, he's, he's an intense man, but he's a yes. good man. He's really Dragunov. He just, he was, he didn't shave it for ages. Uh, and then just thought, oh, it looks quite nice. I'll just tidy it up a bit. And he's just trying something new. Because oh. he does have a, um, he's got quite a baby face. Mm. But now that he's grown the beard, he looks like a, a hunky, rugged man. You can Rawr. hear you can hear the interview on the weekend uh, with Ilya Dragunov on the Cold Holic podcast. Mm. Wow, what a good pug! He's great. He's great. We play, we. <laughs> what I say, pug. what's a good pug? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for pugs, you know. Yeah, they're struggling. Can't they? breathe. Yeah. Bless their little socks. Yeah. Uh, we uh, speaking of struggling. Uh, we play the Ilya Dragunov pain game. Mm. So I tell him what thing. I basically give him choices of which thing is more painful between like. Brain freeze from eating ice cream too quick, or a burnt mouth from drinking coffee too like quick. Heart, which is heartache. I didn't think of emotion ones. It was oh. more like an upturned plug or Ooh. banging your banging your little toe into the bed. Oh. Like, the yeah. dragging off pain game. Anyone looking forward to North? There's a Lego spot uh, on Thunderstruck. Oh Ooh. yes, goodness me. That was a good interview you did. You, I remember you going to Ali and going, "Oh, how's the beard?" And he went, "Oh, she's fine." <laughs> One Wagner <laughs> squashes Big Body Harvey and uh. puts him through the announce table. But Brom Breaker arrives and spears him. Now Von Wagner, Wagner has a real feud. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> I'm sad Ross yep. isn't here to experience 
his boy finally hit, reaching the big time. We are we the both better shows famous than this dads. Yes, yes, they both do. My dad is a wrestler. <laughs> my dad's cancelled currently, but we're <laughs> not mine personally. Bron Breaker's dad currently. My dad's a re my dad could beat up your dad. My dad can get banned from conventions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my dad's so good, he's not allowed to go to wrestling conventions That's anymore. True. Now, I the 180 that Robert Stone has done from going, don't put him through the announce table to do it. Put him through the announce <laughs> yeah, table. It's been a bit stop start with this, but the crowd was wanting to see Big Body get annihilated. Yes. But they weren't really pro Von because Who was yeah. it? That whenever the Dudleys got a hold of her, JR was like, Do it! Was a Tory. Yes. That's part of Tory. Yes. Do yeah, it. That that Tory. <laughs> JR would just turn into this horrible demonic man. Tombstone yeah. Tory. Tombstone. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Robert Stone is now with Von Wagner. Yeah. yeah. Tombstone Tory. I yes. thought that will, that will work out well. It does mean that Cum does have to put someone through a table every single week. <laughs> but, <he's, laughs> but, it's all right. but he's doing it in a weird baby face way where he does it. And then he goes, that's for you. That's for the crowd. I'm like, mm -hmm. It's weird. <laughs> Tommy. But it's better than him going... Yeah, Rab, I don't know what you know. Yeah, like it's yeah, much yeah. better. It's good now. Why? why Backstage did it, for another why interview did it, with for Comey, like oh, Why did it take him like two years to to have him be a big a wrecking machine, as Mickey would say <laughs> in the Rocky the franchise? The writing team in NXT is very interesting. Mm. You see, come all you have to do to get over is put people through tables. Yeah. Then people love you. Mm. I done it. Cut to like a speed dating night. <laughs> <laughs> One no! next bye. Yeah! And he's women surrounded him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, uh, Trick and Ilya continue to argue while Camelo tries to keep the peace. Ilya leaves while Camelo tries to calm Trick down, but Trick says he's going to call Ilya out tonight. Later, Camelo goes to see Dragunov privately, but Ilya is dismissive, saying he'll take care of Trick tonight in Hayes at the Bash and Tom on Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a nice, it's a, been a nice, the, the plug. The plug uh, for the plug. Some people call yeah. them pugs. Uh, yeah, the, the plug, I'm after the plug for the podcast got you, on got Sunday. Guy, guy, guy. Did you say something? By, by saying, speak to Tom on Saturday. Oh. <laughs> Saturday is our day. That's the day of the cult holic classics my dad review. Saturday. Do you want Sunday? Day. But when does the Great American Saturday. Bash? Is that Saturday it's or Sunday? Day. I don't even know. Bash is Saturday. Sunday. Bash is, sun Sunday. Bash is Sunday. Is okay. Oh, I just guessed. Huh. <laughs> Good. For 24 hours, you can eat as much as you like. Gable Stevenson is Fluffy here. Lops. Okay. To decide whether he's going to continue to be an all-time NCAA great. Compete in the actual Olympic Games or be an NXT superstar. I can do these two legit, really prestigious things or the most prestigious thing of all being. <laughs> oh, trade them all in for what's in the box. <laughs> yeah, the box. The box. <laughs> He's about to make a decision when the new look Baron Corbin arrives <laughs> and warns him not to stay in NXT because he's swimming with the shark. I'm a shark. Not like the Jets from before. These are the hey. yeah. <laughs> Gable says Corbin just made his decision a whole lot easier and takes him to Suplex City. I swear we just reset Baron Corbin last week, now and now he's coming in to make Gable look good. Now we've reset him again. Yeah, it's like, it's right. New look, uh, Baron. I've got a slightly different shirt on. Hey, it's it's a living for Baron, you know. Yeah, but it's, just, it's a living. It's a living. And they just completely change. He goes, ah, no, you know what? Yeah, that those are some nice segments, weren't the Baron? He's just yeah. gonna keep resetting he, until he gets it right. Yeah, maybe you'll um, maybe you'll win. That'll be funny if the reset is yes, that's right. I'm better than Gable. Yeah, <laughs> well. we we talked on Wednesday, didn't we, about this? And when Baron Corbin came out and went, "Hey, are you swimming with sharks? I'm hungry." And Gable went, "You made my, imagine if he'd gone, you made my decision much easier." And then he goes to the Olympics. He leaves. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't wrestling you, you idiot. Did you hear him, mate? He's a shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actual shark, mate. I'm gonna go Olympic. I don't, shark. I don't hang out with him. He's an idiot. <laughs> I guess he doesn't. We gotta make it. some money. Is so it? Is it? Like he says something like, "No, come on, Gable. It's not a real shark. You don't know that." Yeah. Is it the Olympics? <laughs> Next year, yes, in Paris. Oh, he's got timing to both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Gable, you're lazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it doesn't Most require like a long training. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Dana Brooke, are you ready? Dana Brooke wins a candlestick Bloody match against Cora J. She did it, and and you said on the news it's her first win in. Uh, in, in, in over a year on Whoa. television. On television. Do calendars go that far back? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so for Dana Brooks. Is it on the Gregorian calendar? <laughs> Does he have a certain... Yeah. Yeah. Cora <laughs> later tweets implying that she might be done with NXT. Oh. Yeah, she just wrote bye. Yeah, she Twitter. could be Whoa. a main roster superstar because she is someone they're clearly invested in. 
Dana Brooke did a... Gosh, she's pretty. <laughs> gosh. Gosh, she's pretty. Um, that's, yeah. Dana Brooke did a twit longer thing after the match. And she oh, was God, like, what did she complain about now? No, 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 no. It was all like, hey, this is great. I want to thank my mom and my dad and da 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 And, it's, and uh, you know, TLDR. Um, basically, she's delighted that she won. And this is the beginning of a new... This is 2.0 for Dana Brooke. Here we go. Can't wait till she loses next she's week. Not, <laughs> no, no. She's losing the Baron Corbin <laughs> next week. She's, yeah. losing, she's trying to decide the Olympic Games or NXT. <laughs> Gold medal and losing. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, Dana, I was stunned. Like, well, oh, really? <laughs> like, there wasn't that much BS in the finish. So I was like, no. against Cora Jade? Oh, She's wow. Dana. She's a main roster superstar. So yeah. yeah. She's actually right. So was, yeah. So was, yeah. Speaking of which, Charlie Dempsey and Drew Gulak are training with Performance Center recruits Miles per hour, but aren't too impressed. Damon Kemp offers to train with them instead, and they seem keen because he's a proper good wrestler. Like yeah. Miles, Bo- Miles Bourne's, uh, Miles Bourne's uh, deaf, isn't he? He's the deaf wrestler. Is he? He's, he's NXT guy and he's deaf and he's brilliant. Oh, ah. so, so oh well, I remember now. Yeah. The when, I, story. When, I, when I saw that he was the guy and then I had to because they don't mention him by name, I don't think. So I had to then do a bit of Googling. Mm. Found who it was. And I looked on his Instagram. And he's got the look. He's yeah. jacked boy. So mm. maybe there are bright things in his future. Good for him. Mm. Tony D and Stax win their tag match against Nima and Price. While Scripps provides guest commentary. Ah, oh, he's not. It's not his <sighs> best role. They've done this the last few weeks, haven't they? Austin Theory, you're rubbish at talking generally. Let's stick you on commentary. Well, what have you learned here? Scripps, well, you're I, not interested on commentary. I think Austin Theory a level above scripts, sadly, when it comes to promos. It's wow, it's the blind leading the blind there, pal. Scripts scripts can do the flips in a way that no one else can. So have him do the flip. Yeah. Don't have him do the talking. Yeah. Have him do the flippies. He should have answered like, what do you think so what do you think about this match? He just stands up and does a flip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be way His better. language is flips. <laughs> <laughs> He's Maybe a guy do that the does match. all the flippy flips. What should we do with him? Make him a mouthpiece Talk. for two monsters. Oh, oh, oh he actually Here's, just says the word flip flip. He is a guy who's six foot six and Absolutely massive. What should we have him do? Go to therapy yeah. for two years. <laughs> Why are you called Scripps? Because I need one of these to sound good. <laughs> Maybe uh, through the match, Scripps is attacked by Axiom. And what a sneak attack it was. It was a proper, like, dodgy karate film. Kick out the screen. So I, I saw this before I knew that they turned on each other. So I was really confused. Oh. <laughs> I was like, Why is Scripps being mean? What's he doing? And then Axiom came out of nowhere. Yeah. And then I realized... Scripts is now with his people. He is. Mm. And Booker T went, hey, 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 don't call him his real name. Call him Scripps. You're not his people. That's right. He kept on going on Vic. Mm. And Vic was like, The okay. other week we had an excellent question in the mailbag, which was from Small Afro Gaming, who said, uh, or Games? Small Afro. Small Afro. Who said, um, uh, he, he provided a list of Booker T quotes, and then we had to decide which ones were real and which ones were fake. Wow. But even the fake ones were very convincing. Mm. There was one that was real, which was, if you think Nakamura is ugly now... Wait until Braun Strowman gets his hands on it. <laughs> Nakamura is not ugly. I don't know where that came from. There's also the famous one about, you know what, Michael Cole, you're ugly. You know I had a dream that you died. <laughs> oh, I remember that one. God. Um, After Tony Dean Stacks win, Gallus interrupt their celebration on the Tron and talk about how they're going to retain the titles at the Bash. Mm. The man's Bash. Because when it comes to these belts, it's always Gallus boys out there. Good evening, Barry. <laughs> yes, good evening, Barry. Good evening, Barry. Oh, oh, and when Joe Coffey and did good evening, that, Molly. and he flipped his little fringe, and, just, <laughs> and I was like, "Ooh, he was." You know what? You can be, you can find the gimmick of Joe Coffey, cringy and stuff. He is good on the mic. He's always been good on the mic, and he's good at sounding cross. Mm. Fair play to the, to those gallus boys, and I think they're going to retain. Bless those those three little hot. Cross huns. Hot, they're hotty boys. Mm. I don't know where that was going. <laughs> nah, I don't know. I'm they're hotty boys. boys. And, uh, Dijak talks about how he's the law in the ring and calls out DJ Yiff. Law. He's a tough guy. Now. I am the law. Yeah. That was my Sylvester Stallone. That was good. As Thank Judge you. Dredd. A bad casting decision. Yeah. Yeah, they made him take the mask off. No, Sylvester Stallone made them make him take the... Hang on. I think he insisted... Mm. I'll only play Judge Dredd if I get to take off the mask. He was a fanboy in that film. Like, he what's the one yeah, thing whatever. that Judge Dredd does not take his mask off? Never done Sylvester it. Sylvester Stallone. One time I think it was Simon Bisley drew a, didn't know the rule, so he showed like his yeah. face, and they were like, "Whoa, what's this? What's yeah. this?" No, no, no. It's like, like no. It's like what? It's like he's never been seen. He goes, "Oh, I didn't know that." And says, "You know, you've been paid him for like years. Right? <laughs> <laughs> never done. I've always realized. I just guessed what he looked like." Yeah. <laughs> 
It looks like Sylvester Slow. Yeah. Uh, we see footage from last night of Blair Davenport vlogging her trip to the corner <laughs> shop. I love these natural segments of getting wrestling shows. Just gotta go get some drink at the corner shop. Uh, Roxanne yes, Perez. I am ruthless and vicious. That's and why I drink lemon tea. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne Perez bursts in and beats her down, and we get a mixture they cut between her vlog that is uploaded on a site, I guess, and then the CCTV, mm -hmm. and the guy behind the counter filming it. It's so natural looking. She says that this is just a taste of what you'll get at the Great American Bash and leaves as police sirens could be heard approaching, which is probably just Shawn Michaels going, Nino, <laughs> Nino. Maybe what? somebody called them to put a stop to this uninspired segment. We, I know that Tom's wanting to say something. So yeah, I'm up here. I think you're going to go with it. I've just talked about, uh, on the Colorado Classic Smackdown review, the Green Frog Supermarket Brawl between Steve Austin and Booker T. Last week's episode we did that. And I mean, what time? I'm just saying, so someone's clearly a fan. <laughs> so, and we were saying, wow, you look at the segment, it's all one camera, Two lads can at it, and then obviously just do whatever they want at the supermarket. And it looks great because, yeah, it's just one again, following them around, looks natural as a green frog supermarket brawl can look like. And here we see, we almost said something like, wow, if they did it nowadays, well, it was a it, bit. It was, oh. book, it was ironically, it was oh. Booker T who was sat ringside at this when this was happening, we who said it in an interview. And yeah. he said, if they did that today, it's just, he said this on his podcast, like he said, if they did that today, it would be multi-camera, it would have been rehearsed. Uh, Whereas uh, this, there was one camera mm. and we ad-libbed it. Yeah. And it was great. Booker T was absolutely bang, bang on the money. Yeah. And I'm like, one of these people like, oh, and back in the day type, like bloody ricochet. But it's funny that obviously we did this last week. That's why it's in our heads. Uh, and it's, yeah, but uh, obviously we know that things are different now. I know, I'm aware of the passage mm. of time looking before it. But, but it was better back then. <laughs> it would have been all right if it was just filmed on a phone and done like that. Like yeah. you start off going, oh, it's going to look nice, like a natural yeah. meeting up there. And then, don't worry, we got the high quality footage of the shopkeeper. Like, But it was all like, uh -huh. it wasn't as um, chaotic, was it? It felt no. it felt choreographed. Mm. Yeah. And it and the, there was like the trolley spot and stuff. And I think Roxanne said one like quip. She said something like, she didn't say price check on Jackass, which is an amazing yeah, yeah. end of that. Mm. She said, like, clean up on aisle, oh. bitch. No, she didn't. <laughs> she said, like, clean up on aisle three or something. Oh. But I know it wasn't. It was a very rehearsed segment. And it's one of them where it's... Uh. it's they need a more attitude. Uh, uh, I'll write that one down. You have, you have scenes backstage where two wrestlers are talking and they have a camera there just listening to them. Like, I wouldn't have been upset if they did that here. Yeah. Is that a camera yeah, in the supermarket as Cora's going, uh, isn't on the phone going, yeah, yeah, Blair, I was going to say Blair, Blair's, Blair, walking, yeah. Blair, Blair's walking around going, oh yeah, Roxanne really is a flipping idiot. <laughs> anyway, I'm buying some cereal. Who's that behind me? And there you go, you're in. Right. Don't the, over don't over egg the pudding. You don't need a like you didn't need like a I hate when the pudding's over. You didn't right. need don't, like the like when Austin beats up Vince in the hospital bed. You didn't need yeah. one of the doctors to happen to be filming. You don't always need What's a, going yeah, on? Yeah. <laughs> Austin walk Austin walk out of the I'm on my way to beat up Vince McMahon. <laughs> but, dude, that's what they do now. And I'm dressed like, as a dirt uh, nurse. St. <laughs> Mary's Hospital on the corner uh. of Fifth and Third. Don't no. over egg the pudding. Wrestling's <laughs> nonsense. Embrace it. Hashtag criminal activity. <laughs> that might be one of my favorite Attitude Era moments ever, though. I'll take it from here, nurse. The delivery, <laughs> that's yeah. so funny. Because Vince is great at those bikes. <laughs> Vince would have made a, a killing doing carry on films. Oh, I God. say, ding yeah. dong. <laughs> woof, woof. It's got a Sid James quality about him. Yeah. 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 Anyway. But his uh, laugh's not as dirty. It's more, ho, 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 ho. But he is a dirtier person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sid James is a champion among me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Oh, either. God, now segment. I'm worried. <laughs> the men of four yeah. are in the ring for the Supernova I sessions. Now... I love No, I'm Dar. I was going to say I love yeah, the metaphor. Yeah, yeah. I, I love No, I'm Dar. Yeah. I don't know if I love all of the metaphors. So for people who don't watch NXT, so that's Tom, No, I'm Dar kind of lost his heritage. Yeah. Club. Uh, oh, next day. I say he keeps of. abreast of it. Just for people. So he's been in a catatonic state because he's been so gutted that he had this cup that he bragged about and how great it was and he lost it really quickly. Yes. Which is surprising to many people. He didn't even lose it himself. He was injured. That's right. His Muppet friend lost it for him. Yeah, mm. she'd be useless or a mm. But it's okay. The metaphor, 
I've looked through the contracts and figured out, oh, wait, apparently he didn't lose it. And they give him the new Heritage Cup, and it's like, and he, it's Grandpa, a, it is like Grandpa, Grandpa Joe. Joe, the golden <laughs> ticket. And he falls backwards, he does a backwards roll off his wheelchair. Exactly. He's he's everything that Tory, think, the Tory people think working class people like. <laughs> hey, they're just lazy as out. Don't want to work. Real? It's my trophy. For a trip to the chocolate factory or a big cup, and suddenly they're doing dancing. He springs to life. But it's interrupted by Nathan Fraser and Dragon Lee. Oh, uh, Dragon, suddenly, am I seeing double? There's two heritage. I hate him so much. I was going to say, sadly for us, Nathan Fraser has a microphone. Oh, uh, it's not his fault. It's always the material he's been mm, given. We say every week. No, well, I need to reinforce that it's not his fault. All right, we'll, we'll throw Hamlet at him and see what happens. <laughs> a lot of points out that there are... Um, Yorick. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Lady Macbeth, are you sure I should be doing all these murders? <laughs> Dragon Lee's Lady Macbeth yep. in a month. Is that a dagger I see <laughs> before me? <laughs> Is that a heritage cup I see being thrown up? I feel like I'm wading through a river too steeped in blood on either side mm. to revert. <laughs> <laughs> Iago, are you sure she said that about me? <laughs> We've got Othello in there as well. Yeah, All right, we bloody hell. He couldn't play him. That's really not odd. Uh, um, um, the latter points <laughs> out that, are, uh, that there are DOS heritage cups with Fraser still he holding literally the goes, one. You know, like if you're a if you're a Spanish speaking wrestler in WWE, you have to pepper your English yeah, right, promo yeah. with Spanish words, but not enough so that people who don't speak Spanish can't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he literally goes, Mi amigo, there are dos and heritage you. cups. <laughs> See, si, Dragon Lee, Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> That's why yeah. I'm just most upset. Dark claims that Nathan's trophy is counterfeit. It's for Gazy and tells him to get out of here. Mm. Fantina Feroz and Ulisa Leon arrive to help Fraser and Lee clear the metaphor out the ring. Yes, but I, I, I was rooting for the metaphor. I, I, mm. Yeah. They're more fun. Yeah. I feel like they like the idea of having, like, like the the, the, sto the classic story of two people have the belt due to circumstances. <laughs> like when Punk turned up with the spinner mm. belt and Cena just won the belt. And it's almost like we love that, but... We can't be asked to do any story. Let's skip to the good part. Yes. And let's just, okay, he's got one now. Oh, there we'll you go. giving him one. Yeah. WWE tend to sometimes do yeah. that where they just go, we could tell a story to get here, or we could just go to the We just want the moment at the end. Yeah. We just want the moment. I would though. disagree because I think this works to, uh, now I'm Dar's strengths. He's Dar's adapting. the only yeah. one. There is that. He's pulling his way. And actually, I, I liked Dora Mensa in this segment at one point because. It's when they're all trying to like wake Dar up and they're yeah. like, oh, yeah. and he goes, you have to give me something, brother. <laughs> I was like, that's really funny. Yeah. Little ad lib. But generally, I agree with both of you at the same time because mm. I do think they've, it's not a good storyline, but I do think that it does play to Dar's strengths in a weird way. Right, if it had been, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yes. I'm Nick Clegg, the jobber. Oh, don't oh, God, no. no, no, no. no. Uh, oh, to rest Shakespeare in Cub Court. Oh. I think you'll find your Heritage Cup runneth over. <laughs> <laughs> we see, oh, sorry, I'm really sorry. Uh, we see a training vignette ahead of Thea Hale's tail shot at the bash. Andre Chase and Duke Hudson talk about how hard she has. Oh, how much hard she has. I just... Oh, rolled, I thought that was my Roll the double yeah, one there. The oh, roll okay. the double one there. They do a Rocky-style running scene, ending in front of the performance center. Then, yeah, it's really well done. Yeah, they do a Rocky running scene, but like on the flat. So there's no steps. They just kind of... She just sprints ahead. Yeah, she's not very good. Oh, you I'm joking. Leave that woman yeah. alone. So the, the implication. She is a queen. Big yeah. fan. Sorry, big I, fan of she's Thea great, isn't she? Sorry, I just thought she's it was very, the implication she's... that she couldn't run upstairs. Yeah. Was obviously yeah. Yeah. She, serious. Is, she does have a certain Tom Campbell energy about her. Yeah, I, I feel. I feel like her. You know that scene mm, from Anchorman Two, Jack. where where Brick met the female Brick. Oh right. Oh, and I when thought... people are mean to her, I go, "You leave her alone." Oh, to be fair, she is an angel. <laughs> to be fair, I was gonna say if you had a if you were very young and had a child that you don't know about, it could because she's only about nineteen as well. So you, you yeah, could did you it. did you visit America? <laughs> did you visit Chase U back in? Oh, was there oh, a night? Was there a dealie? No, at the it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? But I think oh, I think Duke Hudson. This is when he's gonna turn. No. Who turns first, Duke Hudson, Duke Hudson or MJF? Duke. Big this weekend. question. This, weekend. this is a big question. <laughs> well, I, I think mm. I think because Thea's already lost one title shot, but she won it really, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. So she's either going to have to beat her or something's going to have to happen. And, and I think Duke's going to... Something's got to give. And, Two. And Duke's going to... And there were little clues, or maybe I'm reading too much into it, but in the vignette, it's all Andre Chase going like, she's amazing, she's worked so hard. And then Duke's there going like, we're best friends, and I helped her every step of the way. And I'm like, oh, no. Mm. I did Wade Barrett there. Sorry, not similar. Wade Barrett, Wade, 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 Ace Rimmer, yes. And Very similar. If we follow the lineage of Duke Hudson's character, 
we know that he before he became like uh, the star pupil of Andre Chase University, he had a certain eye for the lovely ladies, and I think that he might be smitten with Tiffany Stratton, and we might, you know. Oh. <sighs> A, a delightful Hudson, Tiffany Stratton. The, yeah. Romance. Power, power couple, oh, yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah, like, that. I like that. I I'm like into that. You. No, I hope it doesn't okay. happen because I, I, I don't want, I I mean, want I, Chase I mean, you to break apart. I love apart. Thea Hale. Right. And, and that would break my heart. I yeah. think she is a queen. Leave her alone, everybody. Uh, but I like all say, having said that, love the idea of delightful Hudson coming out in like a tuxedo on the arm of <sighs> Tiffany Stratton. I, I know, and I'm worried. I'm so worried. Delightful's going to come out and go, I like Chase, but I like you better. <laughs> Here's to the greatest, oh, yeah. greatest oh, yeah. Yeah. love I've ever known. What a that theme. That didn't need to go that hot. Yeah, it was a great song. It didn't need um, to go as hard as it did. It did actually did need to. Um, but I am, I am worried. And I, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen or anything, but I'm just covering all the bases mm. and planting the seed. He's burning up I'm worried. inside <laughs> of love. Oh, God, I'm worried. I'm scared. What a night it's going to be. Mm. Well, after their loss last week, Los Lotharius argued in the car park. Camilo, oh, it's a dangerous place to be doing that. Like, mm. Camilo asked Gaza, what's more important, chasing women or chasing glory? Oh. Storms off, apparently breaking up the team because that's a tough question. What a line. That's like Guile-esque in the Street Fighter movie. I'm going to get on my boat and go up river. <laughs> what if women are the glory? Oh, you didn't consider that. All right, delightful Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm I like sad. these two to talking like the Klingons. I'm sad that these boys have broken up because I like them, but I also think they both can do it as single stars as well. Especially yeah. Gaza, who's bloody good. Mm, they're both great. They are so both great. More of them. And they are hunks. Hunky men. Ah, hot notes. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> Rhea beats a valiant <clears throat> Lyra in singles action. Mm. After match, she tells Lyra to prove her right and beat JC Jane. She will be able to. She's mm. just taken Rhea to the limit. She can probably beat JCJ. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah, it wasn't that good solid match. They they want Lyra to look good. And she does. She is good. Yeah. But they are really... They've always booked her strongly from the minute she turned up as a mystical forest sprite. Hmm. Trick Williams calls Did off. you like the match? I didn't have much to talk about. It was just like, yeah. Um, it had a ludicrously high rating on Cage Match. <laughs> So, there was the day after when I checked. You've got to wait for them to yeah, settle sometimes down. Sometimes they do, don't they? We Especially get... since the AW versus WWE thing. Oh, you, I can't be bothered. I know the like... cage match ratings. I know it's just everyone's opinion in that, but you can sort, sometimes use them as like a barometer of like I'll mm. scan it to see if I've missed any matches of the month in my matches. I think, of course. but it had like a nine point something. I was like, <laughs> what? I know, yeah. <laughs> I was like, bloody hell, what have I missed? And then I watched it, and it was a good match. It's like Torval and Dean, 10, 10, <laughs> 10. It was good. Uh, I like Rhea taking her trademark bump, which is that high-ass DDT she takes for people she likes. I can't picture it now. Oh, she does it, you know. The, the, Use the puppet. Okay. It's like, it's totally DDT, and she, she always manages, Rhea always manages to spite La herself. Land on her head. And she does it really well with Liv like Morgan. The, yeah, I think it uh, depends on the height and uh, build mm. of people she's wrestling, but she did it for... She does it with people she likes. Yeah. Okay, I fair mean, enough. You have to, to be able to take that. Mm. Uh, Trick Willie calls out Ilya and gets absolutely battered. <laughs> mm, you had it coming. Ilya prepares to finish him off, so to speak, but Camelo f dives in the way and takes the bullet for his pal. Dragunov admits that Camelo is a man of honor, but Trick will be the only thing he has left after Dragunov takes the title. That match could be excellent. Nice. They're just being the, they're not being quite ticks to one another. Asian particular being rather babyface-ish. And it's like, yeah, but it's like, yeah, but when we get in that ring, mm. it's yeah. all the title, mate. And I think we might all be suspecting that, um, we talked about it recently, in fact, that um, Ilya might be heading up to certain... Mm. Na, 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 well, na, na, na. I asked him about Oh! And he gave a very definitive answer. Oh, my God. Yes, at SummerSlam, Tom. <laughs> he hear it on Sunday on the podcast. Oh, oh you tease. You gave a very definitive answer. Fair enough. To whether or not he would join Imperium. Mm. Oh. Thank you for the blue balls there, Tom. <laughs> AEW Dynamite. I'll tickle them later. <laughs> the Jericho Appreciation goodbye it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Orange Cassidy opens the show by retaining the international title, formerly known as the Pacific. All Atlantic. Atlantic, Atlantic. Ty Atlantic wasn't it? All against Atlantic. AR Fox. Mm. Uh, he gives his sunglasses to Fox afterwards as a show of respect, but Fox beats him down in frustration, yeah. which Darby isn't happy about. But John it is Mox patronizing. He's not like a Bret Hart child fan. Don't give your sunglasses to me. Mm. John Moxley then comes out and beats up Cassidy some more. <laughs> now. Because uh, yeah. uh, apparently the Ring of Honor pay-per-views to get us up to speed, because I wasn't familiar with this. Um, 
Dog Seeds Ring and leaves them out with Death Ride and Retribution for Orange hitting Claudio doing all the pay per view. Yeah. So Pac is now not any more friends with the Beast. That was a short lived Friendship oh, ended. Yeah, friendship over with Pac. Yeah, it was I am replacing Eddie Kingston in this particular match <clears throat> and pay per view. If I've missed a bit of AW Law, mm. I apologize. But they did a video before this where Darby Allen was like, ah, me and AR Fox, we're flipping great mates we are. I can't think. No, I can't it, think. Of that's not been on AWTV. Is TV. it from Evolve? Is it like they're past? Oh, yeah, they've been like going. Yeah, right. Fox been it going felt so long. quite heavy handed. Mm. I was all right with it because up until now, AR Fox has just been, hey, that hot indie dude. Yeah. He teamed up with the uh, the Martins, I believe. Yes, some but but people, with what goes on through the night, for them to suddenly go, I am Darby Allen. I tell you what, I tell you, he's brilliant. My best mate, did, AR Fox, yeah, he's great. Bit. He's so good. He's brilliant. Mm, I really yeah. like him. We train together. I'm going to give him a big kiss later mm. and um, we'll <laughs> see how the night goes mm. for all involved. It was, uh, yeah, a little bit. And, uh, that was, and, I, and I wasn't sure whether, I didn't want to sort of immediately lambast because I was like, I wasn't sure whether I missed a bit of law somewhere because sometimes I AEW's law is quite rich and I do tend to miss the odd things. I didn't want to just. Mm. Come down heavy because mm. I've missed something. Tom, what you've said makes complete sense. However, I am a big old fan stan of AR Fox. Fair enough. He's been doing it for donkeys and he can still do it like this. Uh, he looked as great in this match against Orange Cassidy as people like me have been saying. He looks he looked smoother than peanut butter. Yeah. yeah. Happy for AEW to start doing something with him. Hopefully, he'll be not forgotten about in two weeks. Because uh, I want to be positive about this. Uh, oh, and I've tied that all up before we got the stuff later on. So, oh, hee -hee -hee. dear. Yay. In a backstage interview, Don Callis reveals that he set up a tag match with Jericho and Takeshita. Jericho is excited, but learns that his opponents will be Daniel Garcia <gasps> and Simon Guevara. His friends? Oh, no. Callis convinces him that it'll be a good experience for them before revealing a ludicrous painting of himself, Jericho and Bad News Allen. It was, from back it was a preposterous <laughs> portrait. <laughs> it really was. That's his gimmick now. He did that with the Kenny Maker and the Young Bucks when mm. they were all evil and stuff. So is this like a metaphor? Is the painting supposed to contain their souls? <laughs> <laughs> I think that if he gets enough coins, he can jump through the painting into the next level. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I love stars, that. not coins. No. Oh, you've no. ruined it. Oh, well, I knew right, it. That's all point of Jack and said something foolish and ignored the things I've said. I, for one, am buzzing for the episode of Dynamite next week where Chris Jericho jumps through and has a match in Bob on Battlefield. Yes. He has to race the Cooper up the hill. <laughs> Bob on Battlefield. Watch out for King Oppenheimer. Wait, I want to do, <laughs> do a reference to a later level to prove that I've got that far. Um, dry, dry docks. The penguin down the slope. That's only the second level. Carry on. Do yeah. dry, dry docks. Dry, dry docks. But that makes... I don't remember that one. Da, 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 that makes men out of boys that na, level, though, na, the penguin. Na. I remember the level in the desert where it starts to get quite hard. Mm. And there's, like, platforms that sink into the sand and there's those weird... Mm. Slinky creatures. I hate them. Mm. What a game. Yeah, what a game. Stunning game. Still mm. playable to this day. Is it? I wish I was playing it right now rather yeah. than watching. In a vignette, Hook sits on a subway platform. A train passes and his FEW title disappears. Rather like the opening of Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the opening of Bottom! Who's his... <laughs> who's his <laughs> is he Rick Mail <laughs> Or is he Ed Edmondson? <laughs> <laughs> they, they cut back and Dad Allison's just hitting him with a newspaper. <laughs> 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 Another train passes and Hook himself disappears, leaving only the word Hook. <laughs> what could it mean? D, I've no idea. Um, I'm now trying to think who would I cast as an AW quartet in the young ones. And I, I'm trying to think now. It's hard. We'd back Blackpool Combat Club, wouldn't it? I think Jericho would be Rick Mayle for some reason. Oh, you see yeah. Jericho is Rick Mayo. Oh. You can't call it gerbil. Which have Moxley is. All right, then I'll call it something more sensible, like Fozzy. Oh, <laughs> Pac has to be Ed Edmondson or Viv, surely. That's very Pac. Okay. I'm Do you know what I think? I was going to say Moxley. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Moxley is, uh, Moxley is Vivian. Mm. Um, have we got a blade? Don Callis. Yes, is, we've got a blade. Don Callis is, is Mike, because he was always like. Oh, I was thinking Orange thinking. Cassidy is Mike. Oh, was, that's good. Oh, that's actually a good show. Yeah. Orange Cassidy's Mike. Who's and then Neil? Neil's so a hippie Neil. Uh, hippie so Neil. someone very, just like very like flaky and laid mm. back. And... Damn it, we're doing so good. I know. Who's Neil? Uh, who could be Neil in well, this? Well, all I can think, and he's not AEW, but all I can think is Zach Gibson as Alexi Sale. <laughs> <laughs> I love the diet. <laughs> People mistake like me for Mussolini. <laughs> Looking out like him. <laughs> They're young. <laughs> they're not like they are. <laughs> Sorry to everybody, twenty-five and under, maybe even yeah. more. Well, Do you want to be a train this. driver? When I was a kid, I wanted to be the head of British Steel. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was at home the other weekend and I was talking to my mum about that. I was like, that must have, I remember like, I was said to her like, that must have been, there must have been nothing like it at the time in the 80s. She was like, no, it was totally, it was totally yeah, genius. Oh, Do you know why yeah. they did all the musical stuff in Young Ones? Why? They got more of the BBC budget because they were seen uh, as a light entertainment program. Because they had Dexies uh, on or whatever. So yeah. they, and by having a musical bit, they actually got more money to make the show. Fair play. Uh. With a little loophole in the old BBC funding. Well, they did keep on breaking the set, so they probably needed more more money well that's it because so, yeah. they could do more of them because they had more money so, right right you know it's, it's a good way of making a little bit of extra cash to that end ladies and gentlemen billy joel uh, uh, imagine no. if we had billy It'd be great wouldn't it we don't have him but we do have joel we have hey. a joel sing uptown girl now quick uptown girl. Oh, that's enough beautiful <laughs> the mca man. whoever's neil for the young ones aw version let us know in the yes comments. we're man. stumped yeah it's hard to stump us the bcc not to confuse the BBC, who broadcast the young one, <laughs> uh, could a menacing backstage promo on their rivals with CC specifically targeting Pac. Mm. What? You beat him. Shut up. Oh, he wants to beat him again. Oh, whatever. Jungle Boy arrives dressed a bit like Hook with the orange and black and claims that he's the greatest wrestler to even come anywhere near the FTW title. <laughs> he says he'd wrestle rings around Taz and all his scumbag friends from back in the day. This is my favorite heel Jungle Boy promo so far. Uh, scumbag friend Jerry Lynn interrupts <laughs> and isn't happy he's about like Jungle Boy. He's like one of the least scummy of those lot, I reckon. I know, the scu scummiest guy, Jerry Lynn. Yeah. He wants to fight, but Jungle Boy isn't dressed to wrestle. He tells Lynn to come back next week. Again, the, the joke is he is dressed to wrestle. They're having a face face next <laughs> week where, joke. where Jerry Lynn is gonna is gonna feed Jack Perry Fruit Loops. Oh, yes. Oh yeah, I kept calling him Jungle Boy. Sorry, Jack Perry. Jack Perry. Yeah, who's oh. that? All right, JR. Yeah. Jungle um, Jack. He, um, he's getting there. Like I said, yes. it's not like I'm not he's not amazing, he's not awful, he's just kinda like, all right. No, no. But I'm, the crowd yeah. are booing the hell out of it, oh, which yeah. is obviously encouraging. Yeah. Are we gonna get Jerry Lynn versus JP? Yes. And oh. Jerry Lynn set a really high bar for himself, and I'm worried. Yeah. But like, he's 75. I know, but can he still? He probably still can. Mm. Yeah, he can. He sets such a high bar, though. It's All like we need when, is one cradle pal driver. Yeah. It's like when Steamboat came back, but then it was that was a great moment when he just could still do it. Yeah. And everyone was like, he's oh my it. God. Yeah, because he was, it helped that he was in that uh, three on one match. Was it Snooker and, and Piper? Piper and Snooker, yeah. it's, Snooker looked like one chop would have turned him into dust, <laughs> and Piper just cursed. Uh, and then Steve comes in, wasn't just like Steve arm drags and wasn't crawlers. He like the, didn't like, it build wow. up to him? And then suddenly he's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, can, can you go back for the backlash, please? Mm -hmm. You look amazing. What a guy. Uh, Britt Baker accepts uh, Tyre's challenge for later on tonight, but now it's time for Pac versus Gravity. Hey. And I was like, it's me. He shouted. Yeah. <laughs> look. <laughs> I know. I mean, I love this going, who the hell's Gravity? I don't know who he is. And this is the new dude. And I had to look and goes, oh, he's a Ring of Honor bloke. He's got three matches under his belt, an AW Dark loss to Kip Sabian from this year. Oh, I did like his poison. astronaut slow mo his, uh, astronaut slow mo stuff. And then you're doing stuff like pump splashes the outside, which is very nice. Uh on the other hand, Pac's been attacking Gravity for years, so this wasn't a deal for him. Mm. I feel he's like a this northern was just lad, done Tom. as a joke. Mm. Tom, of course, he was a northern lad, Tom. You should have him take on Gravy instead. <laughs> That'd be a challenge. <laughs> should take that kind of hurt me, friend. He's a northern lad. He should take on the minimum wage. Oh. He should take on mining. Listen, it's a... All right, Alexis oh, Sale. Right. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll move on from the young one stuff yes, now. It's an impoverished region, okay? Yeah. God. Hey, oh, well, man, it's three miles from London. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know who Gravity was, but the attitude. Okay, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, that was gravity. Yeah. And he won, so it's all right. Not yeah. gravity. But it was it was Pac one nice big joke people in on, and then Pac won while the BCC look on from backstage, not being impressed by gravity. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's time to try <laughs> defying gravity. <laughs> I love. They're going. They're going. Mm, not a fan of gravity, and they just all start floating away. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> by the way, I I did hear. Oh. I didn't have time to acknowledge. A nice little nod to Wicked that you just dropped there. And I wanted to acknowledge that Thank I heard it, much. and I enjoyed it. Thank you. Defying gravity. gravity. Kiss me goodbye. I can go the distance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's going to be a wicked film or something coming out. Or is it? I don't know. Are you a fan of Kinky Boots? No, I've never seen it. My friend Jojo is in Kinky Boots at the oh. Theatre Royal this week. Oh. She's, very, she's, she's, she's wonderful, my friend Jojo. And, well done, uh, Jojo. She plays Trish. So if you've gone to see it in Theatre Royal Newcastle, mm. Trish is uh, my old radio broadcast partner and my woman of honour at my wedding. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, oh, she Thank barks you. like a dog. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> Adam Cole <laughs> tells MJF like that dog. their partnership means more than titles now. It's about friendship. 
He feels as though they're becoming best friends and tells MGF that he's nothing to worry about regarding the AEW World title. The needle's moving in my And uh, MGF says that whoever they beat FTR or not, he's going to give Cole a rematch because he knows how much it means to him. And angry Roddy Strong interrupts. I'm glad it says angry because it's hard to tell what he's feeling. He's not very good at Moten. Aww. So Cole's, Cole talks to him in private. He tells Roddy that he's acting crazy and that he needs to let Cole have other friends too. Well, it's not... MJF is going to... Batter. Oh, no, no. So it's bad. Cold, it's cold. Do you know, it's, it's like a Scottish hot dog. I, I, do you know what? I think they're going to do something really sinister oh. with this. I think it's going to be because it's been too light so far. It's been and it's yeah. It's, 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 it's going to be something where no, it's going to be something where like where like Adam Cole gets hurt in a match. They feign that he gets injured in a match or something, and MJF's there checking on him. And then Britt Baker comes down to check as well. And MJF trying to console Britt Baker. He gives her a hug, and as he does, pile driver. Oh, I think it's going to be something really sinister. I, it's gonna be something really grim and sinister. I think Cole's one step is. But that's but he's MJ paying the percentages. But no, no, I'm with you, Tom. He'll delete all his saves. Oh, oh my you brother monster. used to do that when he was too young to understand. He oh, liked them spinning round on the memory card. Oh, I never got international superstar soccer back to the level I did. Oh no, no. that wasn't no, a memory ISSS. card game. That was a different. Oh. Um, I never got what a PS2 game I played. Stuntman ignition. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Croc. We've got the stuntman ignition. Croc, I Got the it's... keys in the kitchen. Can't sing in. Bloody hell. <laughs> we Not a different know? song. Stuntman. Oh, right. I right. Stuntman ignition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you thinking about? Stuntman 1 was hard game. Remember that? All remember I remember was you could adjust the Jump noise. the boxes. Yeah, you could Could you adjust the horn. I might think the stuntman was another stunt game where you could adjust the horn, the noise it made. So all my brother did was just change it to like La Caracha and play it obnoxiously. Well, in God, we it, weren't good at games. Was it kid. Stunt Drive 2 where Newcastle was in it? Oh, I don't know. No. Oh, I'm thinking of Test Drive 4. Yes. Oh. Test Drive 4 where you, can, where you can drive around Newcastle. You have to drive a, like a stuntman in that level. Yeah. Is it quite a realistic Newcastle? Do you know what? It's, it's not bad. Right until... Time Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, uh, time Bridge onto Grey Street. Yeah. And then you loop round onto the quayside. Yeah. So it's not bad. Wow. Yeah. Was this before it, the Millennium Bridge existed maybe? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also, is it Driver 1 or 2 that's got the, the same quayside level? Oh, I think that? it's Driver 2. Ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's the credits, isn't it? They're showing all the people up. We're going off topic. Have you heard there's going to be a Gran Turismo film? Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. What's the plot? So apparently it's about a real story of a guy who was really good at Gran Turismo sim racing and wanted to become an actual racing driver. So it's actually, when I first Uh, heard it, I was like, how can they do a story of Gran? But now I'm like, oh, I might see I think I saw the trailer, but I skipped ahead because I wanted to see, (laughs) I didn't even see the trailer. I just wanted to see if they played. Oh, the, the bloody, the, Theme Cardigan. from Gran Turismo. Oh. Uh, uh, what if what if the Gran Turismo movie is like the Gran Turismo car, like post the game, like living in like a one bed flat, and just trying to get? <laughs> oh, I can't I can't work the sink with with my wheel hand, uh, <laughs> but then knock on the door and his wacky neighbour Dave Toner USA. Oh, for. F- <laughs> <laughs> Dave Toner! So Sam recently started, not recently now, it was probably about two years ago. Matthew, Matthew, was Matthew in a coma, I know. Sam I know. was really trying to push Daytona to me. He was like, play on Daytona. I'm like, what? I don't understand. Play the, that's the game he tried pushing on you. Yeah, I don't I, know. I, think, I think he'd recently gotten an old... Right, yeah, it was a good thing. Mm. I remember it, Daytona. But I, I never played you it, You should though. play this arcade game from 96. Like, Sam gets fixated on things. We yeah, all do. Me too, but I'll try and hide it. I, I'm, I, <laughs> no, don't. Let it out. Yeah. I like the bit where you park in front of the Jeffrey statue from Virtual Fighter and does a little dance for you. Move on from you, Tocca-ing the piss. Hey! <sighs> Micro Wave machines. race. I'm trying to join in. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. You're doing good. You're all right. <laughs> you're you're okay. Yeah. Wave race is his mate that lives near the coast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ray race. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Grant Turismo. Oh, Dave I, Toner. Ray, and Ray, Ray voice. <laughs> Don't laugh, Joel. It only encourages him. <laughs> but, uh, I like the idea of him like auditioning for other games. Yeah. Oh like, yes. Can I be the new Master Chief? He goes, no. Why? <laughs> You're a car. He can't hold a gun. <laughs> You're a Subaru. <laughs> He's trying to hold a. Trying yeah, to hold a... that door's locked. Subaru is his girlfriend. <laughs> Subaru. Subaru. <laughs> Very good. All right. Now, now we'll cook. All right. It's back. It's Do we back. have to talk about Dynamite? Uh, what are you done? I think. Yeah. <laughs> FDR interviewed about their upcoming opponents. Cash says he respects Cole. 
that hates MGF and also this podcast because we talk about stupid <laughs> stuff from the 90s. <laughs> Dax threatens to rip MGF's eyeballs out if he makes any personal comments about Dax's family. Why would you say that, Dax? What have you done? <sighs> oh, you. Oh, no. No, oh, no. Uh, Swerve Strickland beats Darby Allen. Bloody hell. After interference from a mysterious hooded figure, he reveals himself to be AR yeah. Fox. No, no, best friend. Best friend. I know, best friend. Best friend. Best friend. Best friend. Best friend. Best friend. He had to beat down Darby and Nick Wayne before Fox is officially welcomed to the Wayne. embassy back from his son. Son, maybe. It's his son. Yeah. <laughs> I like Swerve countering Darby. Tone of son. <laughs> yeah. Swerving Darby's die with a falcon knee to the head and a DVD off the ropes to the apron, which looks like it knackered him. Mm. Then, yeah, Fox interfered and slapped him around. Uh, Swerve beat a pillar, finally. He's also got a lackey who can wrestle. Yes. Mm. yes. Mm. And Prince Nana welcomed him in. Yeah. It's Prince, yes, yes. Prince is, yeah. Aye, he's, aye. A good, he's a good fit. Yes, he is. I, I feel as though. This could be totally wrong. Have they been aligned before in Evolve? Were they both members of the Skulk or not? I've no idea. And also, I mean, oh, no, they're in um, Team... Because obviously Strickland is amazing, so he's a star. And AR Fox is, has a surname, so they're Star Fox. <laughs> and they live next... Stop it, Tom, you're doing this to me. <gasps> I didn't say anything. Um, I could hear it. I didn't say anything. Matthew, it's me, Tom's voice. <laughs> I'm plays in your head, but you're not around him. Also... Um, they had a great off. feud. Oh no, they won't be feuding there together. They had a great feud in Lucha Underground when they were Killshot. Of course and, they did. Yes. Um, the other, the other one, Killshot and that was his name. The General other one. Fox. General Knowledge. Aye. <laughs> and they had that boot camp match, which was yeah. actually amazing. Maybe the best ever Lucha Underground match. Maybe. 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 They were the best. Mm. Who's that at the door? Oh hi, I'm your new neighbor, Lila Twors. Lila. Lila. <laughs> the Americans will get that one. Will they? Was just it, as, I think that, when that, was it? Lila was. They've got a reason to be was cheerful. It just you? There. I can't remember. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Lila Swars. Swars. <laughs> <laughs> Rave Waste. Lila Swars. Oh, yeah, let's do the roll Dave call. Dave. <laughs> Dave the young Turner. ones. <laughs> <laughs> they're the, they're the, the car ones. ones. <laughs> Dave Toner and Grant <laughs> Turismo. <laughs> Oh. The JAS confront Jericho about his recent actions. Oh. Anna J tells him he's being selfish, and the stablemates all walk away from Jericho one by one. They've been all sad and alone. Oh no! I felt well, sad for him. Matt why? Menard, he's, ch he's checking up. Matt with Menard him. goes, figure it out. Yeah, he's checking up with a man who puts people's souls in the paintings. Yeah, they don't want any of that. Oh. I, uh, I thought it was good. It was Jericho's at his best when he does silly emotional segments, mm. like like serious but overly serious. And that was what this was, and it was great. I liked his hurt face. And as people are walking away, he's like, come, come on, guys. And he's really good at that. Be my yeah. friend. Mm. <laughs> I'd, I'm scared for him. What's Don going to do? Oh, he wants to recruit him. He's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah, he wants to recruit him, yeah. Mm. yeah. He's just going, oh, I have friends on the other side. Make him sign a contract. Nothing bad will happen. Mm. Britt Baker beats Tyre with the locked jaw. Uh, That's what it reminded It reminded me of a scene from something. You know when the, all the toys abandon Woody in Toy Story because mm -hmm. he's being jealous and selfish? And Slink, he's the last one. He's going, Slink, yeah. no! That was like the last of the Jericho Appreciation Society yeah. walking away. Even Slink, he's left them. <laughs> Afterwards, Nyla Rose and Hikaru Shida get promos about their upcoming match on Rampage. It's implied that if Shida wins, she'll get a title shot. Yeah, they've wrestled loads of times. Yeah, nothing says a game for Rampage like Rose versus Shida again. Again, yeah. yeah. Uh, but still probably better, th better than Britt Baker versus Tyre. You are horrible. This was not a good match. Um, the road to Valhalla looked more like, I still a line from me, mate. It looked more like the road to Grimsby. <laughs> Oh, because so we're nowhere fast and it's, it smells of fish. <laughs> uh, it wasn't very, this was, woof. It, they are two uh, good wrestlers who right. had a bad night. Yeah, yeah they weren't that's fine. In, a, in a division that certainly needs more. Love. I'm also surprised Britt clicking. Baker bloody won. They've been big enough, Ty, haven't they? Yeah. What's this, this rubbish match between these people? And then Ty is not winning. Britt's been around for donkey's years. All right. And after this miserable match. Well, in real, outside of AW, it's Ty who's been around for donkey's years and Britt's the newer one. But in the context, uh, yeah, it's yeah. weird. Like, yeah. Yeah. But then. After this, it was so sad because they showed this and in the camera deliberately looked at a sign that says, like, treat women's wrestling better. They wanted yeah. this to be, they gave it, like, a long oh, time. They, wanted, better, it, they wanted it to be, like, look, guys, we've got a big, long women's match on the show and then it just didn't quite work yeah. out. Yeah. They had, I guess they had good intentions. I don't know. I know. It's, who are we kidding? They don't care about it. 
Okay, and the main event, Moxie, know anything to, uh, yeah, Claudio just, yeah. take on the best friends and the Lucha Brothers in a three-way tag match. Mm. OC comes down at ringside to strap Moxley, which allows the Lucha Brothers to pick up the win over the best friends. Everybody can use the brawl to end the show, just like an episode of The Young Ones. <laughs> yeah. yes. So are we getting Should Moxley and OC? Yeah, Moxley and OC. Um, that's an intriguing match, I think. I know that Moxley Moxley's going to win. You put the, do you put that. the international oh, title? Oh, oh yeah, but he's a champion, isn't he? Mm. 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 News this week that Orange Cassidy is now a road agent. Yes, that which was interesting. which led to the reveal that Bret Hart was he offered to do that, and mm. they went, "No, you're all right, Bret Hart, the greatest of all time." <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> yeah, like. it's a bit weird. Do you know who else was the road agent this week? Who? Oh. Scotty Too Hotty. What? North's very own. North Wrestling's North own Scott. Original, he was backstage right? as a, an agent and a coach. Uh, Dynamite last night. He's going to be there for the next couple of weeks. He's been a busy bee. He's what? He's going to give him all bee. the trade secrets about the Walker Dome. Yeah. That's shocking, that. I think he's, he's going to give away all the stuff. Was, Did they make him sign an NDA? <laughs> we, oh, we didn't think about I'm it. going to ruin his heel character here, but it was lovely talking to Shreddy after that match because I was like, yeah. you have fun? He was like, it was like, Rest he's my favorite. He's like my dream come Yeah, through. of course I did. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> that's how he talks. That's not what he talks like. He He could. He's lovely. Snap us all in half at once with his big <laughs> arms. <laughs> promises, promises. <laughs> but yeah, this was a lovely match. Um, to be, like I said, send up Orange Cassidy. Just for, to... Whatever his name is, bloody Orange Cassidy. Plug a highlight of now. North a little bit more. When you were talking about Shotzi shaving her head, there is a hair versus career match on Thunderstruck oh, as well. Oh, yes. Tomorrow on five. Featuring Gangrel. Gangrel. And Rory Coyle oh, and the Atlanta Gentry. Oh, what a match. Yeah. Absolute. What a <laughs> stormer. <laughs> Just a great <laughs> show. Yeah. Get it on fight. Get on you fight. cowards. Yeah, do it. That was almost as good as this episode of AEW Dynamite, which we just looked at. It was all right. It was all right. Yeah. It right. It's all the build up to AEW issue 200. We're in a big... A shiny file We're cover. kind of in a big gap now between Forbidden Door and then suddenly we get nothing for a while and then all in and then all out really quick to get well, close thank, together. Well, thank yeah. goodness we're four weeks out from all in and they've already got a really nice card all lined up, ready to go. Uh, and, they've, and they've got everything announced. And and we we know exactly how we're going to watch it as well. They've made that oh very, <laughs> very clear. I mean, I was worried. They've only had a year <laughs> to tell us anything. They've had bad luck with some injuries. You can at least tell us <laughs> if it's on pay-per-view. Oh, surely, surely. It's Wembley. You can, But they've done nothing. It'll be all right. It'll be fine. They've done nothing. I'm excited. They've done nothing. They've done nothing. You know what we'll be doing? Have a lovely time down there in London. I was going to say, I know where I'm going to be watching it with my eyes. Yes. Because I'm going. <laughs> Come on, boys. Doing the door photos. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. We'll take that. Wait. Well, just sat down. They're still set up the ring. Take the photos. Ooh, attendance low for the show today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please do. Wembley. Please do. It's going to look good, at least. We know that. It's yeah. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. I've never been in the new Wembley. I never went to the old Wembley. I've never been to Wembley. I've been to Wembley like Arena. Ah, you know what's got almost mm. as lovely as you two lovely lads? Right here in the Goldholic Wrestling Podcast. Oh. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> mail bag. Hello, amazing people. Hello. Oh, that's you two. Uh, thank you, you for well, the hours Matthew. of Come entertainment. I'm Joel. Especially, oh, I'm Joel, yes. Especially at the moment, since I've been living on my own with family on holiday. I have had many podcast episodes on the background to fill some silent moments. Oh, we've enough. all been there. My question is, as you know, you inspired me to start interviewing by taking a chance on me, take a chance, take a chance, and helping get started in my interviewing journey. So who inspires you when it comes to content creating? Mm. Ooh, thanks for all being amazing and helping me get where I am today. Nothing but love. Tom talks rubbish. Tom talks rubbish. Aww. I think in terms of what inspires... It's a good question. Yeah. Um... I, I mean, what? I, at least with, with my role here, it's 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 doing podcast stuff, so I'm a little bit more free for me in terms of what I do. There's less pressure on. Like, oh God, you've got like four different jobs. You've got various inspirations. I'm all, all over, yeah. I'm all over the place. But the nice thing about the podcast thing is, unlike with the YouTube channel, there is less pressure for it to to. We know some things will land on a channel and some things won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with a podcast, we can do a bit more, a wider range of stuff. You'd be a bit so more silly billies. Yeah. So when things start trending and when something kicks off, it's nice to reach out to somebody and go, come on and chat about it. Like, for example, last week when Marcus Everett's uh, infamous bump where he leapt off the wall of the arena and landed literally the on the concrete. Oh. Uh, it was It's a botch that goes back to like 2017, but it started yeah. doing the rounds again this week. So uh, I reached out to Marcus Everett and said, hey, this is doing the rounds. Do you want to come yeah. and talk about it? And we had a lovely chat about that. And uh, so it's normally stuff that's happening in the wrestling world that 
I want to find out a little bit more about. And I think it'd be nice for Cultaholic to be connected with yeah. through the means of audio. So certainly what's happening modern day, I don't like just interviewing people for the sake of interviewing them, if you see what I mean. I know what you mean. Like, I don't want to like, just go, oh, I want to have a chat with them. And best when it's relevant. Yeah, I want, I want to speak to people who are doing stuff that's relevant. I think it's it's a false economy just to go, oh, I just want to interview them. Uh, I'd like it to be, there'd be a reason for it. Fair enough. Uh, so uh, topicalities always helps for me. That's that's my inspiration. I'd, I'd say when I, I don't, in terms of when I'm like, because I feel like the most creative part of my job is when I'm writing stuff, like whether it's a script for myself or someone else or whether it's like a video script that I then have to do in front of the camera. There's a weirdest episode in the works. Ooh. Um, ooh. What year is it? 2020. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> quite a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, but I find like the stuff that inspires me, I feel it's stuff that if when I've watched it, I then feel energized to write and be like, oh, I can now, I'm in a mood where I'm feeling creative and I can yeah. write. So that's stuff like, there are some brilliant video essayists on YouTube, aren't there? Mm. We watched a lot of the same ones. Summon Insults, unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. Um, Super Eye Patchable, really good. Yep, just watch his Roman Reigns one. There's a guy called Lamino who does, he's re, he only does like two videos a year because they're so in-depth. He recently did one on the JFK conspiracy or assassination. Which one? There's a conspiracy about JFK. I know. Um, and having watched it, I now don't think that there was a conspiracy, which makes me sad because I really want that to be. Oh. I know. Um, but it, there are loads of amazing people out there. And then also when it comes to Matches of the Month, my solo podcast, that was something I'd never done before, a podcast on my own. So um, when I was listening to podcasts that feature just one presenter, they were very um, influential as well. Um, the Jack Slack MMA podcast is very good, where it's just him talking mm -hmm. in quite a chilled fashion about the most recent goings on in MMA, but he does it in a very thoughtful and structured and calm way. And that is what I'm trying to increasingly do with Matches of the Month. Because I've learned that when you're podcasting on your own, it's so easy to rush, which sounds yeah. crazy because you're on your own. You can take the time, but it's, it's realizing that you can take all the time you want and um, letting the content breathe a bit. There we go. Well put. Thank you. I like that. I'll say OSW Review. Oh, oh so like how, uh, how refreshingly just like, there are times when we're reading stuff here and I'll be like, I better watch what I say there because I know that person knows where I live <laughs> and stuff like that. I'll be like, oh, well, I've had better matches and sometimes I listen to them going, this is probably the worst match I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the state of them. They're like a bed. You know, it's just stuff like that. I'm like, Oh, yeah, you can just say that on a podcast. This isn't, you know, no one's going to be doing a writ or whatever about this in court. Can you read what you said about this? <laughs> right, the yeah, state look. of your hair, mate. Yeah, look, I'm sorry about the state of your hair. I'm sorry about what I said. They, they are but, so, they make, they, they're a good one to remind you that the job that we all do and is so fun and should exactly. be fun. And they're really, OSW are having a ball when they do their stuff and it, it comes across. It's nice hearing people having a good time mm -hmm. and just enjoying their, each other's company. Mm -hmm. I think we are indirectly influenced by them. They are amazing. For the classic Smackdown review. That and New Generation Project. I think the thing inspires us on that is drugs. I mean, we don't have enough of them, you're right. You're right. Oh, yeah, sorry. We have yes. more. Yeah. Uh, also, I'd say, yeah, Joseph Weirdness. The yeah, passion he has just for the quality of wrestling. Great Sometimes wrestling it's, it's a fine line between like someone else to be, ah, who cares? It's all this stupid stuff for kids. And you watch Joseph Weird, it's going, no, 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 but this, yeah. this mm. match he's, or this feud. He's or... really, uh, there was a big blind spot for me was like the Four Pillars tag yeah. matches and stuff. And his series on the King's Road and all that sort of stuff has been amazing. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I always give him a wee share when I say he's done yeah. a video. It doesn't inspire me, but uh, have you seen Bobby Broccoli? No, I don't Oh, know. he does these amazingly long stuff they have on the background. We did one about the Hydron Collider in America. All right. Or if they call it, it's called yeah. it's a different history. Is that a new wrestler on Saturday nights for <laughs> oh, AEW? you bastard. I can't believe I've <laughs> I think it's Gran Turismo's boss in the film. Don't you know. No, sorry. <laughs> it's like the little clown the Simpsons who's playing the accordion and gets tipped a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Anyway, honey. so thank you. Tom talks rubbish. Happy Good question, inspire. Tom. Hello to you, Bubba Ray Diddley, Devon Diddley, <laughs> and Spike Diddley of the wrestling YouTube. <laughs> That's good, done. Yes. Question to answer on a podcast for your consideration. It's been a year since Brock came to SummerSlam with a tractor. And with this year's edition being in Detroit, I expect at least one vehicle spot to be on the show. Mm. Oh, because Detroit... Right? Motor City. Detroit. Yeah, exactly. Well, I hadn't mm. thought about that. Was the your favorite... It's even in the bloody thing for the, the show, isn't it? The, oh, there's a... Oh, yeah, that as well. But like, like on the... the um, metal and the flames. By the way, I've got to say on the thing, because somebody knows by him. Steppenwolf, Born to be Wild is the theme. Is it? Yeah. Did you not watch Raw this week? Well, I skimmed it. Fair Are they not from that neck of the woods? It's three hours long. 
I haven't thought about that, but I was just thinking, Steppenwolf, born to be wild. It's what just one mean? of these songs it's also that's a great, beyond a cliche almost. But it's also know. a great driving anthem. Yeah. And, and we're in the Motor City. Should it have been, okay, yeah, what's yeah. another driving song? I'm now thinking of the Gran Turismo soundtrack. I want to know what <laughs> love is. <laughs> Could it be Feeder, Buck Rogers. <laughs> just got a brand new car. <laughs> Driving what? home for Christmas. Born is the <laughs> anthem for SummerSlam. Born to be Wild is a weird one, but I'll, I'll accept it because it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. It was just it's such a, an obvious pick, you know. Vince will think it's a hot new anthem. Like, Back to the bone sound. will be, you know, the <laughs> next one. But. So would you rather have, oh, we'd like to thank Scrat Blood for their new song, <laughs> Hello, Hello <laughs> Death. That's how I know half these new bands That's exist. NXT, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exclamation mark, question mark, Q-Bert insult. I was going to see them tomorrow. Isn't <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, saw, like, I, saw uh, them, I saw them on the main stage of download. Until <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sam's like, I know you just made this band up, but I have seen them live. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I expect this one because what? What is your favorite use of a vehicle in wrestling history? Mm. And what new spot would you like to see? <laughs> I think Daniel Bryan bringing Kane to the ring on a forklift is on the radar. Underrated. Underrated. Did he bring him to the ring on a forklift? Oh, yeah, he didn't. He dropped off. I want someone huge to be eliminated for the Royal Rumble with a crane or mm. similar. How can anyone eliminate the big show? He's typed it. Oh, here's a crane. <laughs> <laughs> Love the podcast. Listen to every single one since I started doing Mania season. And I'm currently binge listing classic SmackDown reviews while at work. Oh, Yay. careful. Don't operate any heavy vehicles whilst uh, listening to that. Keep on the good work. Cheers, boys. Former Derby County and Southampton striker. Mm. Oh, God. Greg's, oh no. Gregor's Razor. Is it Gergzogs? Razziak? I'm going to go Gregor Razia. I don't know. Oh, beautiful. That sounds know. way more. They'd put their real name as well. Oh, aka Bartek from Krakow. Oh, thank you, Bartek. The okay. Poland. That's up, right. Up the Poland, as Ross would say. Up the up Poles. Up the Poland. Yeah. Vehicular shenanigans in the wrestling. You bring up Gran Turismo. <laughs> oh, God. There's actually I wasn't going lot. to, but now you've said <laughs> it. <laughs> There's actually quite a lot, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, Vehicles and wrestling go together. Bob Holly. The little car. Okay. Coming last at every race. He, you know what? He never good. drove the spark plug Holly car to the ring for a match. No. It would have been a great, ma- it would have been a great like mania entrance for spark mm. plug. But he wouldn't, that would involve no, spark plug getting on mania. No, because by the, we saw his race results. By the time he really started the car and got <laughs> there, the show would <laughs> be over. Um, can I, can I set, get you. the ball rolling? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, want, I want Vince McMahon bringing out a hay truck at Armageddon 2000. <laughs> Yeah. I just happen to have this hay truck here. Well, he's pulling the tear, <laughs> tear down this Pull the cell. Cage down. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Gorbachev, tear yeah. down this cell. It all Check makes, hay truck. It all makes sense. Yeah, he yeah. Wants and, to then, sell and then, lo and behold, Rikishi fell nicely into it. That and, my, uh, that's one of the most. That's got to be the most terrifying. But he doesn't look. He can't look. He's just got to no. take it and just trust the was, trucks there. Now then, trust trick, the, now trick, the, now trick, trust the truck. Yeah, I hope they remember to put the hay in there. <laughs> Scary bum. Vince is there looking at the hay truck backstage going, wait, if the hay truck's here, where's the sharp <laughs> nails truck? <laughs> oh no, Rikishi! <laughs> but luckily, wah, wah, wah. But luckily Rikishi was going, look at my ass, so Rodo caught him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heard you talking crap. Um, uh, what other ones we got? That was, that's a good that's moment. A good though, one. That's a good one, that's a hard one. Uh, I'm a sucker for golf carts, so I like the WrestleMania oh, X7, yeah, course, yeah. and I really like the more, to give more modern one, Sammy Guevara bumping off the golf cart when it yeah. ran him over. That was an amazing bump. We saw, it, we saw what a good emoter mm. Sammy is, because he's like a silent film actor. He's like, oh. He was like Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, I should have said, oh, Buster Keaton. There we go. That works. Or, Both great silent film actors. Or, or, yes, or some mothers do have him, man. As well. Yes. Betty. Ooh, Betty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, JBL getting choke slammed into the hearse at SummerSlam 04. Oh, yeah. No, never mind that. I'll take a place to the one drunken fan with this show stinks. (laughs) I'm going to dance on the limo. (laughs) Austin's had loads of vehicle moments. Usually yeah. oh, just driving things the, to the ring. The Zamboni. Mm-hmm. I love that word, Zamboni. Mm. Um, drives up, knocks all over the lights, and apparently nearly crushes Bruce Pritchard to death. And <laughs> the podcast. Oh. oh, nearly. And uh, gets on there and is like, well, how's, how's Austin going to sneak attack Vince? He's got all these guards around him like it's a ninja film. Like, <laughs> ah, I have my entire squadron of bodyguards. That idiot wasn't able to come here. Ha, ha, ha. Here he comes on the Zamboni. Oh, no. It just takes <laughs> that clothesline. Oh, so good. The beer truck and the milk truck, yeah. both yeah. good. Yeah. Um, Come. Rusev's tank enemies. Oh my god! Come. I, oh, I remember oh, thinking, god, bloody hell, tanks are big, aren't they? It was a huge tank. Not like Shotty's crap tank. <laughs> Needless shots fired there at Shotty. Yeah. I think they'd let that tank into the Kemper Arena. Yeah. 
on WCW. They went DX are outside of oh, the tank. The oh, Jeep. Oh, the Jeep. The yeah, Jeep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, it's a Jeep. Don't listen to his. Don't listen to those bloody revisionists. Yeah. It was a Jeep. You're right. You know those lads of the podcast. I would say that you know, um, out of Titan or whatever. Bloody, I can't think of a Roman. It just it's I'm ruined out there. The, um, the stain that you say. It's like it's as if a Jeep is not even. It's like a, it's just a green micro. That's all they drove up. It was a Jeep <laughs> with a big tube that they pretended fired rockets. <laughs> is that not what a tank is? Um. At the end of the say, day. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now we're going to philosophy. What is it? Yeah, the day. <laughs> Easy Jeep not dead. Jeep tank. Anyway, thank you, Bartek. Mm. Subject, help with your table. Hey, guys, you can use a, <laughs> you can use a few pieces of paper folded over or some cardboard to even out whichever leg isn't making con- contact correctly. Cheers, Paul. That's a well done one, Paul. Thank you very much for helping the table. Yeah. Give that Jack only a few minutes ago. I managed to knock it again. Apparently, last week Ross had quite some trouble with the table. Fraser said it just kept going last week. So yeah, because we, we we have done this podcast for we, a we'll while. We each other same so, room, the we'll same table. We each other so much that we're all just. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Is it a case that that we could do with a bit of wood under it? It's not on this side. I'm yeah. scared to it move it right now while we have active wires. Yeah, God, you know it'd be really yeah, dumb, and not to mention dull as hell to be. But thank you for the question, though. Thank you, Paul. More, Wait. more. Wasn't more. even a question. It was just <laughs> yeah. a, a, Paul, Paul a serving adds, suggestion. Paul yeah. also adds, if you have a uh, bag of potatoes, if you put an apple next to potatoes, they won't sprout so much. Uh, Cheers, Paul. There you go, Paul. That Thanks, was Paul. That that was was uh, Any uh, other little tips there? Um, uh, Paul says, uh, if you put a little bit of vinegar behind the radiator, it uh, helps clean it. Oh. We mean behind. There's like. Yeah. Actually, behind, like square on the wall. I don't know. I just made that up. Oh, You're a dick. It sounded so You're much such like a real a dick. one. It really did sound. Good day, real. lads. Hope the podcast is good. I find that too. I got one here from Grand Turismo who says, "If you oil your oh, shoulders no. before oh, bed." No. <laughs> I can't believe today's the day shoulders. we saw the birth of Grand Turismo. <laughs> Do I feel uh, become quite a and, long living character? And Dave and all the, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wait, rave Waste and <laughs> Rave Waste. Suzuki and all that. Subaru, sorry, Subaru. Subaru. No, yeah, don't yeah. get the Suzuki two mixed up. No. <laughs> no. I can't believe I've done this. Oh. As Blood and Guts has ended literally two seconds ago, I write this email. I've got to say this. After a fantastic match, that ending killed it for me. <laughs> I feel deflated. What, you killed Ibushi? And oh, disappointed sorry. by a crappy ending to a great match. My question to you is, what ending do a match disappoint you the most? Cheers. Former mm. West Ham defender, Winston Reed. Easy. <laughs> WrestleMania oh, XIX. Oh. Triple H versus Booker T. Oh, yeah, when he takes an age. Mm. Oh, God, sorry, but A.K. Frank from Australia. Thank you, Frank. Australia is winning the... Uh, whatever. Well, Australia is probably going to... Well, they have retained the Ashes. We'll see if they win or not. Mm. It's going to be a draw or they're going to win. Um. Yeah, it's not a yacht race. You can't win everything. Shut up. <laughs> I've got one, by the way. If go you ahead. Yeah, go uh, mine's the Triple H Rock Iron Man match. One hour long, oh. just for a bloke on a bike to drive mm. out. A bloke on a and bike. And accidentally cost The Rock the belt and hand it to Triple H. This wasn't the Tour de France, which you're a big Triple- fan of. This was the bloody Undertaker. Triple H won the belt by getting punched by The Undertaker. That's crap. I nah. don't. I, that's, that's the match that everyone loves that I don't like. You don't like that I don't match. like that match. Well, because the ending. Yeah, I think so. He's, he's back, he's mad as hell, and obviously the ref goes, well, I have to call it. He's here. Oh. And it's just a bit with Sean McMahon, you know, I mean, I am obviously good friends with Triple H, but, you know, mm. if a guy in a bike comes out and punches someone, I have to call it. I have to call it. I mean, it. yes, he, Sean he did, it's not Sean's to. fault, but if I was The Rock, I'd be so cross. So cross. Um, <laughs> there's, there's two great Shawn Michaels matches from 96 that, whilst they are great, are marred by just... Wobbly endings. Mm. No, there's only one good one. Oh. There's Michael's Vader at SummerSlam, yeah, which has like a multiple like DQ finishes, and then you got Mind Games, which was a oh, DQ sorry. finish as well. What did you think he was going? Yeah, what were you thinking? Bloody of? WrestleMania 12. Oh, the oh no, that, no, that oh. was that was not a disappointing finish. That was a disappointing start, middle, and end. Okay, good, good, good. So good. like that was. You guys <laughs> don't understand. Slow down, grab a hold, kid. Yeah, learn the wrestle, learn the business. Put a headlock on, mm. and, and don't do Twitter. Mm-hmm. Sorry, X. Oh. Um, don't do X. Don't do X. Sounds like he's like solving algebra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the finish of Mind Games is a bit blown. Is it because Vader is late for the save? Yes. So Sean's, Sean's gone ready. He's like, all right, fantastic. One, two. Sean has to Sean break has to the get cover. up of his because oh, stupid fat Vader. 
Yeah. Oh, Sean was mean to no, Vader. That's what Sean was, was saying. That that match? Sean's like, no, that's that's match, yeah. I was right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Vader didn't help himself on a few occasions. But Sean didn't adhere to the principle of any like stage play or whatever, which is that if you make a mistake, the crowd don't know. Just pretend. Sean's the worst at doing that. Mm. Like the move moment. Randy Orton when he called Kofi <sighs> stupid. Oh. Yeah. yeah. By the time Randy Orton was going for the RKO and Jericho, or had someone in the walls, he went and hit that, and <laughs> slipped through him. I Gets up, bounces, does it again. I reckon that's Jericho's fault for not going down the first time. Because he's, yeah. I don't know. I, I blame Jericho as well. Mm. Shock him. <laughs> ah, that's all the questions. Thank you very much. Thank if you. Have you. Any or more, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. Reese's Pieces. Howdy diddly doodly. Oh, God. Howdy doodly diddly knows. You know, when someone like, changes one letter, it throws you off. Uh, we're back with some Little Willie style. <laughs> After Matthew's I've dismay, the King Ring, stop it. I sent in, I, it seemed only fitting to submit another. So, my burning question, which I need your guys' help with, is who's currently the best champion across all of wrestling? Or at least to my knowledge of wrestling. I've attached a PDF do uh, document of a 32-man tournament. Of we'll course, roll through it. Don't worry, lads. Consisting of champions from all of the little companies. Based on off who you prefer, work rate, title on, range, storylines, any other reasons you may like, I'd be interested to know who you think the best champ in wrestling so is. They're wrestling all title like. holders my partner and I have just hatched a new baby girl, Ivy Rose Turtle. Congratulations. Congrats. I look forward to poisoning her little brain with wrestling-related nonsense. <laughs> Good. Fair enough. <laughs> Thanks again for all the entertainment you've brought over the years. Kind regards, Little Willie Turtle. Thank, Thank you, you, Little, little Willie. Willie <laughs> Massive congratulations <laughs> yes. to Little Willie. Good to see it's going. Um, and, and welcome <laughs> to planet Earth, Ivy Rose Turtle. Absolutely. Hello, I'm, Ivy glad, Rose. I'm glad that now Little Willie has somebody else maybe to send 32-man tournaments to. We'll get just through it, yeah. Don't worry. By the way, we'll just, just say this briefly. Thought. We don't mean this in a negative, overly negative way. We love the recent I pieces do. and stuff. They don't have to be giant tournaments. You've got more chance of sending them in and getting them included in the podcast if they're not enormous. I'll like be honest. Them. We like them like him, little Willie it was style. A light all right? week. It was a light week for Reese's <laughs> so, I mean it negatively. You too. In a very toxic Stop way. Stop it. So you too. Roman Reigns, Jacob Fatu. Uh, Roman Reigns. Romulus Reigns. Nya, nya, nya. David Finley, uh, Takahashi. Which one's he got? Uh, probably a six-man belt or something. I'll check well, while we I'll carry be. on. But I'll, I'll, I'll go, say Takahashi. I'll go for... Yeah, Takahashi. Oh, really? Care. Yeah, sure, Tak. Uh, Ta Nathan Fraser. <laughs> the Heritage Cup. That's, that's bollocks. He doesn't have it. We, just saw, we <laughs> yeah. saw an NXT. Uh, or Buddy Matthews. No, I'm done. Um, Buddy, Buddy Matthews. Matthews. Okay, sorry. It's on the right. It's a bit clearer because I'm realizing it's a Sharpie. So. Oh, uh, you'll never Malik guess. Takahashi is currently the IWGP Junior Heavyweight. He's, he's, it's his fifth time with the belt. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Malachi Black or Dominic Mysterio? Dominic Mysterio. Yeah, at the minute, at the minute, Dom. Yeah, day yeah. Dom. Uh, Kevin Owens or Leo Rush? Kevin Owens. Big Kev. Big Hope Kev. he gets well from his injury soon. Cash Wheeler or Luchasaurus? Cash Wheeler. Yeah, Cash. Samoa Joe or Eddie Kingston? Eddie Kingston. Samoa Joe. Math. Wait, what title has Eddie got? He's got the strong, strong one in Japan. Strong boy yeah, yeah. title. Strong. What title Samoa Joe got? The TV. TV. Ring of Honor TV. The Honorable These Ring Television. Um, oh, Eddie Vienna. Kingston, because I love him. Okay. I R L. Uh, Jack Perry or Austin Theory? Jack Perry. Perry, yeah. Uh, Pezzala. Just Theory's just uh, not done as much. Yeah, get effed. Uh, Jack, sorry, Gunther or Alex Kane? Gun. Gonna have to cover Alex Kane. Uh, Gunther, probably. <laughs> Gunther. Zack Sabre Jr. or Orange Cassidy? I'm legit enjoying Zack Sabre Jr.'s TV title remote. Oh. Oh. If I watched it, I'd say it, but I don't, so Orange Cat. Okay. <laughs> Claudio or Dax Harwood? Dax. Because we put cash through and I'm hoping for a dream. Okay. Claudio. Oh. Well, I'm saying Dax. Because uh. I'm going to drink with him. Uh, Tyrus or Sami Zayn? Hang on. Tyrus. I didn't say anything. No, Sami <laughs> Zayn. Sami Zayn. Okay. Of course it's Sami Zayn. Oh my God. But then I don't like real wrestling, so what do I know? Exactly. Carmelo Hayes or Alex Shelley? Oh. Now my heart says Alex Shelley, but I'm going to go but for Carmelo. Carmelo Hayes is saying Carmelo Hayes. Well, I'm going to say Alex Shelley just to make math make the decision. Hayes. Oh. Uh, travel. No one offers you. <laughs> Brody King or MJF? MJF. MJF. Oh, Which is a disservice to Brody King, but yeah, it's MJF. 
me can make oh, whatever. Shut up. Sonata or Will Osprey? Osprey. Osprey. Okay. Sonata's reign isn't working yet. Viking O or Seth Rollins? Seth. Seth. Seth Rollins. Seth boy. Wow. Ooh, okay. A fictional tournament. Now, R R or Takahashi? Reigns. Roman. Yeah. Buddy Matthews. I can see this. Reigns just. I can this see this. Up. Buddy Matthews or Dom? Dom. Yeah, Dom. Dom's running through the House of Black. I think Dirty he did Malachi Dom. in the first round. <laughs> he did. Yeah. What a uh, storyline with Boots. <laughs> Kevin Owens or Cash Wheeler? Oh, choose your character. I'm yeah, going Kevin Owens. I'm going Kevin Owens. Big Kev. Eddie Kingston Big or Kev. Perry? Perry. Sorry. Sorry. Eddie Perry. Kingston. Eddie Kingston. Great a match. Everyone would love seeing Eddie, Eddie Kingston battle Jungle Boy Jack Gunther or Orange Cassidy? Oh, what a match. Gunther. Gunther. What a match, though. It'd be a hell of a match. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be good. The big gunt. The ring around. Dax or Sammy? This round's amazing. Dax. No. S- Dax. Sammy. No. <laughs> Dax, 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 Dax. I'm going Dax. He's good I'm also Dax, say, Dax, Dax. I'm also going to say no, Dax. Oh, that was oh, a hard one. I said Sammy. Give it them is a series. It's a, a tough one. Like Hayes or MJF? MJF. MJF. What, is World Champ? Yeah. I'm Hayes. He's not done anything with it, apart from beat up Adam Cole and then no, love him. Nah, he's, he's carried the company. Yeah. Yeah. bollocks. Osprey or Rollins? That's a real life feud come to oh. life. What's going on out there? Do you hear the I mirth? Think... Do you hear the merriment? They've laughed at our pick for the last round. I'll go. I'll go on current form just because he's just had that match with Omega. I'll go Osprey. I'm gonna go Rollins then. Uh, I'm watching New Japan. Rollins. There you go. <laughs> he's over as hell now. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the number one dude on Raw. Reigns oh. or Dom. Reigns, you can't have yeah, Dom. Yeah, it's got to be Reigns. Sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Kevin Owens versus Eddie Kingston. Oh, what a match. Oh. Kingston. Yeah, I'm going to go Eddie Kingston as well. King- you started writing Kingston before I even said anything. Kingston, <laughs> Park. I knew what you were going to say. Fix, fix, fix. Gunter in the Gun- next round. Didn't it? Big one. Gunther or Dax? Oh, Gunther, but what a match it would be. Gunther. What a match it would be. MJF or Rollins? Have they laughed at that? Um, I'm Jeff. Uh, Rollins. I'm going to make you work, my friend. Eee, eee, what's he going to do? Oh, Rollins. He's gone Rollins. Oh, that, Roman Reigns. One of them is your friend and the other one's not. Oh, no. He's going to hate me yeah, with this fictional thought. Actually, you might. What was it, sorry? Roman Reigns or Eddie Kingston? Or oh, Eddie. They're the just, glorious victory of what? Eddie Kingston. In terms of the championship, this is what speci- Little Willie is asking Little about. Little Willie specified in the question yep. that it could be based on any criteria we want, and I think Eddie Kingston's a lovely man. In t- <laughs> championship. Like, okay, so like I'm talking it. to a dog. He's a lovely man. I'm going to say Roman Reigns. <laughs> you see my video of seeing my cat when I was drunk? Yeah. No. It's lovely that Can you get it out? I can play the audio if you want. He's please. just... It was when I got back from the karaoke from oh. after the North show. Oh, please, yeah. Roman it's Reigns, Eddie <laughs> Kingston, you said. Yeah. I'm saying Roman. Do you want to, you can put it, yeah. It does a world championship. It's, it's, it's Roman yeah, Reigns. It's yeah. got to be Roman. Oh, it's my tweet, isn't it? A twi- a tweet. Uh, we'll keep Gunther doing it. or Rollins? Gunther or Rollins? Gunther. It's Gunther. Gunther. Now, the million dollar oh. question. Reigns, Gunther in the finals. Gunther. Yeah, I'm leaning towards Gunther. Oh. You are indeed during general. You know what? Oh, you go. I think that tournament shook out really well. Yeah. I think we've booked ourselves a fine tournament there. But don't send any more. <laughs> yeah. 64-man tournament. I've comprised a 128-man tournament no, no, of every wrestler. Just Tom, don't yeah, laugh. What because you, do you remember when we what did are you, that? five-star wrestling? No, because yeah. do you remember when we did that? <laughs> do, you uh, yeah. did, do you remember when we did that WrestleMania one, right? God. We did the bracket that I made. I've made a SummerSlam one and I need people to be on the video and now I'm I'll, worried I know, I'll do that because oh, right, I'm on right. the clock for that. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> but this is overtime. When are we doing that? I don't have to talk to Adam. Bit of admin. Know. SummerSlam is rapidly approaching, isn't it? So we'll have to make some time next week. Yes, but I've... I, don't worry if you can't do it. I'd, no, I'd like to do it. Um, you're, you're, probably one of the one, you're probably one of the ones... Who, I'm not in tomorrow. You're probably oh. one of the ones who has the best knowledge of some of the older summer slams as well. Yeah, that's you're good with the history it. stuff, yeah. Could we do it Tuesday? Maybe, yeah. I'm doing okay. pictures on Tuesday, but we could squeeze it in, maybe. Yeah. I'll have to find out. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Okay, it's like been live stuff. and has been live. Admin. Admin. Here's me. Anyway, oh. here's Jack with his cat. So picture the scene. I've been out drinking with Matthew and various wrestlers. I should have nominated um, this for the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm just so... You know when your pet's oh, happy see to this. see you? And the co- comment says, apparently decided to document myself at 3 a.m. annoying the cat. Play the audio. Oh, damn. Uh, Stop. Yeah. No. Oh, it's not I'll just play the audio off my phone. Look at the I glorious ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cat's all being nice and that. And then, is it playing through the speaker? 
It doesn't matter. I'll just play it. I'll just play it. My them. favorite bit of Oppenheim is when they played Hope at the end by Twister and This Faith isn't going to be. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, a lovely boy. Oh, dear me. Oh, dear me. What are you doing, you silly man? Oh, me. I'm so drunk, man. Do you know what's, you know what's oh, good to like I talk to Pablo like that when I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Bubba? Oh, hello, buddy. And your buddy. At that point, I compare him to, I go, you're like a little doggy. You're so affectionate. <laughs> There's a, there's a great fundamentally one. mixing up two animals. There's a great clip that did the rounds on TikTok, and it's a little it's a little Yorkshire lad, and he's and he's fussing his cat. His mum's filming him fussing the cat. How old's the young lad? The young lad's probably about th four, oh, right. five. He's a young lad, and uh, and he's and he starts stroking his foot, and he goes, Ah, look at the beans. It's a shame, isn't it, mum? <laughs> It's a shame, isn't <laughs> it, mum? That's really good. Look at the beans. It's a shame, isn't it, mum? <laughs> So that's funny. That's good. Have you seen the video of the? We watch it whenever we're feeling the, sad, Alex. And I. It always makes us oh. happy. Have you seen the video of the young girl mocking her dad's northern accent? Yeah, she's, like, she's dying laughing. She's got like, there's saying. like a there's like a, a posh mum and a Yorkshire dad, and the mum goes like, "Can you get daddy to say car on the road?" And the dad goes, "Car on road." And the little girl goes, <laughs> "Car on road." <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> what a lovely thing. Oh, yeah, right. Whatever that was. Yeah, what a lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for little willies everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you have any Reese's Pieces, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. Glad your little willie's working. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah. <sighs> it's warm in this room, man. It is humid. God, don't do that. It's headphones. Joel nearly died. Oh, my God. You nearly killed Joel. If you sounded dial like, up you internet like connection. Bullseye from Extreme Dinosaurs. Extreme <laughs> yeah. Dinosaurs! We were all making noises Dream. and I wanted to join I love in. Extreme Dinosaurs. Yeah. Have you watched Extreme Dinosaurs? Extreme I never dinosaurs. meet anyone who's seen Extreme Dinosaurs. Uh, Jurassic Dino 4. Dino Extreme Dinosaurs. Dinosaur. Extreme, 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 extreme Dinosaurs. I mean, it's the theme song. The guy's going hell for leather. Yeah, like, this yeah. Is it. Like Something's really rocking on planet number, number three. three. <laughs> Modern man's got prehistoric yeah. tragedy. Yeah. Oh. A colossal fossil so fuse, fuse, unlike anything the before, floor. between the but reckless raptors and the and extreme, extreme dinosaurs. <laughs> extreme. And then you extreme. get a little bit which shows everyone's move, and you get the T Rex. Sorry and stomp. It's a ama it's an amazing yes. program. Anyway, Tom sounded like the pterodactyl I when he went. Feel like you're making this up. No, no, it's trying to catch of me street out. shocks. Was, yes. Yeah. It's where they went. Hmm. It, you know, it's like Alan Partridge going. What do you What do you think of when you hear street sharks? He goes, mm. there's too many of these stupid programs for kids that sell toys. And goes, that's one way of thinking it. How about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was successful? Why not make more of them? Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah Teenage Mutant Ninja Impossible. Yes, oh, yes, as some people call it. Mm. So they had uh, Extreme Dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I used to, my mom used to get me it from the Asda video, VHS video section and bring it home. Ah. Oh. There's an Extreme Did Dinosaurs she video. No, they were, they were in the Asda. When, remember when videos were a thing? Remember videos? Sold them in Asda. Do, do I remember videos? Well, I would come back and be like, here's four episodes of Extreme Dinosaurs on one VHS. Magic. Oh, You're welcome. Oh, they go to Scotland in this one. They meet Loch Ness. Monster. Can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how it's all. They meet Loch Ness. Loch Ness. Like a giant Monster haystack in his WCW run. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Do you know they're rebooting Bike on Mars from Mars? Are they? Really? Ryan Reynolds apparently is behind the project. Well, is this, this going to be a pun or is this real? No, nope, oh, no, no. This, this, no as I, I, much as I'd love this to be a setup and a wind yeah. up and a pitch, on this occasion it's not. Oh, no, this sounds cheesy to me. We should hey. probably thank the producers. The big question is, will we end this podcast? Oh, no, should, sorry. The big question producers, is, will the we producers, end the producers, producers, which are the producers. Chris Ruth. Ruth, the mouth of the Ruth. He's a cowboy. Pew, pew. Reno, 2200. He's from the future. He's a robot. 2200. Noah Anderson. Anderson! Two of each animal. Get on my boat. Thank you, you three diddlers. I feel like I... <laughs> every week, I'm trying... I love trying... <laughs> you, no, you, really, you really do good I job now imagine them in my head as like a, a trio, like the shield. Yeah. <laughs> or oh, the back of mice from Mars. Are, are they three? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Polly, Alan, and... Mike, Shut Malcolm. Up. No. What is that called? Polly. Shut up. The big question this week. They're called Grand Turismo. Shut up. No. Stop him. Daytona. Jack, stop him. Get his mic. I can't stop him. Subaru. Nothing can stop him. Nothing can stop him. Hurry up, Global Warming, and only, finish off Tom. You can only, he's like Michael Jordan. You can only contain him. Exactly. Take the last Yeah, you, you block him. I'll make him mad. Yeah. The big question is, 
Will WWE break up the Judgment Day? Mm. Because the reason for this big question is because we can get Rhea in the thumbnail. Yes. <laughs> and because they've been everywhere on all of the brands. Yeah. And because as we head into SummerSlam, tensions are rising. Mm. Absolutely. Especially with extreme, extreme, extreme Rhea Ripley. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Will they break up? Uh, because obviously the tension is... Stop it. The tension is a mess around. Will, will Balor beat Seth Rollins at SummerSlam? He's got his rematch. Because after Priest showed beforehand just to show off his nice mm. sexy briefcase, he won't be in the bank. Was he going to be able to beat him? Why not? We don't know. And then if he does, will Priest cash in? Yeah. He says he won't, but... Oh. And as we touched on earlier, I think it was Tom's idea. You could have even Priest, Balor beat Finn and then Priest beat Seth. Mm. No, Rollins beat Finn, then Priest beat Rollins, and then there's the residual jealousy of Finn Balor going, oh, well, that was my belt, but he didn't actually screw me over. Mm. So they could break them up, but should they break them up? Will they break them up? Well, I like the idea, just so beforehand, of Balor win the title and Priest being like, oh, that, hey, buddy, hey, well, I've got this. I can protect you. But I was like, mm. Mm. he's going to look at him like Megatron looks at Soundwave. <laughs> Soundwave? Starscream. Starscream. Look, it's hot. Soundwave was the here. cassette. Yeah. Remember videos? Mm. And uh, Not those ones. The, yeah, they could do that. And then it's also Bala was teasing having JD join the Judgment Day. Oh, got a, that Yeah. Judgment Day. That has slipped my mind totally. Yeah, judge, judgment Day, don't Google me. Yes. Indeed, where did it? Where so, what's happened there? I think they're just teasing it until there. It goes, oh, and they're like, wait, who's this lad? Oh, no, he's just a friend, you know, in case I need to make up my own Judgment my Day friend. black and white or Judgment Day wolf pack. They're like, Finn, in case, you know, something like Damien Priest has a, a briefcase Finn, that he you, wants to tease over me. Have you tried to clone yourself there? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he's one of those failed clones, like an alien resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think we can do some stuff without just doing the big pop there and then because there's not a lot else for Seth Rollins wanna, to be doing uh, right now. I really want to see Finn as Professor Farnsworth and JD as Qbert. This is Qbert. I think that would be amazing because he's his clone, isn't he? Mm. Oh God. Um, that was very partridge. I don't oh, think well. we. I don't think we split them uh, for a while Same. because they're they're doing such good at the moment. But then what's fascinating is obviously you've got we've kind of got an out for Finn and Damien Priest. What about with Rhea and Dom? No. They'll be all right. By oh, my God. Because at some point... It has to happen at some they point. They could go separate ways. But then the thing is, I don't see like Rhea being sympathetic babyface to Dom. Nor do I see Dom being sympathetic babyface to Rhea. I think when they want Rhea to be... But like way down the line... Maybe there'll be Rhea who's the face because she's just so cool. Yeah, Rhea's the Rhea's <clears throat> the absolute star that bursts from the Judgment Day. And people have been waiting for Rhea to. It's like Dom's like you know those people in America who have like a tiger as a pet. So what's happened <laughs> here is like <laughs> you're just waiting for something bad to happen. Yeah. And I feel like something bad's gonna happen. I've I'm not suggesting that relationships are akin to an owner and a pet. Oh, what have I done? I oh, no, no, no. Well, we know how dangerous Dom is. He's been, he's been ex prison. That's right. Yeah, I meant Dom's mean, the tiger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there something maybe that comes in? Because the thing is, like, in, in some circumstances, in, in, in there are many circumstances you would have it so, like, Dom loses a, like, Dom loses a pivotal match mm. when something goes wrong with Rhea, and then it's Dom screaming at Rhea about getting it wrong, and nah. then, but that doesn't work in this dynamic. Nah. It doesn't work. In, so, like, you'd have to have Rhea lose a key match with, because Dom screws up. And then you have them in the ring together and Dom's quite apologetic and Rhea goes, ah, oh, sod this, and then levels him. Ooh. And that's how it goes. I thought, I thought the theme they've been trying to introduce is Rhea putting Dom in more and more matches. She often accepts challenges on his behalf. Yeah. Mm. Maybe at one point she does it too much. Yeah, Brock, Dom will have you. And then that's a good way. Yeah, yeah. maybe not Brock. But, but I don't want to... I think they, should, <clears throat> they, they are going to leave. They'll leave the Judgment Day, but they'll still be together. Oh, too, really? They, they work too well. They like, do work wonderfully not well. Selma and Louise, who am I thinking of? I don't Bonnie know. and Clyde, there we go. They're, <laughs> not Bonnie. And They're both dying together. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler. So you think maybe the Judgment Day splits, but then we keep Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, because... Marauding. That'd be, that, that'd be a really good bit. So I was like, wait, I thought you were just pretending to be like him. And he's like, no, why would I do that? They're like, oh. Mm. Oh, really? Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. I think they, I think they will... And he goes, why, why you went to him? And he goes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think they will split, but it'll be like, because now those reports that WWE are seeing them like a new bloodline, they'll be like a slow, torturous, dramatic, melodramatic, twisty, turny split. I'm here for and it. I, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Or 
to get it more exciting thumbnail, if it does make sense, he goes, we need a new leader, one that isn't Bala. L.A. Knight. He doesn't, he he doesn't fit the crowd. That's right. I'm now a goth. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> imagine him trying. Have you seen You're really the, badly you trying to the, fit in. He's in the Mighty Boosh episode. I've been a hot topic, to be a yeah. Goth. He's like, <laughs> went to a graveyard. Yeah. Did a crap on a grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Saw a swan the other day. Did yeah. a crap on it. There's... <laughs> There's one outcome that you can say. Yeah, the goth mix, L.A. Night. <laughs> There's one outcome you could do, in which they go right. Finn's gone. Damien Priest is is gone doing his own thing. Bloodlines in tatters. We need somebody new. And like Rhea's like, you turn to your own. You turn oh to my your God, family. What? You turn to the click. Buddy Murphy. No. Um, a lot of screws would have to turn to make that happen. Do you think it would be funnier if... <laughs> yeah. Not funnier. Because, because, because there's, the there's, this, there's this overarching idea that the whole Dom and Rhea thing is 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 happening because Buddy was getting on with, yeah, with yeah. Dom's sister. And there's a parallel there. Oh, yeah. Long term, they could play, they could call back to what that if and go, it's like, you mess with my family, so I'm messing with your woman. What if it's hey. like the rumble, and Dom's being a real weasel and he's surviving and being sneaky and tipping people out and Rhea's on the outside helping him. The next entrance, Buddy Murphy and Dom's like, oh, no. Yeah. Buddy, <laughs> what are you? Um, I'm sure Buddy's very happy in his current place of employment. I don't want to... Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, not, yeah, I'm not for a second suggesting oh, like, yeah. oh, he's... A, but that would be... If, be amazing. if the screws yeah. turn in a certain <laughs> way, that would be a hell of a way yeah. to maybe... And also, because he's doing the House of Black spooky stuff, he would be... A, he'd look good yeah. in the Judgment Day. Oh, he would. He'd look, he looks great anyway. But I mean, in fairness, like though, they're both, man. they're both cheating on other people. I mean, Rhea's got Dom and... Buddy Murphy's clearly got Kenny Omega. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Brody, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, or Malachi Black. Maybe it's like a weird. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, right. Well, we've we've nailed. Wow. It. Look at so those three. So will they? Scenarios. I think the answer is yes, but Slowly. not for a while. Slowly. Yeah, a slow burn. Yeah. It doesn't need to be happening mm. anytime soon. You need just to drip feed it for a long, long time. It did get LA light in. That's right. It's Judgment <laughs> Night. Yeah. Maybe oh. if there's Judgment Night. Maybe if there's. <laughs> maybe the if there's fifty Rhea Ripley's, Joel just. All over the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll clone Rhea Ripley. Yes. <laughs> they all just become Rhea Ripley. The yeah. dodgiest looking thumbnail on Call of What if Rhea Ripley uh, super usurps both both Finn and Priest and is the one that beats Finn Balor? Yes. Right. There we go. What if Rhea Ripley's in Fast and the Furious, the new film? <laughs> she I know Grand a guy. Turismo. I know a guy that could do well in that film. I'm worried. Not yet, because everyone still loves her, but is Rhea approaching Poochie territory? No. No, no way. Okay, fair enough, Absolutely fair not. Enough. Put Poochie in the thumbnail as well. Love, <laughs> kids love The Simpsons. Mm. <laughs> I've just been thinking about, since I mentioned Farnsworth, how he might be the funniest character in Future Armor. You know? I was just thinking about it. Put that nah, in the thumbnail. Farnsworth in the thumbnail. Yeah. I love that idiot. He's crazy. I broke yeah. your television. <laughs> <laughs> That's my joke. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Um, oh, That's bad than you should feel, man. Who's your favorite Future Armor character? Fry. Uh, Fry. Uh, that's yeah, a very vanilla good. answer yeah, there, Joel. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he is the main character. I like the main he character. Is, yeah, he's good. <laughs> main no, character but is no. a good But I think it's quite an original answer because no one says Fry. People say Bender or Fry. Um, Fawns with all. Hmm. Fry is the glue of that show. I like Morbo. Speak, speaking of <laughs> glue, nice. glue, the thing we've been sniffing on for the past hour and a half. Thank you very much for listening and during another Thank you, everybody. wet episode of the Collect Wrestling Where? Podcast. I think it's the same lineup next week. Well, who? So just a heads up. Oh, really? Fair enough. Same lineup next week. Sounds good. Three, I think, good all together. Times. Jack, what have you got for us until next week? All glory to the Hypnotoad. I've wow. got... Um, <laughs> I've got... Uh, there's a weirdest episode in the works. Good. There's like a... Kind of a... One-off video I did about the book, the Bloodline story and what it means, what it shows us about Triple H's style of book. And it's a very one-off video, okay. but that'll be out at some point as well. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure when, but they're all in the works. And... Uh, pitches for SummerSlam sometime next week, I think Wednesday, and matches of the month next weekend. Wow. And oh. Twitch every Wednesday with Owen. Jesus. Twitch, I know, twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic. Jack, you work almost as hard I mean, as Tom. <laughs> uh, okay, so in terms of what you can check out right now, uh, a wonderful chat with Ilya Dragunov, which is on the podcast feed on Sunday. Myself and Matthew Gregg are on the podcast feed on Saturday mm -hmm. with a brand new, brand old episode of the Cultaholic Classic Smackdown Review. We are in a weird, murky territory. December 2001. Oh. Creative is absolutely bust uh, post-invasion. It's a weird time. We're loving every minute of it. You can 
can listen on the podcast feed. You can watch it on the Patreon as well as you can the Coltolic Classic Nitro review with myself and Sam Driver. Brand new episode of the Classic Raw review with myself and Jack Atkins. Hey, uh, we're watching Mind Games. Mind games in your house. Mind games. Mind it's a retro games. reaction mind on Monday. That myself. good Shawn Michaels match. Yeah, but, the, but with the bad ending. It's yeah, it's the good Shawn Michaels match and some other stuff. Mm. It's a really one match. Mind show. games plus EC Dub. Yeah, that's, that's, that's were, it. Were you... And also Heath, uh, watch the watch our video if you haven't done so already yes. about the newest inductee to the Cult of Holocaust Hall of Fame. Absolutely. The biggest the, the best WWE super fan of all time in Heath. Uh, thank you. L- thank you very much to Heath for letting us uh treat you on your special day yes. and check out the video. Big fan of Heath. You will become one as well. Uh, what you got Matthew? I'll be watching Heath and then I'll be going, hey, new Botch Mania's out. Hey, hey. hey. Yeah. Yeah. that's how it's well, going. Uh, I'll, it be going I'll be going to Peterborough to see my mates. That's not to do wrestling. Oh I've only been there to change trains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought Fraser says. I bought this one. I'm not happy. With it. <laughs> 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 That's it. That's it. Go on, Holly. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Colt Holly. And uh, mailbagcollect.com. Mm. Thank you very much. Jack, Tom, the magnificent Joel. Thank you. Crap, Papa Jack doesn't do anything anymore. We'll now look at this and say goodbye to you. DDT, by you? singing DDT. By singing the Daytona theme. I'm glad you said that because I was going to do that anyway. Three, two, one. Do, Daytona! Do, do, do. Let's go away. Now go away. Love you, bye. Oh, Jack's already gone. Sorry, yeah, I was thought it was the end. <laughs> Keep this rolling at the end. <laughs> Yay! Oh, on a Not good.